Hi guys, welcome back to uh, our world. We're here. It's me and Snakes. Me and Snakes. I just didn't even mean. Me. <laughs> well done, well done. Sorry, man. This, <laughs> this is UK Masters. As usual, things are just as they are. We always love to keep it real here. Keep it organic, in the words of Jackie. I don't even know where that's come from. <laughs> that's the thing. I'm just going for a snakes. UKCS, right? Like this is how it is. Big man snakes. Gotta get that. Gotta get that. S-gun. Winding along. Yeah. Still my thing, sneaking around. Common misconception, actually, snakes. A lot of people think they're slimy, but they're not. Yeah. They're actually quite smooth. As well, they have folks. corn snakes, corn although snakes. they're very small and not in any way poisonous, if you were to fall asleep, because they are technically constrictors, they could climb up and go around your throat and kill you. Well, the kids don't sleep with a corn snake. I heard it's uh, pretty bad for you. <laughs> yeah, definitely don't. <laughs> <laughs> How do we do this? We just we had a whole show. Trophies planned. here. Yeah, we got a trophy for you guys and everything. We we really kind of all the stops out for this last day of UK Masters playoffs. What do you guys think of the trophy? Let us know at UK Masters on Twitter, of course, to let us all your thoughts know on the standard. It's kind of very vintage, right? UK Masters. We kind of followed the same sort of design throughout all the seasons. It's good. Yeah, yeah, it's good, isn't it? Yeah. I think that's proud of one of those. Yeah. Really get your hand in there. <laughs> thing is, like though, how you can drink out of that? Look at these owls. That's the problem with it, right? Like you can't that. really can't get beer in that or anything. Other brands. I don't of know why I've got this. I've just got this image of a pineapple in it, to be honest. That's all I can think why of. Why do you want to put a pineapple in there? I mean, I don't know. Why'd that happen? Try a pineapple and rebel milkshake. It's yeah, just <laughs> put, some, put some ice cream in there. Bang <laughs> a can of Red Bull. I mean, apparently that's what you do, right? If you want to sell a milkshake with Red Bull in it, you just take a can of Red Bull, you bang it in there. Success. Other energy drinks are available. Yeah, of course. G Fuel, Monster. You're not supposed to promote no, the you, other you ones. Promote all when you, you, when you say equal, that, equal rights. that's when it's just like, all right, look, guys. Equal rights, man. And you draw a line there. But then when you promote the others, it's like, oh, no. look at him. Favoritism. Favoritism, sorry. Just all about the sellout, though. Classic snakes. Classic snakes, man. <laughs> Promoting the, the, the lifestyle of UK Counter Strike, of course. Big snake. Just got to hiss around the place somewhat. It's been good. Yeah, man. Yeah. I think we got um got game tonight, don't we? We have got a game. We've got two. Two games, in fact. It's going to be pretty good. Let's take a look at the bracket. Jake. Do your magic. Give us a transition. Oh, oh there we go. That is that is masterful right there. Of course, it is going to be FM versus Fish123, the first game of this evening. And then the loser of that matchup is going to get dunked down to a lower bracket journey. And they face off against Imperial. Dunked. Dunked. Get dunked on! <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's uh, obviously... Then we're going to find out who will be playing Imperial in that lower bracket. And then, very possible for that to be a rematch of Fish123 versus Imperial, which was the first game of the playoffs yesterday. If you missed that. You can check that out. Watch the VODs. Heard about some cats, apparently. We uh, learned about Charlie and his new cats. Mm. Pretty good. Yeah, he's got some pets. He's got some pets now. It's good. Maybe a lizard coming soon. Snake. Corn snake. Yeah, get a little <laughs> corn snake in there. But don't let it choke you. Yeah. Like That's <laughs> where they get you. They make them... They think they just, they're, all, they're all good little <laughs> they guys. They you into a, like a, a sense of false security. Yeah. Right? An intelligent boy. Yeah. A nice boy. And then they constrict you. Mess That's with snake you. you get a choco. <laughs> Well, there's a graphic for you, which Looks means like only one thing. We have a game coming soon. It's going to be Fish versus FM, of course. Predictions pretty much think that you know we lean towards FM, FM just 2-0. <laughs> just a bit of casual game of Why not? Why not, right? Oh, Ooh, look at that look camera at that. angle. <laughs> oh. That is oh, new FM logo. Oh. oh, look, they've had a rebrand. That's like 18 years jerseys, in the making. I think they're going to change the jerseys, though, because like, I mean, you look back at Source, they're still rocking the same sort. Oh. That's true. Oh. I'm intrigued, actually. Oh, God, it's like a night out in London. <laughs> They've had a stab. Smooth out, last man I stand, of course. But look at this, he's cheeky, isn't he? Playing a bit of platforming. Oh, Goes in. Uh, <laughs> Third person. Fries, oh. Fries sliced him up. Fries. Butchered him, oh, he's on sale. <laughs> 10 pound, block of meat. <laughs> just having a bit of a bit of a fun time there with the knives. They do decide to just shiv each other up, because why not, have a bit of a war. On the streets of Overpass. Well, the result comes in. Yep. And they set ourselves up for a pistol round. You pistol love a pistol, don't you? It's true. This is also going to be an interesting one. Because obviously Fish, uh, basically just an explosive sort of mixed team this time around. We were spoken about it yesterday, but you know, very reminiscent of XL. And then Keita is obviously kind of the only member, only member that's in there. From, uh, yeah. yeah. Right. Keita, <laughs> chill out, mate. Keita, just take a step back for a second. I know you're feeling pretty snaky right now, but you just got to chill. It's, now's not the time to strike on your own teammates. Just got to relax a little bit. Wait. Imagine if it actually was live, though. Like, yeah. Keita's just tilted. <laughs> it's got a bit mad early. Yeah. A few rounds. 
But yeah, that's the thing. Obviously, Keith's the support player. He's going to be the one aiding the rest of the teammates. Uh, Smuya just going to be trying to get that warp setup out. Jenko, he's the talented kind of individual rifler. You're going to see a lot of stuff coming out from him. Mole is also very talented, but he'll still be the in-game leader. And then Roma again, just one of these players that is very proficient with the rifle and can do work. There's a lot of talent on this roster, so it's going to be a little bit more aggressive than what we expect to see coming out from FM. Very standardized, very structured. They have a lot of strategy in there. It will be aggression towards every bombs out there. They're going to try and burst their way through. Let's see if the CTs can actually ward this off. They breach the site. They're able to slip their way in. They actually seem like they're going to be able to get the bomb plant completely uncontested as well. They do lock it down. Jenko will find one headshot in the end, though. Claims that one towards Fry, but Mole does one better. In the meantime, but it is just a 23 to drop the goal and onto their opposition as FM Ooh. cannot get close. Jenko going to end this round in a nutshell as he just claimed the head of Stanley once and for all. They can fish 1-2-3 with a round advantage on the board and FM left somewhat out of this one in the early days. They are, of course, going to be going straight back in with the force up though, the CZs and such. The Kevlar already being purchased and it is going to be a whole lot of CZs, in fact. Pulse, Fry and Stanley all making that purchase. I've just noticed that the colours on FM are now... Inversed, they're flipped. So, uh, turning a new leaf in the book of FM. Um, anyway, let's see what Fish123 can bring to the table here as they slowly make their approach through. They are going to be tiptoeing up. Obviously, they have the rifles into this round. They know FM won't really have too much to work with. They have gone for the force buyers. Why not? You might as well at this point. They're just going to sort of play these crossfires. Obviously, going for information plays right now, hoping to achieve something. Crossfire here towards Monster as well. So if they do take the play towards B and just walk through, they should actually get the better of them there. But Fish most likely just going to keep playing this split and pick style. Try and find frags if FM get overly aggressive. If not, Wolf pack up into the late round and then take a hit towards most likely A at this point. They're straight, straight over there. Try and take that long control as well. It just complements the AKs they have. Yeah, team play by far is going to be just such a big strength right now. Fish 3 after all the firepower you mentioned really just bulks up to be what should be a pretty clear-cut se second round, but FM, they're always so, so good at throwing the wrench in the works. These guys really know how to handle these pistols and take the close fights, which something is going to be... That's, well, that's what they're leaning towards, to put it bluntly. The skip on the side, as it is going to be Pulse, just jumping around, spots out one player in towards Connector. So maybe going to be man to give the jig up as they do begin to step over on towards A. It's going to be tiptoe by tiptoe. Very, very quiet, but the information's already there. They, they need to go fast now. Molotov does go in, actually bounces off their teammates though, it slows them down a little bit and allows those teammates to go for an information play, also transfer damage over, there's the headshot that comes through in the end, takes down Kida, that's fairly effective, Pulse with a peek as well, doing damage to that CZ, looking like they're going to start to claw this one back as Stanley goes huge with a 2k, leaving things just on Mole to try and claw the round back, it is not achievable, Pulse will spray him down with the CZ and they get it. It all comes down to the fact that they were spotted out. The information was all there. FM knew exactly what was coming, and then Fish were like, yeah, but we want to be slow. We're, hmm. we're ancient right now. We are the old boys, but unfortunately, you're just too old. You took too long. You crawled along, and you got punished for it. The CCs were there to mop you up. Stanley was able to do work. It's a round of the board for FM, and the economy of Fish123 is now going to find themselves on the crushing side. It's going to be painful for them. They've gone back in with the Deagles and the Kevlar, of course, but everything we just said about Fish now applies to FM. And arguably, they're playing it better already because they're on the CT side. It's easier for them. Yeah, true. It is going to help them out because it's the thing, right? You're coming into this now, the reset going through for Fish. They actually have money to play over on FM. If they lock down these following rounds as well off the back of that now, they're going to be in a really good situation. Pulse going for the early contact over towards Toilets, peeks out, but no one really there to allow them to get that early kill off. Smuya is just digging away, trying to take down Weber. There is tags being traded from either side, but no real frags kicking off just yet. A lot of information has been gained by uh, FM at this point. We have to know that fish are just trying to bulk up yet again. I'm just on the edge of this boost is going to come in, and that just gives away for Pulse to lay down even more damage right on through. Just tagging up Fish123 so, so much now. As Mole, the only player really to not be tagged aside. Jenko as well, in fact, over towards the back of B. They have readjusted, but they're going to be walking into a mincemeat. It's going to be Stanley there with the UMP ready to just chew them to pieces. Right, picks out with the rifle, starts the support, picks off one already. Sure. Attack, and this is not looking too good. Well, Mole is going to pick off one, but then Stanley does support just as expected. Fish 1, 2, 3. Get eaten alive. Yeah, so the last man left standing. Obviously, Deagle in hand, so he still has a little bit of firepower to play with. We'll take down Stanley. See if he can spot anything else, but I think really going his way just yet. Hoping to find these frags. Gets a second to his name before he gets traded out in the end by Pulse. So. A little bit awkward, obviously FM forced to get free rebuys out and their economy isn't too spectacular, but still, the only good factor is that FM obviously going through will have the advantage in terms of economy over fish anyway. They made money off the SMG as well, right? It was just as I described it, around the built mincemeat, which is yeah. them walking in, getting all the frags, and for fish it's arguably much more painful for them either way. So FM, if they keep this round clean, don't have to rebuy too much, then they can kind of 
replenish what they lost in that previous round. So it's kind of, sure, they're stuck at odds end in some regard, but for the most part, I still think FM are going to be pretty damn happy. Just off the fact they've gone from being you know, the team who lost a pistol to 2 1 up. They're going to look for their third here, and it's very, very likely because we aren't even seeing any deagles now. It's just some people with these, some blocks. Weber already can find a first game. Just pick up one, but Weber's just still tapping, still alive. Eventually, Roma will trade things out, supported by Jenko. But even then, so much damage to be done. They've gained themselves a rifle, but that's already screaming the idea of save. This 3 versus 3 looking very unlikely. Getting ready right now as they just hold their ground for the meantime. Not really going to overextend too much. Because they know there is still a chance into this round, potentially. So the 3 versus 3, you have the one rifle over on Keita. They might be able to achieve something if they can create a couple of, you know, two versus one peaks where they can get the advantage over one of the players over on the side of FM, take them down. Splitting up a little bit here, Roma's going to burst his way through the door. The rest of his teammates will go for the late round backstab, but the only thing is, Roma most likely to get picked up. Peaks through, easy kill going out of the way of Fry. Now it's really awkward for them. They don't really have the manpower, obviously they're outnumbered. Jenko's so low as well. Yeah, he comes through. Nilzinho actually gets one. Oh, Keita tried to trade it, but Nilzinho, too hot to handle there. The UMP kills reign in supreme in that round as well. All of those SMG kills really going to hurt things as FM throughout actually got a pretty stable economy off the back of those rounds, but now where the real game begins again. Yeah, it is going to be Fish123 trying to force the hand of FM, bring it back to a more healthier score on a 3 for 2. Do have the AWP, of course, into the arms of Smuya, but it is his battle between Weber and Smuya, which you would, you know, on edge, give it to Smuya, but even then, he gets the first shot. Smuya is going to up the ante as he does land a flick, but the trade looking pretty damn solid from Pulse as he's going to set himself back in towards Connector, and his worry here really isn't that lower end. It's actually the higher end, just making sure that isn't going to be a quick funneling push and rotate, in fact, towards this B site. Okay, yeah. yeah he's going to take down Pulse in the opener. This is actually a very effective round so far going through for Fish123. Just what they needed to pull out on the buy. Stanley has a lot of information. He's going to hear those audio cues, kind of knows what's going on, but unfortunately he doesn't have eyes in the back of his head as he gets taken down, leaving his teammate to try and do something. Unfortunately, Roma will go down, but Jenko trades it back, leaving it all out on Nilzinho. Trapped over on the site, a one versus four. Deeks up, actually does get away with one kill. Nearly the second, but once again, it's going to be Keita to wield that AK-47 and find another frag. Also switches out to the AWP as well, which can now be dropped over to Smuya. Very well played from Fish in the way they handle Connector there, because FM, you could see them trying to adapt. They started to move more, more and more players over towards it just to make sure they could try and contest it, but Fish was smart. They tried to kind of do a bit of push and shove, a bit of touchy-feely with them, and it really paid off because they didn't overcommit too early. They played it right, they played the time to their side, and that's exactly what we need to see from this T side if they are going to be able to get these rounds over and over again and really chain them together, which is something we stressed so much for Endpoint yesterday, and I feel like it's going to be a bit of a similar affair in this matchup. Of course, FM, the team who do hold a lot of the cards in terms of predictions, Fish, they know they're in a bit of a struggle here, but they also know they've got the raw skill to be able to overcome them. Just very different storylines too, which are going to very much meet each other at odds end, as it is going to be Nilzinho already just to spray spray through the wall, trying to counteract the smoother boost that is going to be coming because they almost certainly have heard it. Smoother drops a frag grenade over the wall. Ground being slowly hit by the CTs. They tried to work their way through. They wanted to go for the aggressive peak, but unfortunately, Smooth was there, ready and waiting. Fires off the first pot shot, will claim ahead as well. Actually, going to go into an elevated angle now as well. So, even if he doesn't find a frag from this, he will get so much information that helps them out as well. Goes for the pot shot on towards Nilzinio, so it's going to slow them down. They're aware that there is a fight coming towards that B bomb site which can draw some men situated off the of bay to try and rotate as well. But look at this, the CT coming in the rear as well. Seems like he might have actually spotted out the T's that worked their way down connector over towards the B-bomb site. So he's got a lot of information. Actually, no, he didn't spot them. He's going all the way around. Nilzinho, though, on short with the aggressive peak. He gets away with that, even though they had two men there ready to try and ward him off. Neil just doing it all single handedly saving this round. The Tech Knight of Smear will somewhat try him in. On towards Neil in return, but it's all but a little too late now. It's like a 1v2. This is tough. 20 seconds left on the clock. We'll decide to go straight for the bomb plant, but in fact, fakes it out. This is more time to be wasted. It allows that back flank to come on through now, as he has to commit this plant, but still looking for the peak. So hungry to bring it full circle to a 1 versus 1 as he's going to look dead set on towards the peak. Ops towards the back of sight in the back flank. Front pulse will roll on in, dropping it with the UMP. Smuya left in a struggling spot there, and fair play to him, you've got so many different decisions to make that he decides to play for time, but he just didn't have enough, playing into the hands of Fox. Yeah, just allowed them to play their A game there, and the thing is as well, you, you kind of hit the nail on the head, you've got to give it to Nilzinho right now. Nil's been playing absolutely fantastic, leading by example with a lot of the actual 
He's actually been able to pull out right now. A huge impact frags that have been going his way. He's been going for the initiative calls as well. The aggressive pick towards short, it was risky. You know, there was two men there, but still, he did his job well. So smart stuff actually being able to pull that out of the bag. Fry, he gets a whole abundance of information off that peak. He knows they're going on, knows they're going to push into him now as well. He's blind, but he's still hammering on the trigger. That is a blind hat trick coming out. Absolutely huge. Stanley for the final frag as well over on towards Mole. And FM clean up that eco very swiftly. Really nice for them just in terms of economics as well right now. There's going to be a professor right there just writing down the numbers, telling them all up and going, boys, simply put, you are rich. You're loving it right now as FM take the scoreline five for two. Fish one, two, three. Make nothing at all. And you, you kind of have to just take a glance at Fish and really accept the fact that they don't have anything either. They're still stuck. There's going to be some Tech Nines and Kevlar here, which sure is better. It gives them the ability to try and go through this quick run, but they've already met with Molotov. Smoke is going to go down to act as a party gift, but somewhat block it off. The Jekyll is going to start strong with the first frag, but Fry, Nilzinho both instantaneous trades, bring things back into contention for FM. Maruma starting to roll around there as well. He's going to get that bomb planted. Nilzinho. Right, it's kind of on him and the rest of his team. So obviously, where were the other one with the orb? They need to try and go for the first initial faces. So his pulse is blocked off at this point. And there was anyone where they need to find the kills for these orbs to crack the opening. Frags, the team watching, will get spotted out by Keto. He's so low as well that he can't really try and fight back off that point. Now Weber has to get the opening frag. Then Pulse will try and go for the backstab. Bolt actually goes for the first initial face. Somehow gets away with a 2k spray down as well. Surely should have been punished in that scenario, but gets away with it. Makita, you put him in a prime time position where he can use that weapon to his greatest strength. You're in the elevated angle. Easy kill comes through. Weber going to have to try and stick the bomb now. Leaps on it. Keita down the low ground. Weber seems to be sticking it. And he actually gets the defuse out in just a nick of time. It all comes down to one play. The fact that Keita couldn't get that kill before Weber was able to fall off heaven and get himself down in towards pit. The minute that comes in, that round gets so much harder. And then for him to stick to the fuse as well, what more can you ask for? Well, six to two now, a disastrous outcome for Fish123. But at the same time, flip the coin, look towards the other side. They did that with just Tech Nines and Kevlar. This is the real investment now. They're going back in with these rifles with this AWP. But guess what we're seeing? This overcommittal towards this B site is very much UK overpass, where teams just try and barrage B over and over again, but FM, their hold on B is going to get better and better, already getting the early damage down to Smuya and his AWP, just knocking him to 36 or so, looking bleak in the early few seconds to say the least. Try and go for this push in towards the B bomb side, but the flashbang going in does delay them quite heavily. Nilzinho as well was on the scene when he calls a stir as he finds the opening frag back over on towards Jenko. Unfortunately, the trade is there. Trying to do one better though. It's Fry. Takes the peak through, finds a couple of headshots, does get the man advantage in the favor of FM. So now they just sound a bit stagnated, waiting for the rest of the peaks to come through. Lines of sight have been blocked off by the smoke grenades to be used by the T's, and Keto is allowed to just push up close and personal. Takes down Nilzinho so quickly. Seems like he's hungry for more as well. Flashman goes over, he does try and peek into it, but he's getting warded off. Pulse takes him down. Now this is awkward. Mole, left one versus two, has to try and create a couple of one versus one here. If he wants to achieve really anything as he does tiptoe off, he's actually been able to brush over on towards short. He has the bomb as well now, so it is achievable that he can try and get out of there, but the only thing is, Two players left on that city site. They can just hold out for information, stick one towards the site. As soon as they catch wind, quick rotate. It's so easy to rotate on overpass like this. And then they can just try and retake into late round. The amount of utility they have as well, it's going to be so easy as well. Both of them having those two kits. It all comes down to right, Mel right now. His ability to aim. His ability to be able to use that clash look off. Seems they are going to be lining up. He's playing over towards just the edge of APC. The push is going to begin to roll. Through. They're trying to go for the double face, but no, they go one versus one. They allow him to go for his taps. He gets the first, but Weber will seal the deal with the AWP shot right into his leg to end this one out. FM charge on forward. A constant push. They take it seven to two. That was very vital there as well. It looked like it might have been awkward. You know, obviously, they went for the two individual faces. They kind of pushed a little bit stagnated. It was a little bit too delayed. Mole gets an easy frag. Then you're like, okay, it's too late at this point. Weber's not going to be able to do it. But he just swings wide and lands a, a tasty shot that made it work out for him. So that was, that was interesting to see him actually being able to pull that off. Now, though, obviously, Fish, the lose bonus is in play. Everything's looking good for them in terms of economy. So the buy does come back out. Smuya is back on the orb. Now, it's going to be interesting to see how they will utilize him as he can be a real powerhouse of opening these sites. Roma taking advantage of Weber there, just trying to give a bit more of an aggressive movement. It is going to be a bit of a two-step back for FM as they do realize that they need to be a little more careful in their approach to this round as a frag advantage towards Fish does give them a bit more of a window of opportunity to try and somewhat play with time. It's 1 minute 20. It's a whole lot for them now. 
So they have all that utility. It's not like they're up against just pistols again. So we have um, got to be cautious not to repeat similar mistakes. This boss is going to begin to venture in towards toilets, looking for that pick in return. But we've got by Keita. Keita taking him down as well. Makes this situation so, so much easier as well. Now for oh. At this point, it just keeps giving. As Jenko takes down Fry, you've just got two players left on a two versus five. They are vastly outnumbered and outgunned as well. They luckily do have the AWP over on Nilzinho still, so it's something to try and work with. But the only thing is, no one is heading towards that bomb site. And I wouldn't be surprised at this point if they both just back off towards B, just try and go for the save, as you can't really achieve too much. You're far away out of position as well, so as soon as that bomb goes down, you know the T's already in the after plant, you know you're most likely not going to get the round. No point of trying to do anything here. The problem is for FM as well, once they set the precedent that taking these one versus ones is okay, it all just spirals out of control. It's very much a slippery slope. Fish, they get that first pick, they then follow up with a second, third, fourth. It seems to be very, very much just, well, you use the phrase stagnating, I think that almost represents this play as well. FM, their one weakness seems to be actually playing up against defaults. Fish 1, 2, 3, they look for these battles and they win them. But, when Fish 1, 2, 3 go for the executes, completely different game to CS. FM, they win it hands down nearly every time. Yeah, it's true. They're able to counter those plays very easily, but it's the more split and pick slow style plays, as you said, that do catch them off guard, which is odd. You've got to wonder if that just comes down to sort of individual strength on play there for Fish123, where they think, all right, I'll take this aggressive fight. They peak something that, oh, by the way, that was really awkward that would be on there. That could have been crazy if he, uh, he found another kill. It would have really stopped FM from getting any chance as they work their way through into this round, as those two weapons are very vital. They have something to play with now as they go in. Obviously, you have the AWP over. It actually allowed them to get a full buy out almost into this round. Sure, you've got the three UMPs, but that's still a very effective buy. Is it going to be just another split and pick round over Fish 1, 2, 3? The early few seconds certainly seem to foretell that it is going to be just that case of Keita looking for that individual fight up on towards potentially Pulse. He decides to actually venture up towards Long instead, which means just more and more ground is there to be garnered for players like Roma, Mole, and Keita. There's all three of them are just going to be this trio that push on through. I meant to really catch them off guard. Possibly on the side though. Finds himself one. The damage on towards the second. Keeps re peeking, but he needs to be careful here not to overcommit. Because that's when he will be claimed back in return as Mole. The man to dish out the damage. His kill's starting to come through. We always see Fish managing to get these opening frags on the board. As soon as they do as well, that's normally where they actually lock it down. They've been very effective in their trade game recently, which is something you'd normally put on the uh, the belt of FM. Really. But it's not really been going that way. Weather though, the aggressive he comes through, the amount of damage he's transferred there is crazy that he was able to stay alive for so long before getting taken down. Absolutely insane stuff. Everyone is so weak at this point. With Fry finding that frag as well, this is such a winnable round left now for FM. Three versus three where they go for this push towards the A bomb site. You have the superior weapons in this case, as you can just tear your way through. They've got the better rate of fire to actually pick them off. And everyone's so low, Nilzinho as well doesn't even need to use his AWP. He can just use his pistol because of how weak they are. Easy kills start to rain in. You leave it on Smoothie on a one versus three with an AWP. Peeks into Nilzinho, his AWP's stronger. A simple point and click execution round for FM towards the end of things. Starting to really change pace yet again as the more this match develops, the harsher it gets to fish on 2 3. Their economy is certainly getting stretched air. They're so thin into this round as they are going to be getting just three rifles in play to get the UMP of Jenko, of course, which is a bit more of perhaps a positive note. But even then, the scoreline really is just representative of itself. It's 8 to 3. We've got to get a little concerned here now, Jackie. If FM can continue to build things up together, start to continue to chain yet again, we could be looking at a very poor half. Yeah, it could be a very awkward half for fish. And it's kind of what FM need as well. Really assert their dominance over on the early CT path. Because that's where you kind of, you know, expect them to perform better. Obviously, with Fish 1, 2, 3 being more of a mix as well, where strategy comes into play, it can hinder them. Obviously, it's more like the XL lineup, which is what we spoke about. So you imagine Mole will be able to still use them quite effectively. But that CT half, they don't really need to do too much, strategically-wise. You just kind of hold your angles. And where they're all very talented aimers, that's where it's going to come in to benefit them as well. You just hold back in your CTR, find those easy frags, play crossfires, which they can definitely do. So they need to try and stint as much of the growth as they can of them getting rounds in their team half early. And FM have been doing a good job of that so far. If they get an even better scoreline, it's only going to be more beneficial for them. Now that clock is going to wind on down. Rolling us forward and forward into the years. We reach a time and a place where Fish 1, 2, 3 have to take some fights now. Have to start looking for just a little bit more. Taking scale as Jenko going to do just that on towards short weather. Does secure just another trade, making things a little bit more healthier for this CT side. As Fry has so much to do on towards B, but he's making it work, takes a fight. 
wins out against Janko, but he wants to double dip here. He wants to make sure that he holds on towards Smoke it as he pushes on towards Monster. This is huge from just one man. Unfortunately, Mole is going to arrive as well. Continues just the constant barraging trades from Fish123. And this swings things back into their favor as they get that plant. Nilzinho quick to try and respond with his AWP. Holding their ground for now, though. Just going to be waiting for the peaks to come through. Mole obviously up close to personal the AK. There's the push that does start to come in. Peeking together, this is smart stuff for the CTs, but they're all aware of position. He's able to get the drop on them, taking one down. Now it's awkward. Look how low Weber is. Ankle of guard as well. The double face. Smart play from Fish, one, two, three. Overwhelm him at that point. You strike when it benefits you. Don't wait for him to take the flight to you. You take him down. Very easy stuff there. They get that full round on the board. Now they should get their fifth as well, as they've got money to play with, whereas unfortunately for FM, they don't. All intents and purposes, Fish on 2 3. They've grabbed FM by the balls and really just informed that they are here to play some Counter Strike. This is pretty much completely safe to scoreline. We've gone from what could have been something just as bad as an 11 4 or anything along those sort of lines, could be even worse, 12 3, to what is arguably at least a better minimum of a 9 6, I think, at this point. I wouldn't be too surprised. Fish 1 2 3, we already know they're going to get their fifth. And you look from there and go, connecting that next buy or getting at least one more buy in the last few rounds, that seems likely. Fire set up here though could work out well as the peak comes in. Unfortunately, it's not going to go at all their way. Pulse over by Toxic though is doing damage with that seize there. Two frags go his way before he's eventually traded out, leaving it all on Weber to try and clear up the stragglers. A one versus three. Not achievable really, but if he could find an extra kill, it would have helped them out, would have forced out another rebuy. Done some more damage to Fish's economy that is starting to stabilize and look fairly healthy. FM, though, the same can still not be said for them. It's still kind of weak. They can go for the buyer, though, but they're going to have to lack a little bit of utility here and there. Well, they swapped to go for the UMPs over on Weber, and it was the they can still get out that full utility across the board. Just missing a couple of flashbangs and a HE here and there. I think that's a smart decision all in all. Utility in Counter-Strike is so, so valuable. And a UMP in comparison to an M4 is not all that much different, to be honest. You can still do quite a lot with UMP, providing you play it right and you can adapt to what you've got in your hands. At the end of the day, Fish123 looking so, so likely still to get that sixth, which I think is just so huge for them. As they are already going to be looking to gain some ground up towards A, just looking to really continue the traction that they picked up just a few ago. As FM, I'm sure they want to respond here, but we know it's going to be tough. What changes are they making? Because I'm not seeing too much. It feels very much the same old hold. Yeah, we're not really seeing too much initiative coming out here. Right now. It's more just split and pick still on display from Fish123. But it, it's been working a few of the rounds. Obviously, split and pick as well. We saw the crack start to show for FM because they weren't able to really counter it effectively. For some reason, they would just get caught off guard. The trades would always go in favor of Fish. And let's see if that is going to happen again. Weber is up close to personal, as always, with that UMP. And absolutely love to take the aggression here, but it doesn't work out for him. But luckily, Pulse was able to find one. Trains it back on Roma, but Smuya is keeping the pain train through. Keeter as well from the sideline. Strikes on Nilzi. They can trade him out. They have the manpower advantage. They can get the bomb down. And these CTs coming in for the retake. They're going to have a hard time as there is a man in the back lines. Easy kills for Jenko. Positioning reading supreme there. Jenko just being in the right place at the right time. And really just thinking things through as the penny will drop. Fish 1, 2, 3. They get themselves their sixth round. And well now they're seventh. Looking even more likely. Because look at the firepower that FM are bringing to the table. This is a knife to a gunfight. It's true, right? And the knife they're using is just a butter knife, so it doesn't really even do anything. You can, you know, you can bread some butter and spread that, but you can't spread a human. Bread some butter, folks. That is the story here. Um, okay, so Keita kills Smuya in that fight. Definitely was ready for that as well. That was a full commit with the CZ there. Like yeah. He time to, time to change up that decision, so fair play to him. That was odd. But anyway, let's see how this one goes down. Obviously, left in three versus two now as they burst their way out on towards the site. Robo with a TK coming through. This is looking healthy. But a backstab from Pulse could be huge. Unfortunately, he only gets one frag on towards Roma before Keita finds the headshot onto him, trades him out very effectively. Weber trying to find that AK in the smoke as he waddles his way through. But he's going to peek out. Wasn't quite out on his end, so Keita finds the kill very easily. And that is an 8 7 scoreline. A lot closer than it seemed like it was going to be. Fish 1, 2, 3. They were down and out for a lot of the time there before they were somehow able to bring it back. Yeah, it was just really, really well played for them in the way they were able to start to really pick up rounds. And their economy was consistently saved as well, just because they were able to get the last kind of three, four together. Mole actually didn't die for the last three rounds of the half, which enabled him to really just make sure that he could always be that player to drop rifles to the rest of his team. And 
it just put fish up on this plateau where always being able to buy always gives you the upper hand against your opposition because FM they started to lose control of their economy it very much slipped out of control so now they do get a chance to respond though pistol gonna be a big part of this as they will look to kick themselves up towards nine not too much coming out from fish a little bit of aggression here and there is it's gonna be FM just to try and pledge their allegiance towards this B side but Roma and Keita start are strong with a double kill for themselves the kills are in gonna be very effective as it's just what they need to least try and keep up the good start of play they actually had over on the first half. Roma as well, headshot coming through on towards Fry. Now Keita with another trade back on towards Pulse. There's Jenko for one of his own. Very nicely done across the board. A flurry of frags coming out. Fish 1, 2, 3. A flawless pistol round to kick things off. That's going to really get the morale going. Yeah, they're going to be getting them pop on now as they do begin to set themselves off on the right foot, as you say. 8 to 8, equalization point as well for all intents and purposes. It is just the fifth round now that Fisher and Tiffany have been able to claim in a row if you include that last half performance. We are, of course, you know, certainly kind of weighing the odds here of FM on kind of what the value is of them forcing up. And I do think they've came to the right conclusion that at the end of the day, just going for p 250s and no Kevlar, it's smart. Just save that extra money you just got. Use that to get that early buy. Yeah, obviously the thing is as well, like, with getting the bomb down, you can get that money out and you get the buy through. And, uh, it does help a lot more. So that coming into effect, all factors that will help them out for these later rounds, but they still need to try and do something in this round. It's not a throwaway. Yeah, you know, you can pull something out of the bag. Uh, there isn't the greatest buy on uh, on fish. There is a couple of weaker weapons in play. Obviously, the UMP and the MP7 will tear through you with no armor, so you are going to be picked off very quickly. But trade game can definitely work out against those guns. If you catch them off off guard, take a couple of them down, there's a lot of potential to break the economy of fish once you free before it builds too effectively. Even just a bomb plant, though, just to kind of almost attract away from a round with potential. Just getting a bomb plant here for FM holds a lot of value. It just means that they can get that extra little bit more going into that early bite in terms of utility and that sort of thing, which utility on a T-side is actually incredibly valuable. I don't think it's a point that's stressed enough, especially on a map like Overpass, where the ability to go for a, something like just a smoke execute on towards A can secure, the, secure you that early first buy. Really set you off on the right foot. But now, though, it's going to be smoother with the USB, just tapping on away. Eventually, we'll pull through the headshot, just clawing away on towards Fry. We do see Stanley responding back in with just another one. that training game starting to come to effect as well. I don't think it's towards Fuya, but that is going to be the rifles. Just to spray on down. Nilzinho trying to get a little bit closer. Oh, not ticking too lightly. It's, it's going to be a very damaging round for Fish123. But it's still around for them nonetheless. Yeah, and that's the thing that we want to see actually coming out from FM into that round, right? They forced out three rebuys going through. Three casualties on the side of Fish. That's not good at all. Very weak on both players as well, so that armor is going to be damaged. So they have to spend money investing to rebuy that armor. They also take so much of a hit. They burn all of their utility as well. So it's a crazy amount of economy that they have to basically just spend away to get back into this round now as well. And FM, they can try and play a little bit more comfortably here. If they pick this round up, the economy of Fish will be very short. First, Ooh. Windows around for the second. The Orpus Mia throws a wrench that works. He will play the left Nilzinho. But that's still one for two. Any better will tell you those odds. Not quite stacked against your favor right now, as it isn't too positive at all if you're in the camp. On Fish 1, 2, 3. They do still have the AWP, though, which is perhaps a bit of a slow way to run down. If that can find just another pick, it's certainly a weapon for the job. But FM holding their cards very close to their chest. We know they're all stacked towards B, and you can hear a little bit of firepower or just being sprayed on through but for the most part it's nothing too crazy fm just being very slow here now 55 seconds why not it's true they might as well just play it slow you know they know they're in the driving seat they have the upper hand in this scenario they still have utility to work with they can try and take that aggression towards the bomb site not all of the cts are there there's only two men there if they find these frags very easily and they're great one versus ones here as well through the smoke fry takes down more but unfortunately jenko starts to go large Two shots coming out as he takes down Pulse and Fry. Weber can trade it back, but now it's the two versus one. They still have the, uh, the upper hand in this scenario. They get the bomb down, back off, get into after plants, play effectively. You have no reason to try and take the fight onto Smooth here. It's so hard for him to slip his way towards the bomb site and have to draw out both of these fights as well. You peek into him, the double face comes through, works out smartly. Obviously, they took the initiative there. They find the opening kill, and it goes that way. Confidence in play, but it, it does work out. Obviously, look, look at the cash as well. This is the thing, because the amount of money they had to spend to physically get that buy out, and the amount of casualties they were taking in every round, they just have nothing into this one. So they've only lost that one round, but it's really just burnt their way through everything they had saved up. I think the thing with the economy as well, right, it's one of those things we talk about so, so much in Counter-Strike because it is very important. But then you always have to detract away from that and go, at the end of the day, rounds are just what counts. Rounds will win you a match getting to that perfect 16. 
both them, keeping it real. This round though, sure. they're just dropping the hammer. Fry and Ilzini are both combining. Picks are plenty for them, money to be made, farming up off these pistols. It's fish. Looking unlikely to even get one, as Fry just gonna hop around. Good thing that the majority of these kills are going to Fry as well. Obviously, the only one with the SMG. A 3k on the board for him. If you could potentially find another kill, that would be great. But obviously, Keita taking him down is also very effective. But that's still a ridiculous amount of money made into this round. Keita is trying to make him work a little bit harder for it, but they're going to be able to lock it down the end. Stanley gets the kill with the AK. And uh, overall, that is very, very good, good for uh, FM. Because you look at things now, the double eco is still in play. They weren't able to get any money out, which means FM do get this 11th round of the board, you'd imagine, as Fish123 and the Ecos have done nothing, really. They just seem lackluster. I haven't really seen too much initiative, but we haven't really had that much of a chance to see what they can bring to the table yet. There's only been two rounds they've actually been in these awkward situations. But let's see if this is going to be a bit different. More of a shopping mall style play. They wolf pack up. They take the fight through. They're just peaking. They're using the range advantage. And that is just going to play in the hands of FM. A bit of a blood pack to die together. That's going to be the case for them. So at least they get their wishes granted. So we're only able to find a singular pick on towards Stanley. As FM continue their journey forward to their sweet 16. Is that 11 to 9? They're doing a pretty damn good job of it. Fish 1, 2, 3 though. At least get to perform a buy once and for all. Ada would be back into the arms of Smoother, of course. Fairly standard stuff. Going for a double up setup as they opt for Mole as well. I think this could be the curveball that FM won't expect. Very true. The things as well, we've only really seen Smoother situate towards Lung. He hasn't done anything too crazy, right? Where's his mobility at? Where's the Smoother yeah. we know and love? That has to be said. This is what we're talking about. And now you get this double up setup out. Now this allows Smoother to kind of be the more roaming Orpa. He can take the fight, whereas Mole just stays and plays his position over on Long. With Smoother looking like he was opting to go for the early connector phase, but then backed off, decided against it. Now just focusing here towards Party. He can be just very all over the place. Very organic. Just switch things up. You don't need to... You know, you won't really be thinking about where he is. And then he'll just peek out and do some damage. But Nilzino spots him. Oh, Nilzino took him down. That's so huge into this round. What a player to remove. Just axing the head of Smear right out of the map. And this just puts FM on such a strong footing. As Nilzino and this T-side just going to begin to make their journey up towards a long. Surely I'm going to be facing up against Mole. But this position right here is almost one and done it itself. He's not even going to spot that. Goes for a flick. We'll drop on back though. And within just the nick of time as Nilzino was scoped in ready to find that trade. That's crazy. Being able to get the opening frag on the board, obviously the trade comes back through though. You leave them in a four versus four. Still, this is favoring the teams. They're looking good right now. They're gonna feel very happy about this round as they can take the fight together. Just wolf back up. They're taking the fight over on towards long. But are they aware that the double up setup is in play? They still have no reason to have noticed that Molt is here. Normally it is smooth, it's situated over here, but the boost comes in. Mole looking like he might not be ready for this. Oh, misses the shot as well. Nilzinho can trade now. Very effective stuff. Nilzinho doing his work absolutely fantastically. He is always the very aggressive warper. You know, you're going to see him supporting his teammates. There's a great job of being that warp by GL. Unfortunately, when the peak comes through, though, Roma will overpower Weber. Nilzinho in the end will burn him to a crisp, though. Three versus one into this round now. Retake almost comes out for Jenko, but it was not meant to be. They picked that one up. And FM lock it down overall. This is looking very effective for them. And that's the thing as well for Fish123. You get a buyout, but once again, they pumped everything they had into that round. Fully invested as much as they possibly can. And it's the same old story once again. FM, they're probably going to lock this one down because Fish, they cannot do anything on their Ecos. Sure, they've got a Max 7 on Keita, which in the past we've seen Keita doing some deadly stuff with a shotgun. But still, they just don't seem to have any real initiative or game plan on these Ecos. Just falls apart. Keaton in a difficult position to be able to do his work, and we'll find just the one which sure is what we did. And an AK 47 will just chew through you, simple as that. Smoother going to do some damage in connector. But it's That's what counts right now. Unfortunately for FM, sure you can argue the phrase of value, but FM are now 12 ton, I know. And Fish, FM they have, need rounds. Yeah, FM have very good money as well. That's the thing. They actually got a lot of kills with the SMGs early. Uh, Nilsinio is on about like 7.5k or something like right now. Everyone's actually pretty healthy, so it's, it's not going to affect them too badly. 8.7k. Uh, so everyone's pretty happy. If Fish123 decide to opt for this AWP as well, they can't leave Mole over towards Long that they did last time. Not without that rifle support. That has to be a two-man job. You don't just leave one up there once you've already faced it. Sure, if you're, if you're going to be that first contact, that's fine. But the minute Mole fell back and decided to stick around without that rifle support, we just see him get overrun. That's going to be the same thing that happens time and time again if we see any presence towards Long. That's the another round going their way now as well. They've got the bomb plant in this, so any cash they kind of lost being able to go for those rebuys, they're going to be pretty healthy about. Obviously, Stanley's economy is 
It wasn't the greatest, but obviously the cash going through now is fine. They can always drop him if they want to. I mean, Nilzinho can drop him an AK, so he can still have money to get full nades out. Which you'd imagine you'd see coming through. Yeah, someone's dropped him an AK there. Um, there is the buyout back on Fish. Didn't have enough money to get for the double orb. Smear is back on the primary orb. But still, I w yeah, this is good. I want to see the aggression coming out from it. There's no point in him just being situated off by Long. The only faces we've seen from FM towards Long is into the late round when there's really no reason for him to burn the entire four first 40 seconds of the round just sitting there. Now with this fight, he might catch him off guard. Nice shot as well. Takes that weather. That is sick. Absolutely sickening stuff as they now push their way through, trying to take some damage back there on towards the B bomb site. They use their confidence. They find the opening frag on towards Jenko. There's a follow-up as well from Stanley. Stanley, 2K comes through, taking down everyone in his warpath. This is just disastrous. It was looking so good. Smear added a bit of flare into the round, but it's just a sprinkle. It's not enough to actually change things. That's a tag through the smoke on towards Smear now. 16 HP, not making a difference at all. One pick, and that is all that Fish will find. Is it is going to be FM just letting that bomb tick on away. Pulse holding tight on towards short. Mole trying to find that frag. But it's just patience for fish. They're already in that sort of exit frag mode. Smear going to support Mole just to make sure that that push does come through that door. They slam it right back in their faces. But even then, this is the end of a round. Another going to that T side. 14 to 9. Fish, now they are really running out of chances. Their economy can't support this. It very much can't sustain them. This is weird. History. This is such an awkward spot to be in. As sure, you get out of that round with two weapons to play with, but you're gonna have to once again burn all your economy. They can get an effective buyout into this one, as they did have the seven point two k over on Jenko, which means full utility across the board. Everyone can actually get the buyout around that. But that's your last ditch attempt at this point, as it should be broken into the following round. So you come in here, you need to lock it down now. They can't really afford themselves to try and play for OT because they just won't have any money into that next round. And as we've seen, the most they can do is sort of get around two to three kills on Eco. They haven't been able to win a single Eco. So this is it. This is match point right now in effect. Fish runs to three, they dug themselves down in the dirt. And already, Smooth gonna be there to fill the hole, just the first body to hit the stack. The second soon to follow as Mole is going to peek towards Long, but just another part of the map has been left untouched as FM leaving no stone on turn towards the B site as it is just going to be Stanley creating a tear as he opens up with a double kill. Mole still stuck over towards A, finally kicking into hide gear with these rotates. But it's just too late for Fish. They're blocked out of the site. The flames creating a wall. Nade after nade, damage after damage. So much utility on this T side. Fish 1, 2, 3. They're out of this first map. Yeah, there's no way. Like, even if they save both of these rifles, they can get out like kind of an awkward off buy into the next round. But obviously, Keat goes down as well. So it's, it's going to be. It's worse and worse by the second the more casualties they take. Because there's no way of them retaking and winning this round anyway. So Mole basically just has to stay alive. Even if he finds frags, though, does nothing. FM have a crazy balloon of economy. So you are not going to be able to pop that and actually hurt them into what could be the final round here. Is the economy of fish is going to be horrendous. It's not going to be that great. And the thing is, as well, these ecos have just been very weak. And. It's just kind of scary. Look, the fight does actually come through. Actually, it's a little bit better than they expected it to. I thought their economy was a little bit worse than that. So the fight does come back in. It's not too bad. Smoothie, though, won't be able to afford the orb. But even then, we haven't really seen too much from him on the orb. He just looks scared. And a lot of the things he's going for. I'm so like, perplexed by the pay he actually went for there as well. He's just standing out in the open. Scoped over towards Monster. We haven't really seen any early round aggression towards Monster apart from E-Coach from FM. I feel like I'm watching a passive orb play, which is not Smoothie at all. No one will ever describe Smoothie as a passive play. At least they do get the first pick and start to change things. Keita, the pick up first blood on towards Fryer, but right now I'm still not holding too much hope. I need to see more from Fish to really solidify this advantage. I think as well it has to be flawless. And if they get around on the board, there's always the reset factor where then Fish uh, FM can just come back in and lock the game down straight away off the back of that. And that's a scary thing because they've got, you know, they've got around two, three rounds of actual buffer before their economy starts to, to break away from them anyway. So FM aren't going to be that scared if they do potentially lose rounds. They know they have time to play with here before anything starts to go wrong. Pulse trying to spot out ahead here as well. Crazy amount of information off the back of that, but no frag turn his way. The only scary factor is, look at Keita with the backstab. Coming in with the rear. Easy kill goes through. Takes down Mother, but he now knows where the bomb is as well. Pulse is also going to hit the deck off the back of Smuya. This is scary so far. FM, surely they can't claw this round back. Fish when they're up against a wall. They fight a little bit harder, and that does give them a more of a fighting chance to contest this round. As you say, as it is the Stanley to pick up just the one, but Smuya responding with a headshot on towards Nozinho will put a round on the ball for them 15 to 10. But this is the economy. You've got two players maxed out at 16k yeah. right now for FM. That's just so, so much for them to play with that 
you kind of do the math right now, you're looking at maybe having to save once, and that's if Fish123 can get us to 15-13 perhaps. That's what I mean. They had like at least another two buyers before they had to worry about anything going wrong for them. Then you've got to factor in the fact they're going to start getting loss bonus if they are losing all those rounds in a row. And if they're getting bomb plants, there's all these factors that because they just had so much money, it's like, okay, they're not going to look that bad. They're always going to be able to get out a, a pretty efficient buy throughout the rest of this half. Now, the thing is for Fish123, the same cannot be said because, yeah, they get one round on the board there. But if Fish123 don't, work their way through and actually do lose this round, FM just win the game. And obviously that's a scary factor. You know, They're one round away from just locking it down. You can't make any mistakes. Which, unfortunately, right now is a tail of fish. They've made mistakes. The whole time been on point. Smuya plays towards long, finally gets some use out of that all, but misses the second follow-up shot. This creates a window now. They can push it towards Keita, but Pulse will win that fight with the AK-47. Stepping up further and further ahead now. Smuya so drawn on towards A, just making sure that he holds down toilets. and. That outer line region, that he's not focused on long at all, and that means this push is going to come in more map control to be gained for FM. You can see how antsy the CT side as well towards B right now. They're still so cautious that someone's flanking them from behind. It's so, not necessarily nerves this one, but just caution. Taking the fight for as well. Fry, Stanley, and uh, Weber. Stanley's been absolutely unreal when it comes to getting these entry frags so far. He's been really on point for this matchup. Weber as well. You know he can be a very consistent man. Flashbang go through to an arm entry in towards the bombsite. Weber tries to find the opening frag. Will be able to do so. Takes down Roma. That's very effective. But Smuya peeks up. Eliminates Fry. And now is able to reposition over towards Bank as well as he B-hops his way there swiftly. Arrives on the scene, ready to try and do some damage. Waits for his teammates to roll on over as well. No reason to peek on his lonesome. They also have a late round backstab coming up, but he gives the game away. Weber tries to take the pot shots, but can't actually take the fight. Stanley goes on the aggressive as well, kicks in the afterburners, trying to take the fight towards Mole. Gets punished, and Smuya finds the frag through the smoke on towards Weber. The defuse comes in. Fish123 stay alive for another round, but FM will still have money. Only just look, still a struggle, and... The issue there was that they left Long so open, they had no information. They were just sat waiting for that push to happen, giving them no response time. It was all reactive instead of being proactive. It all started when Smoothie decided that he has to be cautious. You've got to throw that into the wind at this point and have no care. You've got to be confident if you're going to make this comeback happen. That's the only way these stories are told. A peak from Smoothie, but a failing peak, giving Pulse the opportunity to walk further and further in towards Connector. Smoke does go down, meaning he can't head up the steps. But they're looking towards B right now. That's where FM want to exploit. Nade starts to roll over. Aggression needs to be bumped side. Back on the actual fight through Mole with a pre-fire. The spray transfer headshot comes out. That's huge. Roma as well doing work right now. Finds the frag back on towards Weber. So already they have the man advantage into this round. It just keeps on giving for them as well. Jenko playing from Toxic. Easy headshot to eliminate Nilsinio. Pulse will get slammed down by Smuya, and they've got another round on the board now, 12 to 15. FM seem like they will actually go for a tactical pause, you would imagine, as things have started to go a little bit south for them. Obviously, they still have a buffer to play with. They always have the overtime security, but it's looking like this will kind of, you know, this is kind of going to be one of their last sort of buys before they have to little focus more heavily on their economy. So buy into this, take the pause. What are we going to do differently? That's exactly it. 15-13 that was the score line that we looked towards. That was really where things... Almost benchmark is okay, FM, now they're starting to lose control. What are we going to see differently? It's a tough question, but I do think that one of the big plays FM could just make is they've tried to be slow towards B, they've tried to be slow towards A. We've not really seen anything too fast. It's always been a slow start. Just go for something quick aggressive, go for a bit of a pop-tastic round. Just get yourself charging up on towards A, flashes are plenty, a quick smoke execute, go within the first 30, 45 seconds. Something you would expect to see from FM at a qualifier of some sorts. Just an off-the-cuff round that Fish123 are not going to expect at all right now. Because Fish, they know that FM are always going to start around slow and then build up into something quick, or just go from slow to a little bit slower as they try and up the tempo with a B-side push. You wonder as well, potentially, if FM into this matchup up against Fish, uh, if they might actually be holding back on more of their T-side strategy, because... There's always kind of the potential that this could be the matchup of the grand final. When you look at things, obviously, Fish123 beating out Imperial 2-0 earlier in the uh, in the playoffs. If they then do get knocked into the lower bracket, 
theoretically. And then overpower Imperial once again, it will be FM versus Fish 1, 2, 3 at the Grand Final. Now, is there always that potential that FM right now, just like if we hold back, don't show too much of our T side strategy potentially? Uh, we, you know, we saw a little bit of that beforehand when it was FM versus Fish in the qualifier for a, for a recent UK land that just went on. Well, it was the same sort of storyline, where it seemed like their T-side wasn't as in-depth as it normally is because they were, they were kind of holding back on a few things. I think that's a really good point, actually. And it always leads back to the whole idea of just going to something off the cuff, right? Because then you're not giving too much away. The downside is that you're getting to that scoreline now where if you want the win, you've got to show something. A little bit of flesh has to be shown. If you don't, you are going to give Fish that opportunity to go for broke, run for overtime. So it's two very different sides, and we're constantly swaying either side of the options, really kind of making sure we do discuss both. But, only time will tell. Got a minute this time around to play with an FM still, being slow, always going for that slow early round. They use some utility, they try and get a bit of information on how Fish are playing, searching for a bit of always split and pick. But they're not getting any picks now. Fish are being very, very defensive. They're sitting on these sites and not moving at all until FM walk into them. Which, sure, it puts Fish in a bit of a hard spot if we do see something that catches them off guard. If we do see Stanley, for example, open up with a double kill, then a round is done. But if they play together, they play in their crossfires, they use their utility smart, they give themselves windows to bolt them through, then it's just another round for that CT side. Pete comes out early on, Stanley very low. That's not really what they want into the round that they've taken the pause out for, the timeout to try and clear their heads. The aggression comes through, those smokes are in. This is where they really need to keep the afterburn is opening. Frag goes away, Nilzinho though takes down Jenko as his teammates roll through as well. Nilzinho double or nothing at this point as he eliminates Mole. Stanley finds the spray down on towards Roma and things keep getting better for them. Headshot from Pulse. Kida with a late round backstab as he works his way up from short, but it was not meant to be. They will fall and there you have it. FM will claim the first map. That is going to be a 16-12 scoreline as they lock it down. What a map it was. Very, very close. Constantly swaying either side of the board. We certainly expected to see a little bit more from both of these teams, but FM really brought their A game for a lot of the time. We did see, sure, some kind of mistakes from them where Fish did take advantage of that. And I think it gives us a, a fun little contested one going into Cobblestone too. But it's still an FM win. It still at least follows through the prediction. But Fish, they refuse to die. It's true. Fish were not going to give up at any point for that matchup. Towards the end, especially, Fish just started to play a lot better. They looked very strong. And you've got to kind of wonder how, how much have Fish got left to give. Obviously, one map advantage now in the bank of FM. Going into that second map, Fish, are they still going to be confident? Overpass a map that you kind of look at and go, they okay. Map pick. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, it's sort of where you look at it and go, okay, if they're going to win, it's going to be overpass. Like, this is where normally they actually pull a lot of stuff in the bags. All of these players that you see on there as well, very good at overpass. The thing is, as well, though, it was weird. Smoother. Loves overpass. You see always the really aggressive, crazy peaks coming out from him. He does a lot of sort of, you know, weird stuff. Today, that it didn't feel just like looked somber. He, yeah. he literally, he looked really bad there. It, just, it didn't feel like Smoothie was playing CS. Mm. Dozier was playing again. I don't know. It's just, it doesn't feel like Smoothie at all. It's behind the man and his PC right now. Hopefully, he can up his game on a map like Cobblestone, another map where you can really have some presence if you are using the AWP. But if he's non-existent, we could be looking at that Swift 2-0 and F get themselves one step closer to taking that trophy. You give it a stroke. You love there it. Is, yeah. Love a little trophy. <laughs> well, That's the first map. That is the first map. That's dumb. We are going to be heading to just a short break. Be right back very, very soon.
one, take all three max. Take one, take four. 14, 11. All right, on the cast for closing the sound. Max point two, point two. UK Masters. Wow. That was a, more of a C. <laughs> yeah, it just didn't really work, did it? No, not really. No. Fell apart there, unfortunately, much like Fish and their ability to play off pass and Sweet and oh. ability to warp. Look, Ryan Snakes Oliver. Yeah, confirmed. Cheers, Snakes. Cheers for that. What can I say? Can I have an ice cream of a snake, please? You know, we used to have snakes in the fridge. Really? Genuine, genuine thing. Like, just one day, turn up the studio. Did you have to call an exterminator? The door's over there, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that was quite the map. Yeah, it was, wasn't it? It was, it was a bit of right. a struggle. <laughs> it didn't really... I think it's really, really the point to talk about, right? Because usually you see so much from him and his ability to walk, to open up things for his team, to create space for his team. Without any of that, you see real tests coming in, and they, they just couldn't pass. It was very, very much bad from them. Yeah, it was kind of awkward. You know, it's not really smooth with Sweaty see. Seems kind of like confidence resume wasn't there. When we saw the double or setup coming out, and Mole was more playing the station down or his passive, that's when we expected Smooth to just be absolutely giving it, running around the map, tearing things up. But there was none of that. He just kind of looked very somber, very timid, and it come back to bite fish in the end there. That CT half, where we expected them to dominate, because not as much strategy needed, just rely on your raw aim, finds the frags, but no one could do that. Well, going into FM's pick, bear in mind. Cobblestone. What are we thinking? <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. It's going to be interesting, obviously. Cobblestone, a map where FM should lock this down very easily. Yeah. To be honest with you, I think this is going to be the 2 zero coming up. Quick, dished. You've rung it up. It's on an episode of Kel's Kitchen. So, uh, Kel's Kitchen, huh? Kel's Kitchen, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Keenan and Kel are back for an all-new <laughs> special. What channel? <laughs> Um, I don't know. It's a sales pitch right now. You got literally like Channel Four. <laughs> Channel Four, <laughs> live 7 p.m. Channel Four. You Channel can watch Kel's Kitchen. The boy of an ass for a face. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh. oh, they're having a stab, aren't they? This is quite nice. <laughs> look, look at this aerial view. I feel like I'm a pigeon. <laughs> it's been a bit of a pigeon today. I'm gonna cheeky fly around. Viewers with motion sickness. I am sorry. You've, you've experienced a lot of pigeon recently, I was told. Yeah, I got tapped in my <laughs> just, you know. Stand outside, you can ask, because they pigeon decides, you know what, that's a, looks like a perfect person to just drop my load on. Honestly, I don't even know what I'd done. <laughs> I checked my phone, all of a sudden, I just see my life flash before my eyes, but it wasn't, it was just some pigeon drop. Ver nearly hit my eye, yep. right in front of my eyebrow, hit the floor, Flakes just goes, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what's happened there? Just realise I've been attacked. Yep, you're uh, oh. ripped the jacket to say the least, dry cleaning of course. Needs to be had after that one. Like yeah. judging by the, the lovely that'll, little white streak you've got. <laughs> Sorry, multiplay. Yeah. Pigeons are not quite. I mean, the, the entirety of the the front entrance really is attacked by pigeons. So real rough stuff. Yeah, it is. Yeah. A bit of a pigeon problem there, clearly. God. Need an exterminator for that one. Anyway, let's say we're live. Exterminators. I know. Yeah. It's, no, not cheap. You have to pay a lot for them. Expensive stuff. Smuya, he's playing more of the defensive one. His lonesome getting information. Pete comes through. I look so confused about where he actually got tagged from there. So Smuya does get away with the opening frag on the board now, leaving four members already only left for FM. That's not a great way to kick things off, as the play will most likely be towards the B bomb site as well. And even with five players alive, it's so hard to hold the B bomb site in the best of times on those pistol rounds for CT. So. It's going to be awkward. Yeah, going to be awkward to say the least as Neil Zinu is going to tag away from the back of platform with his USB and Pulse. He's really filled the ranks up towards long. Samuya has no idea what is coming, but still lands the flick as he takes him down, just perfectly pre-aiming the angle, in fact, as it is now going to be Roma to try and continue this trend for Fish123. If they're starting strong on their T side, Samuya going to spring to action from Long Stanley, looking to go a bit more aggressive here. As it is going to be the city side rotating into position. Not quite out of this. They do still have the kit on Weber after all, which certainly is going to help them. But they're rotating more and more players over towards A. Leaving just a welcome mat on this B site saying, you know what, come on in, the site is yours. We've all got a bunch of friends in, it's all well and good. Grab a drink, relax. Nozinho trying to chime in with a headshot here and there, but you can't help but feel like it's a little bit too fast. Especially with Smoothie as well. He's still the late round backstab. He's, you know, he's coming with a lurk. Absolutely owned it towards the A1 site as he finds a frag on top of Mole was well now eliminates Nilzinho. If the round wasn't already over, when they got that secondary frag over towards A, it was completely done. At this point, you leave Stanley left on a 1 versus 4. Stanley is so effective. Individually, very talented, but you just can't win that. It's not an easy round at all. Smooya, another frag goes his way as well. So that's a pretty sick round coming through. I think there's a 4k for him. So just from being able to catch people off guard, Smooya dismantled the team. It all comes back to one player. A player that we really kind of stressed quite a lot on the lead up to this match and off the back of that previous map. 
Steps up in the pistol, gets fished that first round, but we've, we've been here. Sure, that last map is water under the bridge, but we kind of do have to refer back to that style and say, will FM be able to get that upset and start showing their CT side? Of course, you do look towards Fish and say they should be on that sort of higher score than being on the T side of Cobble, but let's not get too far ahead of ourselves. It's just some damage to be applied, both to Fry and Stanley combined. Every player, my weather has opted for that close range CZ, and it's going to be an interesting stack in towards drop, but one that will give Roma that window that you can try and jump through with that UMP just to get a little bit more fracking power down. They will be setting themselves up. Getting ready for the late round drop into drop down. Try and take their way through. Aggression towards every bomb site. Obviously, the thing is, they have the SMG space. So you can actually just throw people down towards drop down. Most likely, you'll overpower the pistols that are close by. But they still have the range advantage as well. So there's no reason to go in heavy handed here. Just play it slow. Use the map control to your advantage. Slowly approach in. Take your control off the CTs. Bite back. Thing is as well, four CTs in uh, CZs in play, it's going to be very awkward if they peak an angle that actually complements close range. For now, 40 seconds left. A lot of patience being employed by Fish. It does get to a point though where you do have a little bit of caution when it comes up to these pistols because you leave it so, so late that you have to always go for this quick, lastly push. The opportunity is going to be there, but for the most part, it's going to be pretty good, but they've not dealt with Pulse. Pulse is going to be the problem here as Roma is going to come by oh. slowly, ending key to revenge for that previous map, leaving Stanley in a one versus two. Stanley seeps in behind, ready for the right moment to grab he works his way around, does transfer damage over, but no kill gonna go his way. Roma will execute him there with the UMP. As the buyers come back through as well. Obviously they did do a fair bit of damage actually, two fish, one, two, three in that round. It wasn't the cleanest by any means, but it's still not gonna affect them that badly. They're getting the bomb down, they're cleaning their way through, looking like they're gonna be able to get this 3 out on the board, but some team attack actually comes out. So Keita, yeah. Sue and Keita have a, a bit of a, a feud right now. Previous map, Keita and Smear. This map, Smear has Keita. Now we've got some stabs going on in the spawn. Yeah, that was a bit odd, obviously. Um, actually could come back to bite them in this round a little bit, as if Keita basically just wants to go for the aggressive play, he's the one with the SMG. So he's going to burst down drop down. Then they peek here over by Broken Wall with his AKs. Try and make the play seem like it is all out aggression towards the bomb site. Then they go for a late round A take. Should be the idea in play here. But if they find that kill on towards Keita, grab themselves a mat 10. Sure, it's not the best weapon, but it could still complement to actually do something into the late round. Even if they find a pick with it. Even if that's the only thing, they get one frag with yeah. a mat 10. That's money for the CT side. So we're going to see if it is going to bite on towards the head of fish right now. As they are just slowly making some tread. Just swimming around in circles somewhat as they do look to make themselves an opportunity up on towards this A-set. Of course, that is where the bomb is currently venturing towards. Very much as a big cluster of this T-side. Of course, the core of FM are pretty much all in connector slash B. Even just one player, Nilzinho, do so much on this A-side. Elevated angle, pretty much just saying, come on, pick me apart. Oh, the, back, the vulture is here, Smuya. Gonna find himself a pick. That's the thing. Expecting it was going to be the B players, there was information gathered towards that site. When they now go for this late round burst, and they send Keita through connector as the backstab man, the late round lurk. It's so easy for them to slip their way through. They do execute though. Weber strikes, takes him down. Another peek comes in. Smear gets one, but trades out by Pulse there. Unfortunately, they couldn't find a kill with the Mac 10, so they don't get a big cash injection to go along with it. But still, two rebuys going to have to come out for Fish 1, 2, 3. It will dent the economy a little bit more. Stanley as well hoping to find something. He can just suicide here oh. because there's no chance of him. You know, he doesn't have to run the risk. He knows he's only got that USP. He didn't invest anything at all into the round. Why not just get picked off if that's the way the cookie's going to crumble? Into this one now as well. You can see they did dent the economy of fish a little bit, but not really that much to write home about. The AWP still can come out over on Smear. Effective amount of utility across the board as well. Meanwhile, for FM, the first fight comes out. This is where things have to get serious now. FM, though, they need this round nice and early on just to give themselves some presence on the board. They do have the to complement the side of Smuya. It is going to be an early peak coming from him. Swap himself some feet. Has a bit of a tap, but doesn't quite connect. That's already going to give away his position. Matrix now going to be a spot left touched. But Smuya already looking for that frag towards Long, and steps to be taken as well in towards mid mean that Weber is in a tough position here. Really going to have to make this one work. He's going to be repeat by Mole time and time again. He's got to force the entry. Supported by Nilzinia will sign as that push comes into one long. Keita, he knows what's up. Pierces through the Weber going to be supported by Stanley further and further. But this leaves his A site so far out of position that Smuya can run right with the AWP. Kill 
Daniel comes out though as he flicks his way over. Smear taking down Stanley. Now then, three versus four at this point. They do have the advantage of the Battle of Attrition here. Weber with a face though, rattling out on that trigger, trying to do some damage, but can't quite connect the shots. Fry as well. You can see he's aware of the player on the bomb site, but can't keep up the peak sufficiently. When he does, Smear is able to execute so quickly. Keita as well, just going back and forth on these frags. It all falls on towards the pulse. But one versus three, no chance. Just get out of there. A masterclass from Fish in terms of how to bait players out, how to force them out of position. All they did was just allow Mole to consistently show face over and over again at the bottom of Matrix, just in mid, just always right by the doors. There was never a chance that he would die right to the very end. And when he eventually did fall, FM was so far off the A site that Smee was just given free reign to get himself onto that site before the rest of his team could touch. Which meant it was pretty much a, a take from the inside out, a complete role reversal for what FM would usually expect. And this means Pulse now, the present. Well, that 1v3, as you mentioned, nowhere for him to go aside from just dart on over towards this B-site, try and beg for Mercy almost to save this M4. Because that is value in itself right now for FM, but this is not the start we needed to see in Cobblestone. No, very awkward, obviously. <laughs> FM, you expected, obviously, okay, they're going to lose the first three rounds, they didn't get the pistol, the economy isn't going to help them. Coming into that first fight, that's when we thought, okay, Tides might start to turn here. But they couldn't get the AWP out, so Nilzinho couldn't really do too much with it, or potentially Weber or Pulse. I mean, you never really know who's going to be able to actually don the AWP on that side. That's the thing with FM as well. They're so volatile in terms of who wants to go for the AWP, because they just all are very proficient with the weapon. But they didn't have any chance of getting the weapon out. No cash. We couldn't see an aggressive face come through. So they had to just wait for the peak to come in. They got overpowered as well at the time when F uh, when Fish actually went for the strike on towards the bomb site. Now back into this scenario as well. One weapon that was saved on towards Pulse. It relies so heavily on him to do basically everything in this round. His teammates can do damage to his pistols, but they can only play close angles. Pulse has to be the big man into this one. Certainly putting him up on towards the pedestal tree. And angles are really watched towards as well. That's what Pulse is playing. Is Jenko going to begin to get around towards the It's going to be a CZ peak to come into the drop zone as well. Just pitching themselves over the ledge. That's right. Try and get a few more in, but Pulse still waiting to see what he can do here. And in fact, because drop is covered for him, because door is covered too, he can just take on platform right now. He's just them. He's supported. He goes for the spray. A double kill for Pulse. A third to come in as well off the back of Stanley. This is perfection from FM. Stanley hungry for more mole. Finally securing the trade. But is it all but too late? Pulse is still standing. 13 HP. But 13 HP all the difference. Fry now going to support with the CZ. Oh. Tightly. Smooth with the AWP will somewhat throw a wrench in the works. He does find that pick. Bring it back to a three versus two. However, this is time for the rotate as well. Smuya gonna get taken down by Pulse, who's still swinging, fires off a few more mole. The last man standing now for this T side. So much to achieve. He's running out of time, 27 seconds left, and Pulse, he does it all. A quadra kill for this man. Insane play from him in that round. Yeah, that's huge. Really, really dominant stuff. So heavy handed there. It's, he had confidence, brings its way through. Now, we said it relied on him so heavily. Goes big. Everything you need to do with the M4, absolutely fabulous. If they can do that when they have one rifle, why can't they do it when they have five rifles? Now, let's see if that's going to be a difference maker. Weber as well has the opening hands. This is perfect for them. Now they can actually play the style of CS they want to. Weber can go for the opening peaks. He can try and get that one frag advantage on the board. Actually, gets tagged though. For one HP? Yeah, what the hell? <laughs> what a tag. That is, that is quite something. Keita going to begin to look for that window of opportunity over towards long as he does begin to pry himself into this round mold. Smoothie are both just pretty much playing around the edge of this smoke. It's Fish123 very far back in this round, just tiptoeing around the edge, just seeing what they can find themselves and pretty much just giving them time to think. Some space before they do begin to get themselves further and further forward. Looking to really just gain some ground on towards long right now. That seems to be the target, but... Utility after utility is just acting as the perfect block. We see smokes go down, Molotovs burn away. That's all gonna fit out eventually. Smear takes advantage of that just as it does. Molotov has a gap to find that pick, but Nilzino goes back straight back and flashes down half, and Nilzino knows what's going on. Bakita gets dropped down low, but it's not quite enough. He finds that headshot, snapping the neck of Neil in return. Absolute execution coming out. This is what we wanted to see as well. A whole lot better at this point. You leave yourself in a four versus three now. You force the CTs to try and back off. They're now trapped towards the bomb site. But this push starts to come in as well. Keita, he's just getting pounded on, sure. But he's not actually taking that much damage. And he's able to just tiptoe out of there. He should be caught off guard by the man on the site, which he will. Pulse comes in with the opening head. Actually tries to take the initiative as well. Peeks out wide though. Rome is able to get the kill. Jenko, one going his way. And now Fry left in a one versus three. This is so horrible. The reset as well. If somehow Fry can pull this out of the bag, it'd be crazy. But most likely he's going to get picked off here, Flakes. The amount of money they're going to have left until the next round is just going to be abysmal. 
is, is they struggle right now, one that is so much uphill for them. Just as they thought they found themselves their foothold, it was just crushed away from them. This fish one, two, three, begin to really run away. Thankfully, FM, they do have a little bit to play with, but they can make a decision here, and it seems to be just all out warfare for them, engaging in this battle. They've gone for the AWP, the two rifles, and the pistols on Fry and Stanley. That's the scary factor, that's the thing. They have to skimp on those two players, as the money was just broken off the back of them. And it's so awkward for them as well, because sure, Pulse was actually able to win off around single handedly before, but the open Pulse as well. Pulse is crazy individually when it comes down to his open skills. He actually is very, very effective. You're going to see some crazy folks coming out from him. I wouldn't be surprised if he could actually be a bit of a game changer into this one by catching them off guard. And Fish123, no AWP on Smoothie. So he can't try and go for any aggressive faces early to try and get those opening picks, especially towards the B-bomb site. They have to just play around the AKs and go for more of a burst strategy into the late round. It's going to be a struggle. Can they get themselves, these players, to play so... Just on this mon monumental scale, to put it fairly. It's such a big ask, right? So these three rifles... Two our rifles and AWP, so we gotta find those picks. Big arms, these pistols are just out of their depth. Oh, the face though, somehow Stanley gets the 2k. What the hell? How is Stanley been able to get away with that? Goes back in for the third pick as well. Tags onto Smuya. That should not have happened at all. Somehow he's allowed to just sprint up, peeks on his lonesome, does damage, just spamming into their shins. Eliminate. Pulse finds one frag as well back on towards Smuya. You leave now Weber in a one versus two, but Weber, he's been in this position a million times. He should be able to pull something out here as Mole is low. If they don't peek together, Weber will be the one to try and capitalize. Gets the first frag somehow. Does it get taken down as well? He is low but he is still alive and kicking has time to reload his rifle now before he goes back in for the peak smoke goes down to try and block him off he is unaware of the position of mole who has the bomb waiting behind the fountain waiting for the microphone to strike nine seconds to play with weber peeks out finds the kill weber goes huge just at the right moment grabs the orb as well a man out of his depth seeks depth desperation that comes through for his team what's a play to make it work with a rifle you mentioned just how many times he's been in those situations there are so many clutches. You look back through the ages of UK Counter-Strike, look at some of those classic frag movies. That man's in them, and for a good reason too. Showing it again has gets FM such a big round, a round where they really shouldn't have a shot to win. They do. Two to five, still not going to be looking too good for them in terms of scoreline, but much better for them in terms of the potential to bring it back now. As at five to three, it should really be a tough one for Fish to try and force. It's just with these pistols. This should be going the complete other direction. UMPs as well in play for FM should not be their economy. Some battles will be taken both towards mid and mostly towards his A site. As Fish123 are looking for an opportunity, but they're not given it at all. Thing is though, that smoke burns a lot of time off. They actually do flash push through it in the end, but Nilzinho is just able to do damage. Nilzinho, 3k comes out. That is crazy. And he tears his way through. They want to try and get through this with as minimal amount of casualties as possible. And it does seem like it is going to be nigh on flawless for them. As Pulse finds that kill back on towards Smula. Oh, nearly gets the kill back on towards Nilzinho. Leaves him one HP with a Deagle. He's going to be kicking himself. But anyway, they get through. Flawless round comes out. What FM needed as well. They need to not only get these rounds, but they need to get them in such a fashion where they have a healthy economy start to build. Three kills for the UMP does just that. Really helps Nilzinho replenish what he's got. You can see him miles ahead of every other player on his team now 4,300 in comparison to the likes of 2,000, 2,000, 2,100 or so. So really, really so strong for him. Very supportive of the FM lineup. Now the pistols just trying to blunder their way in towards drop zone. And Molto's going to go down to greet them. Maybe not perfect little wave, that wavy hello. Is it? It's going to be ah. forced with the rifle to clean house there with the M4A4. As he does then aid by the UMP of Stanley. FM looking strong. Dealing with these pistols nice and contently. Very effective. That was very good to see as he just teared his way through. And they had no answer at that point. They just had to keep pushing to the meat grinder. They peaked one by one. Frag was frag with the pulse. Mole hoping to make the situation a little bit more manageable. Force out another casualty over to the side of FM if possible. But it was not meant to be. They will drop down. But now they have the cash to reinvest though. But FM one round away from actually equalizing the scoreline at 5-5. Now, obviously, this map is slightly more notched towards the T side as well in terms of its favor. So you expect Fish to really try and lock it down. And it looked good at the start. Those five rounds were huge for them. But they have to try and bounce back into that form now, or FM could definitely get a very effective lead out of this. It's very double-edged sword, though, right? We could see this still go two very distinct directions. It's not all up for FM. Very easily. Slips so quickly out of control. 
So far, it is just going to be a smoke towards long. Some gap to be created. Just not really too much presence here for FM. It's just players dead set on either side. And FM really giving up their control. Just focusing much more on mid right now. Robert is going to pop more drop. Right, playing this one perfectly right around the edge of it. Using that as well. Very defensive. Get tagged on down. Still pulls through with a double kill. That is going to be a huge part of FM trying to claim this 10th round. Ooh, be hopping around. Jenko will be caught though. Stabbed out of the air by Stanley now. As it falls on towards Keita and Smuya. The duo themselves as they go for the peak through, hoping to get an opening frag, but Weber just has it covered. It's just so easy for him at that point. You can just take the peak whenever you want, shut them down. Smuya left in a one versus five. This is basically going to be another flawless round going through for FM, as I highly doubt Smuya will be able to achieve anything here. Bouncing around with smoke in his hand as well there, as he was able to get his weight back over towards stairs. Now, could have been awkward if he actually went for the full peak. Pulse is going to walk into his crosshairs, an easy AK headshot does come through. Well, they're going to play it smart. I thought they were actually going to go for the all-out push onto him, try and hunt him and take him down, but they do back off. This is a lot better. It's better than that money right now. It's going to be just so, so important for them to really stack up all those dollars. Because they do eventually claim his life either way. He's going to be a 5-5 five five score in as well. Nielsenia really still the player to lead the charge in terms of economy. 10,800 now for him in the bank. Personal finance is really supreme. Of course, the AWP is going to be in play on towards weather. Pretty standard stuff for FM. And they've really saved themselves now, because this T-side having five rounds is almost what you expect on a T-side of Cobra, right? Five, six. So for FM to get themselves up to five, it's looking much, much better. They're very likely to get their sixth of their own right now. And then they can use that to just carry on their own volition and push further and further. And on CT side, getting yourself seven rounds, eight rounds, that's a big win. So they turn it back on its head. Can they keep it going? And how far are they going to be able to take this? Well, he yeah, will take the first point of contact. Has the bomb as well, though. So the peak coming out right now, if they actually found this execute on towards Mole, any chance of Fish123 pulling anything out with an eco would be taken away from them very swiftly. They could just defend the bomb, they lock it down, they win that round easy. They are going for more of a split and pick style. I mean, they're basically going to burst late down through drop down, try backstab as a lurk, and then take control of the A bomb site as well. So it will converge at the same time of a pincer play, but. You'd imagine that FM will be able to pick this up fairly easily. Obviously, the angles they're holding do complement them. They have the rifles as well, so they should be able to tear their way through. The potential the T's could pull something out. Not really going to start off well from them, though. Already that first pick, pulling into the side of the CT. Try looking to double dip. Gets himself just another on to the because why not? They go in for more. He's so hungry at this point. Mole Jenko both will turn up one for this T site. Just still swinging with this Deeg, but unfortunately he's just flailing the sword left, right, and center all over the board. But gets nothing done. The shots go astray. And Stanley will eventually take his life, and it is going to be a sixth on the board for FM. Keeping it clean yet again. Building up that economy, really going to be a healthy hand for them. As we come to the end of this first half, just a few more rounds to go. Fish, desperate to try and get the most, almost maximum value for them, really. Here. Yeah, they need to try and do something better than normal into this round. They can't just have an average round come out here. They really need to lock it down, but they need to lock it down very quickly. FM, they've actually got a bit of a silver lining. You know, there's been a break in the rain at this point, and everything's been going well for them. You can still slow that down. You can still reset it, but you can't keep having these rounds where you allow FM to lock it down so dominantly where they actually get a lot of money to play behind into the following one. Right now, the 6-5 scoreline, looking like there is potential for FM to actually lock this down and win the half quite heavy-handedly, which is not what it looked like the game was shaping up to be at the start. It's going to be created over the drop. Granted, should we say, by the smokes and the flames thrown on down. Those are eventually going to be extinguished, however, and that will begin to fade away, so they do have to get going. When that does come in with Mole, is the man to lead the charge in this push? Always checking towards platform or such, making sure that he's also very cautious about second room. But what they aren't going to predict right now is Weber's position. He lands that shot with that AWP, he cements that lead for FM. And it's going to be so, so dangerous for them more and more repeats to come through. There needs to be a perfect flash. Jenko as well needs to do work on platform. Is he going to predict the angle of Stanley? No, but the Stanley peeks out Roma. A quick trade in return. But Keita, now cautious, checks towards connector. This 
through. Weber, though, does damage. He finds the execute back on towards Roma. Now left on a free versus two. Fish get absolutely battered. Peak comes out. Weber will put them down. And it's just Mole left to get executed. The backstab there. Fry will be the one to pull the trigger. Seven rounds on the board now for FM. Fish pump the last of their economy into another buy. The double up in play for FM. Looking strong, looking ready to keep this one up. I mean, if this is an eighth round on the board, you've got to wonder when Fish will actually have a chance to do anything. Well, they're just being ground out now. Fish just looking so, so much like chum for the Sharks. And FM continue to circle around, find these picks off the back of that double up setup, which really kind of was the turning point here for FM. They were able to do it with the rifles, then they upped their game. They didn't just allow Fish you know, six rounds to go, okay, they're doing the same thing with the rifles. They chipped being dynamic. And that means Fish's job is so, so hard for the T-side to work out what play they can do to slot in and get themselves that plant, let alone actually go for a round win. Mm. So you've got to give props to FM on that kind of sleight of hand of just making different plays. They are going to group up now as they make their approach round, trying to take the fight towards the A bomb site. Obviously, Smuya here, low down, will be caught off guard. He tries to take that aggression out through mid. As Nilzinho, it's a very awkward angle. Obviously, you have to peek quite wide to try and take this fight here. And Nilzinho has a superior weapon if Smoothie was going to go out with that Tech 9. But he's gone back up Matrix, going to peek from side. Everywhere they want to peek right now, they should be actually overpowered very quickly. As this does favor FM if they are going to play this slow start. They need to go for more of an aggressive burst and overwhelm. Like this. Uh, going to find himself that first with the Tech 9. A little bit more though, but the warp on the site was certainly in. Thing to work with. Keita will, however, just take that one down. The rifle reigning supreme. Roma gonna go aggressive, forcing the hand of Fry. This is getting rough now for the CT side. We praise them on their ability to be dynamic. But this is looking volatile. 3 have a huge advantage. FM, just back away. The door is shut. There is no way for you to get yourself onto this site. Just save the orb from the M4. Sure, you could argue they don't really need to save it, but why force rebuys if you don't need to? Yeah, that's true. It's you know, it's not worth the risk at that point. You might as well just allow this one to slip through. As now they will back off, hold those weapons, play from all that site. I mean, fish look like they might get a little bit aggressive here. They're actually playing kind of up close. Obviously, they're not going to push too deep in because their economy isn't that stable either. But they're actually taking the fight through, seeing if they can. But yeah, not actually pushing into the site now. The goal for FM here, is, and what they're really going to be talking about right now is saying, alright boys, it's 7-6. Fish, they've just been able to chime in with a round. Let's reset them here, let's force them onto a wonky buy in this next one and secure a 9-6. That's FM's goal. This is what they see for themselves, a 9-6 stuff. Whether they get there is going to be a tough story, and of course they kind of you know, almost certainly go for this double-up setup again. I want to see something fresh from them though. We praise them on that ability to be fresh. Show us that now. You've got to show something, because they, they seem to have worked out what your play is and they learn how to crack you. Nilzinho slapping the egg open though, because he does damage and stuff, as he will be able to claim that right now. Fish as well, walking their way around. Sniffing it out, seeing what else can actually go their way, but nothing can pop out. Now, Smoothie being executed that early on as well as a key factor into the round. As Smoothie is normally sort of the aggressive entry, that's what we've seen actually coming out, where he will bound in first, sort of, you know, not giving a damn. Tries to get the opening frag on the board, then sparks the initiative of the rest of the teammates coming back him up. And that's been working out quite well. We saw that with the mid-aggression that really was the whole reason ah. the previous round got pulled apart. Pulse makes it even better as well. So not only is Smoothie down, but Jenko also gets picked off. A lot of the prolific fraggers slowly getting weaned off on the side of Fish. You now just leave Keita, Mole, and Roma left standing with the AKs. Not in a good spot. They try and link up to do something together as they basically have to wolf pack and just try and overwhelm at this point. But it feels like this round's too far gone. Problem is, in his previous round that you're pushing up on towards A, they had a player who was able to deal with that all upon site. This time, that's a much tougher affair, and whether he isn't really facing in towards long too much, he's just holding tight on towards wood, and if he does he could be looking towards the right or left side of ABC to make sure that this round push isn't too kind of tough. So this is going to be a hard task, which they check out with the trades. The trades are always going to really favor this single side. It's just looking at their numbers. It's all on Mold here trying to make it stick, as he does get himself into a one versus two off the back of a double kill. 
But even then, this is an overwhelming force right now for FM. This is going to be a very tough match for him to pull through on. They don't give him one versus ones. It's done and dusted already as they begin to push. Is going to be spotted out. But no, we just said don't do this. But they're going to allow an elevated angle for Mole now. Gets the tag down. Stanley, 73 HP. No utility to play with. Does have that kid, of course. But Mole is playing this one smart. Just diving around the place the push comes in. Playing time. Mole looking for the headshot. But Stanley finally pulls through with the headshot. But it should never have been that close. That was crazy. It looked like Mole was actually going to find the round as well there at that point. Played it very well. And it was just kind of awkward, as you said, with the double face. I mean, you know, they were kind of staggered on their push through. One of them was out in the open at the wrong time. Gets taken down. That was so, so dangerous at that point. It, it really bad. bad, yeah. It, it just went from being really, really good, a crystal clear round, to what on earth are you doing? Where was the decision then? Where was the thought process? It just seemed very much six-year-old flailing, no idea what I'm doing. I'm just going to go for the push. So we advantage of that now. Finds the weakness, attacks Weber, and gets himself an early pick for his team. That's saying Weber with the confidence on the space. He had the AWP one to try and go for the early pick towards Matrix. They're going to clear their angles as well. Keep should find this kill. Will do so. Shuts down Nilzinho. This is perfect for them. Aggression towards the A bomb site where they found so much success. Pulse up close to Personal. They might be able to deny a little bit of their steam, but it is not going to be the case, right? We'll do some damage, luckily. Drake comes back in there. It's just Stanley left now, and this is as good as done. Just reinvigoration for this T side off the back of that previous round blunder. Mole be able to get so close, pushes them further and further to the idea that you just got to step up and grasp some rounds. And, well, they've got in with both hands. They've pulled away. A good job at it now. It's going to be, for the most part, flawless. Mishchenko will take the head right off of Stanley. That means things will close themselves out. Eight to seven. Not bad by FM for a long shot. Eight rounds on the CT side. You're going to want that, right? That's still pretty damn good. But I guess it's always that question of it could have been better. It could have been harsher. Yeah, it's true, right? Like, it, it still could have been a way better scoreline, but they let a few things slip towards the end, and that's where it all kind of went wrong, and it, it's just kind of awkward in the last few minutes. But 8-7, you come in here early. It heavily relies on FM actually getting some steam behind them on the pistol. If FM are able to open up quite big on the pistol, that's when it's going to get bad. But it's the same could be said. Fish 1-2-3 can definitely lock it down if they get the opening rounds. It's all about within that early game self-esteem because... Honestly, this second pistol round is so vital when the scoreline is this close. So, so important. I guess that leads us to the question of what are FM going to employ here? Is it going to be another kind of slow and steady round where they bank on the idea that the team who are going to kind of go with this very slow style will actually be able to pull through with those entry picks? Or is it going to be just a quick spouting push, perhaps a split on towards B? That's very standard on Cobblestone at a T-set, especially within the UK scene. We usually see two different variants, right? It's always going to be either something quick through long or something through drop and kind of platform B. What do you expect from FM? I'm not too sure. I mean, it's going to depend on the buy, because if we see Nilzinho go quite heavy on the utility, it'll be, obviously, we expect basically clock armor for everyone but Nilzinho, and he'll go for like a smoke and a flash, or a smoke and two flash. And then we'll see the aggression towards B. He'll smoke that in, block off a little bit of line of sight, double flash over, they push out and just try and use the aggression. But... I mean, most likely, I expect we are going to see the B play coming out here. It's kind of it's the standard a lot for FM as well. You don't really get too much luck on the A take early if you just burst your way out. Um, I am just intrigued, though, overall, how they're actually going to play out this T half. Because, obviously, from what we saw before, they looked a bit uncoordinated on over and over passing a couple of rounds in the T half, where it seemed like they were playing more just split and pick rather than actually executing any strategy. And it's odd because they do have a very vast playbook as well. So it seemed like they were kind of sort of holding some stuff back. So it'll be interesting to see if that is the same case, obviously, because on their T side, this is where we expect Nilzinho to really display, you know, Harry coordinates his team a lot more here. I feel like the difference though between overpass and cobblestone is overpass, it's, it's very, it's a lot more easier to be creative in strategy and do things that you know, may not be all that common for other players to know, other in-game leaders, you know, tacticians to know. Whereas on Cobblestone, a lot of the map has really been explored, and there's a lot of simple strategies that you can do that everyone knows. You see teams, you know, right down at the, the bottom level in the UK be able to do them. So there's no reason why FM can't come out with some very well put together, just basic compositions. Whereas the difference is on Overpass, sure, you have those basic strategies, but at a higher level of play, a lot of those strategies are labelled redundant, in comparison to Cobblestone at least. Yeah, so, yeah, I mean, it would just be interesting to see actually what they do do there. Obviously, into a pause now, assuming this is uh, a tactical pause, I'm guessing. Maybe someone just 
taking that time out before the game starts to actually work out what they want to do. I feel like it might be a technical pause, shouldn't probably from what we're what we're gathering. Yep, it is a technical pause. Kay. Unpause is coming soon though, apparently. I'm gonna slap TM. a TM on the end of yeah. that. <laughs> soon TM. Is it coming Valve soon? Or um or Blizzard soon? Half Life yeah. three soon, that's great. It's never coming out though. Just never, there's no pause at all. It's all a light. There you have it though, who's actually gonna come in and we are gonna get ourselves ready to dive straight in to the second half of what could be our last map of our first series this evening. FM, 8-7 to seven up, looking for this pistol. Opting for two utility players over just the one Weber. That second man, double flash and frag grenade. Yeah, so they actually have a lot more utility than obviously we expected they would get into this. That Molotov as well, it'll be interesting to see how that is actually utilised as we work our way through. Certainly something to keep an eye on as it is going to be FM just Building up outside of A right now, they were certainly spread out just across the entire map really at one point, but they decided, you know, let's just take a step back through Dragon, head ourselves right back on towards this A site, get ourselves built up in ramp. And this is where the utility starts to really get utilized now, as it is going to find a smoke down onto the door that's already in the block off smoother, starts to force to rotate. Molotov out as well, not actually sure where that's gone towards, I'm assuming that's going to be the A towards Balcony or towards, yeah, where it's covering the cubby. Battles to be taken. Two kills already to be found by the blocks, and the rotate from fish very, very late and slow. I mean, things will just favor this T side so, so lovely right now. If they just get all of the picks, no real response from fish at all. Yeah, huge kills coming out. This is crazy right now. FM looking good for them. All the last man left standing. He's even going to find a kill. Gets executed. The backstep comes through. Peeking at the same time. Great teamwork there. Good communication on display. FM locked that one down very quickly. Straight investment as well on towards the rifle. You can see they mean business at this point. The one SMG comes out over in Ozini, obviously uh, the two UMPs as well, sorry, over on Weber and Stanley, and then the two rifles that come out on Pulse and Fry. So they have range to work with here. You might see, uh, obviously, Nozinio get a little bit more aggressive with that Mat 10. Possibly he's going to be the lurk here, goes for the backstab. Obviously, it'll be the all aggressive to the A take. Nozinio then comes for the late round backstab over through connector. That's Weber, actually. Either way, though, it's the same story, right? The players decide the mission. Very much similar. It is going to be just a few peaks to be taken. Some very short out stuff from FM. Wanting to be very, very careful here. They don't want to throw this one away at all, right? This is very, very important that they can connect these rounds up. Gives them that huge advantage going into the second half. Three shot of the Deagle. Connects a tag by the looks of things, but I'm going to leave that as possible the right. Uh, on the other side, pretty okay as Stanley. Does support, takes down Jane for as well, adding insult to injury. Comes in and Stanley, while blind, finishes off Roma. Nice frag to actually come through there. Obviously, just locking things down. The thing is, they didn't even need to do anything too flamboyant into this round, as they just had a massive advantage anyway. But they're playing it very close to their chest. They don't want to run the risk of losing any of these rounds. Potentially as well, I would be surprised if Pulse and Fry actually just hold back because they've been dinked a little. So they don't want to run the risk of losing those weapons. They just can just stay. The rest of the teammates can take the aggressive stance and find the frags if they want to do so. Obviously, the SMGs just rip your way through. If you want to push out, yeah, Nilzinho especially, that MAC-10, just try hunt and find the kills. Stop Fish 1, 2, 3 from getting away with that armor and those pistols. So they have to spend more in the next round. And also, you get the patch bonus. This is also the other interesting point you talk about. FM map saving strategies and the like. But also, you take a look at this series third map being Inferno, of course. That's going to be a map that FM might not be all that experienced or might not be too comfortable with. It's a map that we talked so much about in UK Masters. Let's just get this 2 0. Let's not take it to Inferno, where Fish do have a genuine shot at sneaking that map in and get themselves the series. I think at that rate, actually, FM would lock it down over Inferno if you went that way. Because, I mean, we saw them 69 endpoint yesterday. Um, as well, I have seen them play Inferno before. They don't look like a bad Inferno team at all. Plus, the thing is, they actually have strategy as a team on Inferno, whereas Fish 1, 2, 3, there's no way that this five is played together on Inferno, basically. And even when they were XL, I don't think they were bracket Inferno. So, and even then, this isn't XL. That's like, a death sentence right there, then. That's yeah. basically what you're saying. All yeah. three maps all fated one direction. It's a, a tough one to crack if you are a Fish fan. This round just pissed off. Too crazy, and still FM being very, very safe here, just taking a lot of battles together, making sure we go really as a tight knit unit. Mole will fall to a CZ, and Smear actually oh. is just another, but that's that comes in for a steal the ranks there as Weber with the UMP finds just a little bit more money. Doctor, got a 
tap on through, and a lot to be done by Fish there, surprisingly. But FM still come out on top, 11-7. to 11-7, dogs do go to heaven. Simple. But no, good round actually coming through. Now, obviously, as well, this is where things have to get serious. But they have no money for the orb, as they weren't able to build up enough economy as they worked their way through into those prior rounds. So it's going to be a little bit awkward for them. Obviously, they can't take the fight through. They have to just allow this one to kind of to trickle out. Thrown off the edge of the wall. Just a bit of early presence to be garnered by FM as they do begin to at least sow some sort of signs towards Fish that it is going to be that B hit. A very classic curve gobble. It's exactly what we talked about kind of at the start of this half is the idea that FM are just going to go for the simple expected stuff, which is get yourself the smokes down, block off block, of course, block off rock, make sure door is completely covered. It's one of those common smokes on this map. And from there, you then have the option to back into the mine, try and flank, and you just get these picks right. It's going to be a simple trade. Look at Stanley, the way he's got himself in connect. But this is just perfect from him. Just running around the map, tapping heads all across the board. So yeah, Fire then has to double back, which takes away from any sort of hold on the C site, meaning that life is peachy for FM, as they just get a free site handed to them right on a silver platter, as Fry just takes the head right off of Jenko. Yeah, that was really just easy. They locked it down very, very quickly there as they worked their way in. Um, busted economy once again for fish as well. Look at this. They have pistols to play with. Yeah, <laughs> there's just nothing they can do. They have these pistols out. FM are going to win this round. That's 13 rounds on the board before fish can even try and fight back. They have seven rounds to play with. They need eight to try and take this into OT if fish can get to that match point, uh, match point position. And it looks like that's kind of where they're going to be heading to fairly quickly. Getting rough. We're rocking the Doomsayer Minty, which is very much against this fish side. It's not very hard to respect, but it's just the way they stand as they jump up against the experience. They just don't seem to have any sort of game plan on their CT side. I, I mentioned Inferno to you. I was talking about maybe fish being able to sneak something in on Inferno, but your instantaneous response there was, was strategy and composition on Inferno. But you know what? Let's just take everything you said there and apply it to the CT side of Cobble too. It's the same sort of thing right now. Fish don't seem to know how to approach this CT side. They've had a few nice rounds here and there. They've shown a few nice ideas. But as we said yesterday, just because you've got ideas doesn't mean you know how to execute those ideas. Doesn't mean you know individually what to do in certain situations that FM force you into. But look at it this way. The only three players on this team that have actually played together for like, you know, a lot of time in a team environment is Mole Smiljanko. Keita and Roma. Roma was obviously playing in a fuse, then Pickles replaced him on a fuse because he didn't want to play in a fuse anymore. Keita's always played with Fish, but none of these other players have played throughout the season with Fish. So you get into this scenario now where they're playing more team based over their CT half. And sure, they have a little bit of structure, but they haven't really practiced. You know, you've got to imagine, I, I probably highly doubt they've actually got any practice in as this five as well before the games. So they probably just straight went into the, the playoffs, just thinking, all right, let's just do it. So, structure wise, the composition, it's not as good maybe as possibly it could have been if they would have had some ground. But they've had a good display. It's just at this point, FM, in terms of how long they've been playing together and everything like that, you've really got to just say they're going to be able to lock it down. Into this round, though, it is going their way. Fish have been tearing it up. You just have Nilzinho left. It's a three versus one situation. Nilzinho trapped with a UMP. Can upgrade to the AK, but even then, you have all the angles covered. It should be an easy frag to take him down. But he actually does get the headshot back on towards Jenko. Goes in towards a site that has no one there to defend it. B is completely open at this point. He has to clear the angles as he's not sure of that. But when he wants to try and go for the commit and get the bomb down, if he does it quickly enough that Mole can't actually execute him, this could be a good situation to be in. He could potentially take two 1v1 fights here and lock this round down. I've seen Neil win these. I've seen him win these online. I'm concerned right now. Neil gets the bomb down. No contest can come in for the backup platform. He's now checking for that push, waiting patiently to find that headshot. Doesn't Ooh. quite land it the first time around. That's information garnered for the CT side. He did have a lot of utility, but that will still be taken. Neil falls in a rock and hard place, but he picks up the shot. Now falls back, playing left, right, and center, trying oh. to really buy him some time. But Keita will put the final nail on the coffin, takes him down. Neil, this time around, won't pull through. But getting it to a one versus one is so much damage to the fish lineup that if they get reset in this follow-up round in this 22nd, you can always begin to go back to that point of just writing them off, writing them out of this series. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing, in that situation as well. If he would have actually got the first shot off, when at the instant peak that came out from Mars, he would have killed him with that first shot. 
he would have won that round. Because then he would have been able to reposition before Keita got there. The only fact is, because he missed, he wasted so much time trying to kill Mole that Keita could get into an effective angle and allow Keita to overpower it. So that was good to see. Obviously, look at this though. Smoother. Aggression on display. This is a lot better as well. Confidence is actually being brought out from Fish now. As Smoother pulls out a hat trick out of the bag, they were not expecting anything of the sort. That has really confused them. Finally, Smoother shows up. And shows up big time with that triple kill. Still sitting tight as well, making sure that Theozidio even has to think about peeking, that he will end him right there and then. And the case, oh. going for the ace, a beautiful round for him, a masterpiece of Counter-Strike. It's Fish 1, 2, 3. They do get themselves to follow up, up to 9 now on the scoreline. 13 rounds still for FM to play with. Money, not pitch perfect for them, and they are going to be spending a whole lot of it, pretty much everything they've got left going to the 23rd. It's a bit of a different storyline for FM. They is not the craziness of them being able to buy over and over again until that final round. So it's not all out for Fish. They do have a shot. They've just got to keep on being able to repeat these rounds. Well, they yeah. need more of that smoother action. They need more confidence. A lot of, it kind of seems like they're playing scared in a lot of the rounds. That's what we've seen that's been going wrong from them. That's why we're kind of like, look, look at it. You know, they don't really have much structure behind there. And you don't have that much structure. You're playing as a mix. Use that mixed team mentality. Go for those sort of plays. I'm sure, it won't work most of the time up against FM, but if you can catch them off guard, play strategically. You know, controlled aggression is going to be really effective against them. Fortunately, they tried to peek out towards the instantaneous. From Keita, they go again for a second trying to save face, but Smuya. Just eat them alive. Down ever so low, but doing even more. Finds another pick on towards Pulse. Not quite in the running for an ace, but already a double kill. Why not? Stanley, aggression in towards mid. Someone withdrawing back. He knows Keith is wrapping him from behind, though. And this means things are tough. So much time. Even getting that frag means that this T side are left with just 45 seconds. With two versus four. They begin to run on down Jenko. Stanley tight in towards connector. You can see Fish, they don't have any information on where this bomb is going to be. Weber gets another one versus one on towards Smoothie, in fact, which starts to really aid FM. Weber, looking back towards Mall, repeats again, tries to go for another frag. Back towards Balcony. Mall's off the block off ball now. Why are supporting Weber? Will be traded out by Jenko for the things. But Stanley going to get the long range ball left now in a very disastrous spot. As he darts back in towards Wood with 10 seconds left time, but coming back to be a pertinent point as a Molotov can land right at his feet. But he's crossed out of sight, he's gonna get the plant. That bomb will go down now, Stanley. One versus two to try to play around. They do find the shot though. Jenko had a cheeky little off angle, will connect it. The defuse comes in as well, it was so close. Looking like FM might have been able to get their foot in for the ball, but that's three rounds on the trot. So one, two, three. They're keeping themselves going, they are swimming upstream. The damage to the economy has been done to FM, but they can still get a buyout if they want to. You know, obviously it's a lot easier to get the buys out over on that T side. It's cheaper. Buy will be coming back into effect, but the pause comes through. I imagine this time it will be tactical. It's got to be tactical, right? They're thinking to themselves, all right, let's just take a second to, to breathe. Right now, FM, they need to build themselves to damn stop fish from getting so far up. As well as being able to chain these rounds together, because it's so healthy for their economy. So, so many different factors that really bake themselves all into one. FM, just sit for a second. Use this pause. But what are they going to change? What are they going to do differently? We've already seen the almost reliance on just simple strategy from them. They don't want to do anything advanced. We're not seeing any threat level smokes or anything out of the box. So where do they go from this? They've already done the, the basic executes towards B. The only thing we haven't really seen is perhaps a reverse take on towards A coming through connector. So that could be an alternative. Smoke off the left side of drop, get yourself a smoke down on towards door. That's two smokes that both get done from the back of platform. Then you send three players in through drop, and then you have two just standing outside A mid. There is a lot of potential stuff that could actually come out of these final rounds. And this is where they need to actually display anything they had up their sleeve that they were holding on to. You need to kind of whip it out right now. Because look, FM at this point, they have a one map advantage. They have two rounds away from getting themselves to match point. FM are five away. You look at this, potentially here, if they just come in hard and fast now, lock it down, they can close the series out 2-0. If you leave things in an awkward situation and allow it to go through where Fish123 could potentially take it into, let's say OT here, you know, most likely, they win out in OT, you go over to Inferno, we don't know how they play. You've got to say, most likely looking at eight, FM will be able to lock it down in Inferno. Just basis of benchmarks of what we've seen them play before, and the fact they do practice it as a team, and they've got a lot more structure behind them, and we know they play the map. Fish 1-2-3, though, they don't play it. They're not a team. They are just a mix. 
You always have the chance of them just throwing constant spanners into the works, doing something crazy, and it actually paying off. And the things at that point as well, the frustration that might kick in for FM, thinking we should close this out a map ago, we're losing now, you know, all these factors. They need to come back in here now, lock it down, get themselves into this match point situation, and try and close out the game. They don't have a good arsenal to play with into this round. It's lackluster. They're scrabbling around, looking for something to uh, try to get as much as they physically can. A utility. They've got before a bat, but the firepower. Not so much. Opting for just two tech nines, a UMP. They do get two rifles up, which perhaps are a bit of an opportunity for them to really lay down some frags here and there, but it's towards B flat. Just getting frag running up, frag running lobs at them, doing so much damage, darting it towards Bowl, not checking their corners, a double kill for him, Roma getting a frag on towards Fry. This is disastrous for Tisai trying to pull through a trade, but it's only Weber Svuya punishing him right back, leaving just Nilzinho on a pedestal just around the edges of block, trying to fight around through Statue, gets himself in towards second room, but what on earth can he do here? Yes, he's got a minute on the clock, but this is a round where he is clutching at straws. Fish one, two, three, dead set to take their 11th. Here's the air, hold the angle. Down. That's fine, the frag in the end actually takes down Keita. Look, the A bomb site is open as well. This is a good situation to be in. Molotov can go down. If he was to try and play some mind games here, hold up close person, potentially if they push into it, he can find the opening frag. He will commit, get the bomb down first though as well. That leaves him in such a good situation. If he can create a one versus one, it would be a winnable round. We've seen Neil in these positions before, and he never looks scared. He always looks calm about the position he's left in. And this does, although it favors the CTs, lean a little bit towards him actually being able to pick it up. They're not facing together either. Look at those angles. Neil Zinio gets himself an opportunity to peak them one versus one. They're not even checking long right now. They're not even running with the possibility. Oh. Peak in towards Wood though. Roma finally has that idea. Sparks right in with the M4. And that means that Neil's chances this time around are yet again going to be laid down. It's fish one, two, three. They bear all arms. They get themselves that 11th just as expected. But, bomb pump. You, you can't ignore that bomb pump right there. Just saved FM. Really huge for their economy. Gets them five AK-47s up. Really gets them a little bit extra utility. Meaning that they can fight. They are still standing. Without that bomb plant, it could have been a lot different. Oh, the opening kill comes through though. Stanley finds that frag back on towards Smoothie into this round. This is good for them. They get that initial bit of confidence, the initial you know, bit of wind under their wings to kick things off. They need more moments like this. When FM get the opening frag on the board, we see them play a whole lot better throughout the procedure of the round. Ah. Unfortunately, the trade coming back through. Strong stuff from Keith. Though. Nice showing. So far forward, but they also have to just contest over and over again. Mole. Aware of that, takes those fights. Keita will get himself up towards long, but you can see FM, that intuition is kicking in now. They decided to head over towards drop. Roma, a man to try and hold this long. They're not checking this, they're not dealing with this. Smart trade is going to come through, which does favor this T side every single time. But when you look at the map, you still have to have that just aura of possibility that Fish123 can take this. Two players towards A, though, if they go towards B on this T side, it puts so much pressure on towards the shoulders of Jenko. That's just a trade to come in for FM. They could make this one work. Their after plants have to be in point. Ah. He's going to get red down from the sidelines. Actually, Fry finds that kill back onto him, leaves them in a free versus two now. Keeper and Mole. Goes up sprinting through Nils in here with a headshot connection there. With Mole, Keeper fires back, but it is not enough. Pulse will be able to trade that one down. Now look at things as they stand. 14 to 11, one round away from that match point scenario. Smoothie though, the big AWP will come back out. That could be a scary factor. The scout over on Fry as well, actually. Yeah, he's going to drop that too. Seems like Weber will be taking the scout. Oh no, Fry sticks with the scout. Weber's going to go with the EMP. The rest of them have AKs. So undecided on who's holding that scout right now. Fry's like, Stanley, no, you take this. And Stanley's like, I don't eh, want the <laughs> no, no, I don't want that right now. I'm going to keep the UMP, thanks. So they eventually jumble it around. No, no one has the scout. They get a rifle now. I <laughs> got that. The scout. Roma, Weber, both will run dead center at each other, bashing heads, skulls clashing. But Weber will come out on top with that frag. The SMG are beginning to do work. Connector now has been taking control of. This kind of leads back to that strategy I talked about of the reverse. Table. We've not seen this at all from FM. Nilzinho starting to fry towards long. I like this. This strat is really, really beneficial. And the frags they're getting towards long as well help them even further because Mesa's site is going to be weak. Jenko has to check towards connector, which slows down that rotate. This is good because this T side FM, that E site is theirs. The bomb might not be there. 
look how low they are though. A couple of their players actually take a bit of a dent. And they can capitalize the back of that. Luzinia gets actually there by Mole. Mole with a 2k. Jenko finds one as well. It's now all of a sudden a one versus two. How has it got into this situation so quickly? Stanley has to go so wide to grab the bomb. Grabs an M4 as well. So he's still alive. Has a good bit of kit to work with into this round. And the bomb. But a one versus two that's fallen all of a sudden from what? Like was a five versus three at one point? I think that is absolutely insane. It's really just FL having a bit of a mare. Just no idea how to approach the situation. Falling to part to pieces to be more accurate about it but at the end of the day it's it's both words molding into one as they are going to try and part ways on towards connector here or stanley just trying to find that pick wants a one versus one here more than he does a one versus two but has no utility to even help him on his mission because he's going to get himself on towards the site the minute he goes to this part though jenko's going to call that one out and you can see the rotate just coming straight off the bat from smooya it's more with the price of already being faced oh. jenko struggles but still pulls through that was unfortunate. Late reaction there from Stanley. Flicks over. Did get the connection though. The dank, uh, the dink was there. The dank, the dank was there. But the dink went through. Obviously got him kind of low. But unfortunately, it just wasn't enough. Backstab from Smooth as well could have been awkward. Even then, Smooth coming in for the late round rotate with the orb. At least it would have been one versus one. So more of a manageable situation. Doesn't really go that way. They did get the bomb plants. So they got a little bit more cash swim into this round, but the money was still going to be damaged either way. So it doesn't really help them. Obviously, they can kind of allow this round to slip. Let Fish123 get a 13 from the board. FM, though, are going to invest kind of heavily. Obviously, the Tech 9 is coming out. They'll just go and go for an aggressive play, you'd imagine, off the back of that buy. Yeah, they're just thinking, all right, we've got the bomb down. Let's use that to our advantage. Try and just make this at least feel like it could be winnable. If they can find some early picks with these Tech 9s, they do have a genuine shot. Another bomb plant as well, bear in mind, will also help them going to this buy. Try and really cement the idea that they can get some warps in play. Because we haven't really seen one of those for a while on this TSO. Is going to be though a slow start. FM very clustered up towards long. Taking Matrix from behind, get themselves control of mid off the back of that. Smooth so bearing down this ramp, looking dead set in towards door with this orb means that sure they have kind of control of the room itself, but the beast that lies just on the outside a struggle for them to take down. And it's a beast of many heads, bear in mind, because it's not just Smooth with the orb. There are many players of fish spread amongst the site, and they've got three players over there from door. Just towards long as Keita with the SMG and then Smuya as well, just still holding tight as you mentioned. Really just chalks things up to be a tough hold for this T side to crack. The Smuya peaks, finds the first. This is Smuya in his perfect limelight right now. As Mong with the rifle pulls on just another Keita. On long does his job. On the this is looking perfect for the T side. Yeah, it's very easy. They do equalize the things up now. They get a threat from the board, obviously. FM though. Oh, money actually isn't great. That's really awkward for them. Maybe they overinvested slightly. I did wonder why they put so much money into that round. Just the flashes that didn't get me. It's like, okay, you can buy some Tech Nines, but yeah. going for some helmets and They're extra like flashes. They're like full utility armor. We didn't even see that utility really used. I don't know. I've, I was kind of confused that they overinvested so much into that round. Like, yeah, I mean, you can get the buyout now, right? But it's still not great. They you can't get the all to play with. Like, when you look at that last round, instantaneously you think, all right, so they got a bomb down. So they're thinking, like, we have a little bit more to spend. Yeah. But yeah, you're right. You look at the amount of flashes they spent. You know, just the amount of money they spent already flashes. That's a whole bit when they really go in for. Use that utility. I think three players bought flashes each, right? Yeah. Interesting, to say the least. Maths not quite being the strong point. One that they are going to have to think about now. So we are going to be sitting in a bit of a tactical pause, I'd assume, for FM. Really going to be thinking this one through, because this has to be a perfect round from them. I if they screw this up, you are looking at that equalization for fish and. Then we start talking about Inferno because we get just too damn close. 14-14. I give the edge to Fish right now. Just fished you. Yeah, no, I mean, I don't know, honestly. You look at it. This is never out of the ball for Fish because, yeah, look, they have to invest again just for the Tech 9 armor. They, this could have been a buy. But they have to just go Tech 9 armor at this point. They're going to lose this round. 100% they're going to lose this round. Like, they, we've just seen nothing from them on that eco previously. They, you know, sure they got a couple of kills, right? But it wasn't that great. The only thing they can do here to really save this round is go for a standard smoke execute. When, you, when you've bought this much utility with Tech Nines, if they do not go for a smoke exec on towards BRA, then you're right. It's over. It's done. Use what you've bought. You've just spent your hard-earned money on getting that. That's okay. it. Yeah, going towards B, we're going to most likely smoke execute. 
at least they are gonna actually use those. You've got fashion as well. Divide the site literally in half. You block off enough line of sight that it makes the CTs have to bend at that point. If they don't bend and they just break because they're really fragile and they can't actually readjust efficiently as a unit, that's when you absolutely uh, like you own it at that point. But basically you can divide it in two, burst your out to the site and hope to try and find the frags. But Sweeney's having the orb. This is bad. Sure, they go for the smoke. Them on a plate Stanley, you can do the damage on the end. Jake goes oh. for a terrorist. It's weird. Just yeah. pulls them apart. Fish one, two, three. Just another round for them. Things looking ever so murky now for FM. If they do go into this with the full by, finally. All that utility, five flat rifles. No mess ups there. If they lose this. They're on the risk of losing it all. No guaranteed overtime, bear in mind. That was your avenue of attack where they're thinking, right, this goes to the That's not guaranteed. So you're starting strong in this round. He catches Nilzino completely off guard. Yeah, that's horrendous. Goes in with the opening peak. They know he's been going for this aggression. Constant attacks towards the A-bomb side with this sort of stuff, but they've been allowing the first peak to go the way of Fish. When Fish get that first peak as well, like nine times out of ten, they've won the round as soon as they get that first opening frag on the board. So... It's going to be awkward. Obviously, they didn't have any money to get the AWP out on Weber as well because they've been burning so much of their economy on those just random force by, like, rounds just trying to do something. So that doesn't work out for them. They can't try and go for an opening pick aggressively, say, over towards B plat. Just peek out, try land it, and then go for the aggressive play. It's going to be so awkward. They need to find at least sort of two frags here to get things back in their favor at this point as already it looks sour. 55 seconds. FM have done nothing in this round. They have no information, no real idea. Child-like in nature, but adult-like in weaponry. We've got to act responsible right now. We've got to do something. They begin to venture out towards platform. Same old, same old. Find the pick. That gives them back down to four versus four. Brian Stanley, two to do the handiwork just for that. But they have to flash themselves out and deal with Roma. They need some support now to come in. Just they find themselves oh. sprayed out. But Jenko, a double kill, looks for the triple. And he gets it. Jenko, how are you getting away with this? Nearly goes for the fourth. Five HP left on Stanley in a one versus one up against Keita, who's pushing out a platform. It is over. Keita takes the frag. Fish one, two, three. They get themselves to their 15th round on the board, looking to force us to Inferno. And look at what FM have to play for here. Tech lines and UMPs. Jenko is an absolute monster when it comes to B site cobblestone. He literally can dispatch teams. He's unreal when it comes down to those sort of positions. He tears his way through everyone. So that was crazy. Big round there from Jenko. Bike coming back into effect as well. FM haven't done a single thing that have impressed me on these East Coast. And you really can't expect too much from them. This time around, Stanley actually gets the opener. Is this where going to be all of a sudden they get some momentum behind them? Obviously, they know they have to bring their A game here or they're out of it. Stry finds the bag as well. Finally, somehow, they've actually got confidence behind them into these rounds. Is this what happens? You have to get the arse to get them to play some good CS? Who knows? Jenko does chime in with the first for this CT side, bringing it to a three versus four. The bomb is going to begin to tick away at Molotov. After Molotov, to bring into the corners. Well, but just another frag for him with this UMP. They're getting to excavate out the towards the Nectar, though, as Molotov's getting himself a jump up. Returns the frag on towards that CT side. And they get a little bit more toasty fish now as they do begin to get met over and over again by these flashes. Fish comes in, Stanley makes it stick. Another frag for them. This is looking like it's going to be going to a time after all as Pulse with the Tech 9 gets himself that headshot. So there you have it, Jackie. Right after all, 15 15. I'm so confused. Well, on the, all of their other ecos, they played so slow. They bought an abundance of utility, never used any of it. Now into their final eco. Makes no sense. When they didn't have any, they decided to play fast, and they just, uh, oh. No. <laughs> one nil, it's a draw. <laughs> 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 oh, yeah, we're going to get up. Just wander oh, over here, back to uh, our, not now. our desk, because who wants overtime? We don't want overtime. Overcable. You don't want overtime, because MP, overtime enable one. It's not turned on. Classic come on, that one. Yeah. Always, always goofing people. Bamboozled you, isn't it? Yeah, caught you off guard. April Fools! Oh, wait, you know it's day late. April 2nd. April 2nd, boys. Gotta go for more. Sloppy Second Fools! <laughs> way. Yeah. It'll be a fun one to fix. I'm assuming now the game plan will be just slap in that MP Max round yeah, 6, you know? Yeah, just play it from that. Yeah, just play 16, from there. What, 10k slot when you're done? Yeah, easy. We've done that before. I-57. It's a great land. Great grand finals. Everyone started with 16k. No one realised it was 
solid. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, good times. You enjoyed that, didn't you? Yeah, band of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, kind of OT though. What do you know? Yeah, obviously that's kind of weird. That it, the, the the fashion it went to OT was the weird part. Not the fact yeah. it's gone to OT, but the way it did. Where the fact that they didn't get that 50 round the board for like seven rounds in a row. Then they get a 50. They didn't show anything with those pistols. Or like you were you were really hitting at them over the entire game. Just constantly stabbing them in the chest saying, boys, come on. Show it's us why Tech Nines can be used. Every time they were with those Tech Nines, Tech Nines in that position, like I get it, you want to try a new strategy, use the, the nature button. They bought heavy nades and they were playing it slow because of that. And they didn't use the nades. And they just charged and died. Then when they actually just went, look, let's just win. And they ran in and killed them. And it worked. It was very odd. Odd stuff. Very weird situations. I think there's so many different ways that we can use to elaborate on the situation. Of course, I can hear them just stabbing away in game. Something was said. I'm not quite sure what yeah. was said, but... He said some words. Cheers, Jake. Appreciate the words. <laughs> Big man. Great stuff, after all. We are going to go back soon. Back though. in soon. Back in soon. Big Sue's, apparently. Big Sue's. It's like Chinese whisper. Yeah. It's a Big Sue's. Big Sue's. What are you thinking about Big Sue's? Big Sue's. Or um, Joycey. Joycey, Joycey. Banachek. Yeah, Joycey Banachek. Great stuff. I'm loving listening to listen to this, this right is now. Good. This, is going, yeah. this is going well Fits right now. Issues. Things are a little bit all over well, the place. Looks like we're back. There we go. We've managed to find the Ops PC. We've scrabbled around We've on the disc. We've, we've plugged in the HDMI cable, and we have ourselves a signal, and that means only one thing. We have typed in MP Max Round 6. We've got ourselves 10K on these players, and we are going live into our first set of overtime of FM versus Fish123. Now, let's just hope the game doesn't restart. Ugh. Game kicks off, though, as they make their way through. Let's see how it's going to go. Nade's going down towards drop down early. This is going to be a perfect counter to the double boost play. Obviously, Smooth takes a bit of a hit, but he is not going to be forced back. They dry peek it as well. Mistakes were made. Smooth finds the frag on towards Weber. Starting a strong platform push. It's just going to be a fountain of consistent spurs of players that begin to really be ever so aggressive. But Jenko just making a tear yet again ah. right now. Eventually, though, it's going to be a nade slam dunk from the man Stanley himself. But the Orp of Sria is left unchecked. Finally, a Molotov will act as the parting gift, spreading him aside, forcing an entry for Fish on towards the site. Smuya re peeking back through door, but they've already crossed. The jig is up. Smuya, no window left unshut, but no opportunity for him to find a frag. Pulse! Oh, that is crazy! The 2k kills from Pulse there! The headshot! And the connection through the body as well. The flesh bang! Headshot! I think oh. that's called maybe. Speaker! What is that though? <laughs> still able to do work. Nilzinho tapping away from platform, trying to go for that still classic Nilzinho clutch, but three times now he's been left in clutch opportunities, and three times on a T side he's unfortunately been unable to make it stick as the fuse will come in. The flesh bang, a pertinent part of that round. That one. It's going to be going in the history books. It is going to be a round up for FM. Starting off strong. So they needed that as well. Actually, no. No, no. There's fish, fish one the Yeah, round. I don't know. Yeah. I'm just looking at the scoreboard. I was like, I trust these scoreboards. But no. Who needs team names? I, I've just realized what's <laughs> going on there. I was just like, wait. Hold on a second. Guys, I had to look up. Because I was like, <laughs> so no, like, fish wait. one. And I was like, oh, hang on. Just so reliant on the scoreboard. And then you're like, oh, I trusted you. God damn it, Jake. John, you let us down. It's not like this, boys. Peter coming from long. Fry's had a kill, isn't he? Yeah, Fry's had a stab. He gets himself a kill with the AK-47. Fish, of course, are zero up if you did miss it. Smoother going to work to bring it pretty even Stevens for the moles while going in. Double fish. <laughs> Loves a double fish, doesn't he? Flash to go as well. He's going to lead them to a bit more of an entry weight for this FM side. Towards the long of eight. Names back now on point. Good to know. Not end point because they're out. I don't <sighs> see us, nods. Have fun at Copenhagen games, boys. Uh, right <laughs> into this round, obviously. It's very slow. This has been weird so far. Obviously, the thing is with OT, you don't really expect to sort of see Sandalized play coming out. Normally, very aggressive. I felt like they've been playing it slow. Obviously, not good in terms of manpower. They do have the money to invest, they've gone for the AWP. Nilzinho's not really found too much with it though just yet. And 
The backstab from Smear. I'm not going to be surprised if this gets absolutely deadly. Pulse is there. Spot smell. Huge from Pulse. If Smear had been allowed to get through undetected, easy 2k would have gone his way. Things would have been just taken away straight away. Roma, though, easy kill coming through. He finds a headshot trade back from Pulse once again. Pulse, he has been the only reason that FM are achieving anything so far into this OT. He needs to try and keep up the aggression, but his teammates are starting. Four Pulse is also going to hit the deck. Jenko finds a frag. Two rounds so far for Fish123. There is one round left in this half. If they have a Flawless half off the back of this. I'm scared. Yeah, looking really, really good for them right now. Of course, FM 2-0 up. Looking so, so solid for them, of course. They've rebranded. They're having a great little time rocking a brand new set of logos. Good stuff for them. So they are going to be going into this. Of course, trying to respond. And no, jokes aside, yeah, you are looking at flawless performance right now. Fish, it's, it's so, so good for them being 2-0 up. Really just doing everything they need to see your side. FM's just showing us nothing. It's a struggle. The T side is running out of options. And I, I think I'm at this point now where this isn't them saving stuff, Jackie. Mm. And over time, you don't save strategies. They know they need to win this. It, it just seems like they just don't know what to do. They don't know what to pull out of the bag. And when they do, you have players like Smuya, players like Jenko, who just keep you alive with these M4s and with these AWPs. Smuya really has upped his game in this map. Yeah, he's been back on form. Obviously, map one, uh, seemed like he was kind of timid, scared almost. But into this one, he's been just giving it with some of the players that have been coming out. And it's been catching him off guard, obviously. FM, they need this round, right? Like, <laughs> if they get this round on the board, they still have a chance to close it out into the following OT. But not only that as well, they can actually try and keep themselves alive. Whereas Fish123, if they get it, they need one round to win the game. And Fish123 physically cannot win. They would have to just take it into the double OTP. Comes through though. Mole, 2k comes out. There's the execution as well there from Jenko. If they had any chance in this round, it's gone. Ah. Mole just won, won it in really on the, the list of names that are just classified as players to do the work at this point, as it is really the entirety of Fish. We, we do kind of give shout outs to the likes of Jenko and Smuya, but you can't knock off players like you know, the entire roster of Roma, Mole, Kita. They've all had their moments. They've all stepped up and, and brought the pain. FM are nowhere to be seen right now. They are standing in the shadow of a bunch of Fishes. So here's the thing. They invest themselves into those orbs as well. Double up setup comes out. It doesn't even really matter at this point. I mean, I was going to say, basically, if they lose a round, they have no money because you won't be able to get fire if you invest in double setup into that final round. But they're not even going to get themselves into that position because physically, if they lose a round, they lose the game here as well. But scary factor is, if they win rounds and still lose players, they still don't even have enough money to get the rebuys out. So the, fi the, the final round of the half, potentially, they need to win all three flawlessly to keep themselves alive. They physically cannot lose a round here. They might have a terrible buy for that last round if they lose players. They Not only do they have to have a flawless game, they also need to have flawless rounds. That's a big ask. Yeah. That's a very, very big ask. It's... You know, one thing to say, sure, you've got to win all three, but you've got to win all three with the first two having you know, three, four players alive. Denying any sort of clutch potential when Fish are playing their hearts out, putting everything they've got into this. Oh, let's see. It's going to be a bit of aggression coming in towards the day side. Fish looking to really push further forward. As FM are going to be holding so tightly back, not really any aggression coming in. The furthest aggression you've got is Stanley on the back of the platform. He's just going to get you find one, so a nice way for him to make a trade out of it, make it a bit more positive. But Fish will still spin it into something that favours them. It's a four versus four after all, you always will give that to that T-side. Yeah. That first trade always going to be going the way of them, favouring them at this point. Keita. Keita's actually been very on point with the rifle. Very prolific with the AK so far. He's been in work. Obviously, he's a support player as well, so he doesn't really kind of have to step up too much, but he has been. A bit of game changer there as well. Smooth through the legs of Nilzinho. Takes him down. Slide and right on under, making it work as then Fry will come in with a party rotate, gets us off the pick on towards Mole. Smooth everyone is so so low, just 11 Another HP, one. has to withdraw. This is FM with no money left, will pull through. And it gets them just one round. Central three required. Do leave three players left standing, which is not pitch perfect, but I think it's okay. Well, the scale factor is right. it's fine for this round, but it's if you lose those orbs essentially because of how much money they've spent, and then going into it, it's getting into that last round of the half because that's where if you have to get rebuys yeah. out again, they can't rebuy any orbs. Yeah. It's pretty much the message here. Yeah, as soon as you spend that money on the orbs, that's it. Not only can you not get orbs out, but for the final round of the half, if you die, you can't get an M4 if you're fucking MP. Okay. I think it's what 
brings it in mind, but let's see if he's going to develop any further as Roma does get that first entry pick. The CT side yet again, we get themselves in the rotating spot. Fry going to begin to steal things out. He's going to find himself just the one pulse with the EDP. Needs to bring into action there as he finds himself to flick on towards Roma as Fry lets rip with the trigger, tapping yet again on towards Mole. But Keita, he's in the back lines. He finds one and gets a second, goes for the triple, but Pulse will shut him down with the EWP. But FM, they lose three players, but it's just enough. It's just enough to allow them any of the rebuys they require. They could do this. They need just one more round to force us to our second overtime. They only have the one orb though now. Pulse, just a singular orb out on the prowl. Fish, one, two, three. They still have my player, but obviously nades is actually kind of lackluster. They don't really have any smoke, so we're not going to see anything really strategic coming out from them now. I, I think this is going to be more of that aggressive sort of play. But the thing is, that's normally where they actually overpower FM. Somehow that's where they actually get the drop on them, when they just go for all-out aggression, just take the fight. For now, Fish, they're delaying it. They are playing the cards very close to their chest yet again, just rocking that poker face. Don't want to give anything to the side of FM in terms of opportunity back and get themselves an early frag, an early advantage with no utility though. You have to wonder how are they going to get these fights? How are they going to set themselves in position to all full range? Weber just tapping away at these feet, just chiming in with a few shots here and there. An orb could try and peek in towards Matrix right now, but FM, they're just going to smoke it off. They're trying to put Fish in a box, and the more they do this, the worse things do get, because then Fish are left trying to go for this all-out rush on towards the site, which comes back to that point of just raw aim, raw individual ability. Bear in mind too, if FM are smart, they don't overuse their utility, they have the flashes to completely blind off any sort of push, delay them enough with the smokes and the Molotovs as well, it should just be frank. They let one get past, but they do get that one to do the work. Smuya coming from behind, but it is just a trade to over again. Nilzinho just doing so much work here, pulls in with a double kill. Smuya will secure just another trade, but it favours FM at a 3-2. to two. As Mole may be on this B site, that bomb though is nowhere to be seen. Information should be picked up relatively soon by FM. This is going to prompt the rotate to come in from Stanley. We will get a one versus one, but Mole decapitates him. Quick as anything, brings it to a two versus two. Eight seconds on the clock, gotta go for that plot, but he's plotting open. This could be a frag, they get a one versus one, but they're delayed. Mole, now an opportunity to peek, he's going to go for the first. Right, picks up the pick. Oh, that's so awkward there. Mole should have at least got one kill. Doesn't do it, leaves him in his two versus one now. Frag can basically bait the shot out, and then Pulse can trade it. They push up. Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Fry, crispy clean from him as he locks on the head of Smuya, does the job. And FM, flawless overtime for them to take us back around a whole new rodeo. OT2, Just gonna have Electric to Boogaloo. Drop something on the keyboard real quick though, to go to the next match of course. It's not going to go right Oh through. yeah, because it's, it's not actual <laughs> overtime. Not actual overtime. So, oh, is it though? We've been, we've been proved wrong. We've been bamboozled have we? We've been bamboozled here. Oh no, because now, now they've got to match <laughs> point. Now it actually goes into overtime <laughs> through that. Wait. Smart. Unreal. Second overtime, not the first, but well played. Unreal. <laughs> bit bat, bit bat, boo. I'm <laughs> <laughs> just going to be waiting for just a short second, though, as these two teams will give themselves time to just have a chat, really, just kind of talk things through. And I think for Fish, it's going to be very important they don't let themselves get tilted. I know that's a subject that is very controversial and everyone will be like, oh, why are you bringing up tilt? But it's a subject you always do have to bring up when you go through flawless overtimes like that, where Fish find three and then FM dive back in with three of their own. So if there's any mind in the UK to pick on this, it's probably yours. You know these players better than practically anyone else in the commentating scene in the UK esports space. How are Fish going to be mentally right now? I'm going to be honest. I thought you said Lilt. <laughs> I, <thought> you <laughs> I was like, why is he talking about Lilt? <laughs> I was really confused with that had come up. Have you been to Charlie's desk? He's got a, like 50 cans yeah, of lilt there. So I know. Maybe that's, that's why. <laughs> maybe that's what I was thinking about. But yeah, I mean, honestly, right? You look at it. The only factor that could come into effect is Smuya is definitely a very emotional player. Very volatile when it comes down to that sort of team environment as well. The only good thing is, it's not really a team. It's more of a mixed structure. So as much as Mole will probably be at the helm calling and telling him what to do, right? Whereas before with XL, where it was you know very prominent. I mean, there's the classic sort of clip of them versus Heroic, where no one was listening frustrates Mole, and it's like, why Why am I bothering? I'm the cooler. Listen to me. Even if you don't agree with what I'm saying, listen to me. It's better that we do something as like a team and unified rather than we just do whatever we want. But that sort of issue probably won't arise here because, you know, it's ne they're not going to be as stressed. As much as it will be, God, we need to win this. It won't be that, like, sort of neck and neck with them being angry with each other like that. But um, 
other than that, really, when you look at that lineup, I mean, Jenko's uh, like a really lovely guy. I mean, yeah, I haven't got a bad word to say about Jenko in terms of his personality, so I don't imagine he'd really cause any issues. Roma as well, like, most of them seem pretty chill, and, like, who you've got there. Keita will definitely probably be trying to throw ideas in, but that'll probably be about it. In terms of there being inter any internal turmoil, I could only really see it coming from Smuya and, you know, Mole only because Mole's passionate in terms of trying to get them to listen. If there's issues with Mole is calling something and teammates aren't listening, that could cause something. But other than that, I don't really see this lineup having too much of an issue. I think they'll be having fun with it, and that'll just sort of be it. But yeah, like, maybe if Smuya wants to do something he's been told no, then that could cause an issue. But I don't, yeah, I think like right now they're probably going to be pretty comfortable. I like that, though. I think, especially Keita, I think he's, he's kind of one of my favorite players in terms of mentality because you... You mentioned how he will throw ideas into a pot, but he won't force it. He wouldn't be like, Mole, you've got to follow my idea. He's just like, hey, maybe we do this. And then if someone says no, or if they just don't think it works, or if someone just doesn't think it's the right idea, mm. where the Mole just says, no, we're going to do this instead, he's like, all right, fine. No problem. Which I, I think is a really nice mentality. I think that's, that's certainly worth spotlighting, just looking towards that and kind of hoping that the rest of the team really can shape around that idea. Just follow the leadership of Mole. If you want to chime in with some ideas, go for it. But... His word is the law. Do what he wants you to do, and you have a shot of coming out this match to the other side and not taking that run down to the lower bracket. Because they're the playing for a spot in the grand finals, bear in mind. Yeah, that's what I mean. That's the important factor as well. And if you come through the upper bracket, you get the one-up advantage. That's the big factor. That's why you kind of want to get through the upper bracket. It's not just you want to make it there. You want to try and make your lives easier on the day. But anyway, the buyer's coming back into it. Instant double up setup for FM. We spoke about this, but this time around, it does have the potential to actually buy them. Same sort of thing, but let's see if it is going to work out for them, whether they're going to be looking for that early frag. Mole is going to give them the ability to find it, but only just. It's a pixel peak for the most part, as you will get away from things unscathed. Walking up towards Matrix, of course, a journey up through the steps. They begin to push out towards long. Weber going to readjust, leaves himself open towards mid, but then repeat spots out the push coming in. This is a lot of information for FM, but still surprised. Mole trying to do some work there. Will tag Pulse down to one HP. That is actually very effective. They've got the push through to the A bomb side, but they've got such a chokehold over the opposition. They can't really do anything. They're finding the frags as well. Jenko gets one. Keita does one. Another headshot comes through off the back of Smooth with a close angle. This is horrific. They're going to get shut down. Pulse has to stay alive. One HP, AWP in hand. If he loses the AWP, his money is going to be so bad. They have to back off now as well. Vital these two players save. But because they went for that investment, that double AWP, right? This is where it's actually going to be displayed now as well. Second orb that was out there has been lost. They can buy up and switch around because two of these players are going to be able to go through and save. But still, if they die again in that final round, they're going to have to go for a UMP buy. It just really stresses them going through the second round of overtime. Because right? mm. it means if they drop out of this, just as you say, things get very, very weak for them. So they need to erupt into the second round or it's... Just the way that Fish are also able to separate their A site, they've got to improve that hold. They can't allow Fish to reach, kind of always just rinse and repeat the same sort of game plan. There has to be improvement from FM. Go back to that freshness. Just because you're on that CT side doesn't mean you can't bring something organic to the table where you are rotating across the map. You are bringing some different angles and changing up your hold on the fly, swapping players in the map. There's no harm in it. Honestly, I want to see more pulse towards B bomb site taking the aggressive face early on. We used to see that as well. I don't think we've seen Tree utilized. Shot like once. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, Pulse went there when he was the only person with a rifle. It also got Pulse a won the round. When they used it. Yeah. <laughs> this is what I mean. Pulse won the round. We've seen nothing really going on initiative wise, which is weird. Usually, FM seem a lot more like going on. I, yeah. Questionable stuff. At least the questionable score lines and a matchup in itself as Fry is going to flash himself up with a peak, but gets overcome by Mole. It's going to be an overwhelming force off T side. Especially all the members moving up through a ramp. Weather? See a broken body though. We'll see a re peaking on towards Roma. Sneaks face on the CT side as Mole will try and force the issue, but it shouldn't be allowed too much here. This should be a very clear cut advantage as Weather with the pistol. And he's key to the rest, meaning it is just Mole now. A double kill for him, looking for a perfect ace. He wants a round win for his team. Okay, he can back off. He can try and get the bomb. But, like, if he wants to go to B, he dies. If he wants to try and take the fight towards A, he's going to really need to bring a lot to the table. He will surely get spotted out here. They know where the bomb is. Yeah. Weber finds a frag. Easy. 
The thing is as well, uh, Fry and Elzinho can actually get a good buyout into this round because where Stanley and Pulse saved, their money's good. So they can drop weapons over and buy up. They're going to have good things. This is actually a lot better. That was a scary factor if they actually lost another round. That's when it would have got like sour, right? But they buy back into it. Obviously, Fish123 as well now into this. Still one AWP in play. Pulse still on the AWP over on the side of FM. But they just need to keep it going. If they get another round on the board here, two rounds play with, it's only going to take two rounds to win it over into the next half. That's better. I mean, before, they literally had to fight for their survival. Now they actually have potential to win it if they get another round on the board here. Well, this tug of war back into play. Both of these teams finding their grip. But who has the strength? It's certainly a big ask. Well, there's one that we will continue to turn the page and follow the story right until it ends. We will look to see who our first grand finalist will be in UK Masters. Both these teams fought so hard to get here. It'd be such a shame. See it ending. Wait. The aggression coming in towards platform. Slowly but surely, they push their way up. They're making an AWP of Pulse to start. A bit of a mare, but one minute for the second. Fry with the trade. Starts to pull back Heater. Jenko eating Frey alive. That great headshot from him. Leaving just Werber behind on the flank, all alone. One versus three. Oh, this is scary. Weber in this situation. Sure, Weber's done this many, many times throughout his career, but. It's going to be so hard. One versus three at this point. You don't have utility to work with, but you has got the orb there in good angles as well. You find the one headshot. Oh, the second as well. This is sick, actually. Takes down Smuya. This is achievable. The only thing is Jenko. The B site. This is his domain. Jenko is unreal when it comes to defending this bomb site. It's going to be so scary. Pete comes through. Takes one bullet to beat down Webber. FM only get through that half with one round. Considering last time around, they had a flawless half. 3-0. You get away with one into this next half. They still have potential to actually achieve something here, but again, it's just going to be scary. I mean, FM could actually close it out here. You just have to look at what do we think of Fish on this CT side. I, the thing is saying that though, Fish had a flawless half, beginning of OT. Also, Fish CT half was um, it was actually pretty good from what well, I that's, remember. That's the reason why, yeah. we, why I pitched that question at the back. What do we think of it? Exactly, it was quite good. We were happy with it. We were content with it. So as much as FM sure they have a shot on their team side to try and get themselves into picks and try and force a win, it's still Fish. They're five to four up. It's still them looking to close it out. They still have a very strong shot here. It's really even for all intents and purposes. It's true. Fish definitely could try and shut the game out, to be honest. And that is the scary factor. If they do lock it down, close it out and it's double OT. There are those three rounds left to play with at this point. This is the will unfold those shots coming into this bomb site. We'll see Pulse kicks it off. Takes down Kida, hungry for more as well. We'll execute more they flood their way through. Now going to push up towards that A. Sykes Smoothie is there. Misses the shot though. Forced to fall back. This is very good for FM. Oh, Smoothie! The second whiff coming out. That man absolutely loves Apple Crumble. Struggling so hard there. And the minute he misses that second shot. The rest of his team are hung out to dry. They just give up on life because there is no chance there. It's just a collapsing force all over the place. So, so important on that A site with that AWP that you get those picks, especially when that rush is coming in because you make their life just a little bit easier for your teammates when they're rotating in through door, when they're coming in through balcony. When those picks don't come in, you've got so many players on the site, it's just too much to handle. This ain't a game of hot potato. He's got to do something. It's not just pass around the frags and hope someone will pick it up. I think this as well. So they uh, they got two rounds. So um, FM could actually play it out here. They get the next two rounds. They get this and the, the following. They could actually still lock down the game. The same could be said for Fish One Two Three at that point. So um, it's don't count it so close. Yeah. So not missing this time round, but the quick trade nullifies the value of it. It's kind of awkward, obviously, as they trade it back in like that. Still favors the T's though. Really, I mean that's the Orpus move down. You lose Pulse that has been playing out of his mind. He's really been playing his socks off in a lot of these rounds, so uh, it's a bit of a shame that Pulse actually does get traded out, but still definitely going to favour them as they start to back off. Seems like they want to take their aggression towards B. They had to rotate one player off B as well because of Smooth's demise. Now look, two players on B, at the best of time, it is hard to hold that site with three players. Up against their FM with utility as well, they are going to be struggling to ward them off. Step by step. Mark on forward. Another platform. 
and ready to make this cross now as they will throw themselves a flash, aided by the CT side, in fact, as well. But should be able to get himself just the one pick here, dropping a bomb, which is going to hold a lot of value. But Stanley finding a pick on towards Keita means that the site itself is completely uncontested. The rotates have to come in nice and smoothly, and they have to make the working through door. Roma just going to support his teammates as well as they do get themselves in towards second room, but that really allows this AWP to funnel them in. The minute that information is given, it makes things even harder for the CT side. Waiting for this push to come through now. Stanley, he's going to be the back now as he plays over by block. They are being spotted out. He gets, he gets taken down as well. Mole be able to find the frag back onto him. Roma as well doing works. He finds a headshot. Nilzinho comes in with the orbs. Smackdown misses the second shot, though. Scary factor is now as well. Fish, they get their sixth round on the board. FM need to get the next one to stay alive. Take it to another set of OT. Triple OT will have to be coming out there. Or Fish 1, 2, 3, if they get around on the trot, they lock it down, they close out the game here. And when that happens, we go into a whole nother map. Inferno. It's going to be quite the rodeo. But we have to get there first. And this one is where that will be decided. A singular orb, four rifles, plentiful utility for both of these teams, and same narrative on both sides as well. The only difference will be keep it on that UMP, but at the end of the day, we've talked many a time about the UMP and its ability to be a strong SMG and a, a very strong supplement for a rifle in itself. As already you can see, Peak's being taken, Weber just trying to play around this ledge of upper drop, looking down in towards coined as hell, but Smooya with the ADP completely flashed off, but will repeat. Uh, he's not trying to pick, that's disastrous, Fry. No single tone left unchecked. Stanley playing on the side, past the bomb. This is getting tough to fish. This is awkward now. Left this four versus four. He's in good positions, especially when Weber has an off angle like that. It favors him so much. You peek into him, he sees you beforehand, he kills you. Roma dead. You leave three man left alive at this point. They're gonna push you in one by one. They have to do. Have to try and do something. Everyone just crouches and hiding away. The teams are toying with them. They try and clear coop, but there's not gonna be anyone there. The frags come through. Keita goes down. We're going to triple OT. You love it, Jackie. Don't don't try and fool any of us right now. You are loving this matchup. It's so damn close between these two teams. We went from being so uncomfortable with various different aspects of play, whether you're looking at FM, whether you're looking at Fish, we're looking at FM on their T side and their ability to not be very creative on their anti ecos, whether it's Fish and their ability just to compose themselves. Either way, they're matching up nicely against each other. We couldn't be asking for a better matchup in terms of deciding who our upper finalist is going to be. The only thing that confused me with that is FM had an unreal season. Then they come back in on their next city hop, and it seemed like because they weren't going to die, or because they weren't going to lose instantly, if they didn't shut oh, oh. Smoo, yeah. Straight through the wall on towards Pulse. Have to interject there because yeah. you can't miss that. That is crafty stuff coming in from the young boy himself. Smoothie making it work for the team. Getting that first pick. Difference from the previous round. Unreal wall bank to kill off. That's the thing, right? It seems like all of a sudden, when FM know they kind of have a safety oh. net, they start to let things slip. But now, they really have to step it up once again. Obviously, back reset. We're in the same situation we were in. Two overtimes ago, 12 rounds ago, if we cast that mind back. Now, Smooya, he's already got one frag on the board. His teammates have done work as well. They have the man advantage. It is a four versus three situation. Teams have encroached up and towards upper mid. They're ready to push their way out on towards the bomb site. But can they find the frags? This is going to be the important part. Zinio looking to turn the leaf. Walking right into the crosshair. Roma Smooya, though, grows up more and more as the rounds develop. And he does just so much more. The pick on towards Fry really changes things. Cements it for the CT side yet again. Ah, as Webber, the last man to fall. But no real shot of clutching that one out. A one versus three, so, so difficult. Smooya stepping up and around, giving his team that ability to play with an advantage. But how repeatable is that on the CT side? I mean, that was just kind of luck, really, wasn't it? It's just a, com a pre fight, like a spam. Exactly. So, you, you know, you can't imagine he's going to repeat that. And. Will he go aggressive again, though, is the question. He might not be able to repeat the wall bang, but will he off the back of that get confidence to take more and more peaks? Well, this is the thing. Early season, we like, still more of that. You know, Smooth was going for this aggressive hunt. I mean, if you remember the ace, where he just basically pushed out, played around the smoke, 3k, then got know, like a 2k on the back of it, was able to close it out off the back of the ace. And it's just, it's weird. It seems like there's moments where they can just slice their way through, like, you know, a hot knife through butter, and then occasionally, it's just like they just forget everything. They're trying to cook some toast without plugging it in. Good stuff. Toaster's not turned on. You know, the bread just sits there. Fun tip. Don't put a fork in the toaster. 
if this host is in the bath as well, because electricity. Stuff. Dang it, has to be plugged in though. Jesus. I'm gonna start strong with an individual. Oh, oh, oh. Forward, look for a second, but Frey. Gonna shut him down as it is gonna be just a one for one trade. A lot of damage to be applied to the FM side though. Three players all low in their own relative lives just being put down. So around the, the 70 60 sort of benchmark, which doesn't sound all that crazy, but it's a lot of value in it for a CT side. Just to get that little bit down, it helps them getting into the later end of rounds, especially when you're holding off a quick push. The more you've done to them in the early round, it's just the easier job for the AKs to then chew them up and spit them right back out again. And it's going to be just patience to be employed right now. Mole going to throw off a flash, just being a bit defensive on towards the A site. They're playing very, very passively now across the board pretty much. And it does leave this window open for FM to try and vault back on his feet. It's the pistol of Smuya yet again to devalue him. As well, we'll win that battle with the rifle fry, the headshot on towards Jenko. FM looking to head things back up their direction. As they get the bomb plant, they need passiveness. And Fish123 are beginning to punish them. As Mo will find just a one, but Rome will be saying, just close this one out, goes to this raid, doesn't quite find it. But you're leaving Rome in a 1v2. Ah. The Rome are caught in the fire of flames there. New Zealand is going to take him down as well. Now, honestly, if FM get two rounds in their T half, I think they might close it out if they play normally. I, I didn't even I know. I feel anymore. like how many times have I heard the phrase, I think they might close it out now? Well, because I just. <laughs> They just keep doing weird stuff. It's like, I'm like, oh, yeah, that's working. And then they just, they just don't. It's been a funky game, to say the least. I think that's a fair way of describing it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, one up left over on either side. Tomorrow, Nils back on it. No pulse. Obviously, T half, you know, support Orpa. Let's see what you can do the table here. Trying to take Matrix control early. Fright is so low. Lucky. He gets away with that. Actually, should have been punished there at that point. Weber. Push to come in. And Smoothie only catching him off guard. Smoothie getting red like a book now. We saw him really grow as the match got on. But, just as he grows, just as quickly he dies somewhat off away from things. As it's tough for him to have that impact. That's where the aggression he gets well met. He's still waiting. Mole, the next man. To get himself ready to walk onto the chopping block. It's looking rough for the CT side. But now though, 50 seconds left. Utility is going to be on the wall. Keep to holding close. Should be able to find at least a minimum a singular pick. But Pulse, no, why not free fire? Be extra cheeky. It's just more for this T side. Finally a pick coming in. Jenko, the only man to do damage. But it's not Jenko versus the world. Because that just doesn't stick. FM, they get themselves their eighth. And they continue to push forward. You know, it's a shame. When the when the game ends in double OT, if you win all rounds, you get 22 rounds on the board. You know, yeah. like double OT. You can, you can make a Taylor Swift joke, but you can't do that now. Cause well, no, you're acting like this game is, is over. We've got triple OT already. Who knows where this could go? Yeah. I mean, we might get ourselves to 22 rounds at this point. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? It's possible. 12, uh, 18 rounds yep. that's been played. So that's fun. So this one will actually unfold though. Aggression coming out. Divide the B bomb site apart. Nades roll in. The mortar strike. Look oh, at the splash so damage. Oh my god. Everyone has been railed down. Someone's got a grenade launch from Quake. They're just hammering on mouse one. Everyone's dead. Filthy. Over the rockets next to the line. Slam away as it is going to be. Just explosions all over the place. Smuya and Mole, the last two minutes standing. Both turned into shrapnel. FM up to nine. Just one more required. No orbs as well. Didn't go for the double orb. So we see, uh, kind of feel confident in switching up the playstyle a little bit here to try and close the game up potentially. Could be a difference maker that actually does benefit them. Smooth's got the orb over his T side. By sight, you can see that situated towards the bomb site. He'll try and get the opening frag over my platform, peek out wide. They can't really contest that. They can't really fight against it. But when he tries to take uh, control of the site, if they play up close towards Broken Wall or just on top of a fountain, maybe get someone to a tree boost as well. That's when they are actually going to be able to slow him down. I hope we see the tree boost. And you're going to be sitting there now just praying in a corner, hoping that we see just some smart decisions. It's not even joking around at this point. It's just, you know, <laughs> deal. get it done. Continuing where we both pick up that frag on towards Longkita. <laughs> the Orpa Smuya brings it back yet again. He just puts the Pulse, boy. Because it is going to be just another quick return mole on towards Pulse. Back and forth we swing. Three versus three. Quickly turn back into a 3v2. An advantage swaying towards FM. 
Smuya still standing yet again, looking to grow a bit more into the shooter players. It is going to be a push punch up with Jenko. Taking the peek from platform. Leading the charge here as he does tap away. Nothing quite connected, the only damage to be done. The fright. Ah. HP, one HP, burns in the flames. Things are rough. HP puff and stuff. But Smooth finds the frag there back on towards Stanley. Obviously just left on oh, Nilzinho now. One versus two. Can Nilzinho be the savior? To actually lock this oh, down. Pete comes out, Smooth kills him. Great play from him there. Turns it back from just a single pick, then gets a second. Double it up as well and push it further for the triple. Things and things still are all to play for. Eight to nine. Just another round. Jackie, where do we go? Who knows? I mean, not surprised at that point, actually, because we've seen this happen a few times. It looks like we're contemplating going for the double up setup, but actually decided against it. There was had 8.5k, could have, if they wanted to. But um, just go for the one now on posts. Obviously, they have not had an all power at all this half. So this is a change. This is a switch up that could actually catch them off guard if they're not ready for it over on the side of fish. And those orbs are so effective. We've seen that multiple times. Obviously, aggression towards B. Uh, Smoo actually isn't there. Uh, last time, obviously, we saw him take the fight towards B, but he is going to be over at mid. Smoked off now, so he can't achieve any early round picks. 120 on the clock. A lot of time. Things to change. But it is just Fish123 taking advantage of this now as Roma going to lead the charge. Pulse gets himself very up close and personal. Just playing almost a CQB star with the shotgun. This is a good fire. Is Mog going to get punished straight off the back of that as he doesn't flick damage on towards Pulse? Stanley for another position. It's not going to work out either. Jenko just going to force the hand of him. Quarter overtime. Looking so likely at this point. We're in a four versus two situation where FM have shown nothing at all on this final round on the CT side. It's just been very, very disastrous. They've been given so many windows that a lot of these players haven't had to do anything. Keita and Smoother have just had to walk on towards a site and let the rest of their team do the work. Now they at least get a chance to shine. It's in a three versus two. Neil and Weber aren't just gonna give up. They are gonna have a crack at things. As Neil does hop around, gets himself in towards second room. Keita holding ever so close. And Molotov is gonna get thrown out, but that's not gonna affect him at all. Smoother goes to the shot, doesn't quite get to make it stick. But at the end of the day, it's not just Smoothie to be the young gun. We are going to quad over T unless Weber oh, this one's right. sick and well that angle is just impossible. It is over. We are gonna go take to our chairs as it is gonna be quadra overtime. When does this end? Who knows? I see you just like staring up into the light at that point, just rocking the fact that this match refuses to die. Honestly, who knows? I mean it's so back and forth. It's up and down more than <laughs> I was gonna say something there, but um Keep that one for the late show, the late viewing. Um, honestly, I don't really know. <sighs> FM have moments where they look really, really strong CC half, lock it down very effectively, then it all just goes away. They have no idea how to play CC half, it seems, on rounds they need to close out. Smuya <laughs> has moments where he's just playing bad, and FM take capitalise on that. They find the early round picks, then it works out. Then when Smuya all of a sudden can just return to his normal form, Fish lock it down. Because he is the one getting those opening frags towards that B-bomb site. Obviously, 14 kills just in like the 18 rounds of overtime alone or whatever. So it's pretty good, like, you know, averaging like a kill around at least. Well, just look at Pulse as well. What is that, 23? Yeah. Well, yeah, that's the thing. That's why when we've seen Pulse die, they lose. Like, four on Stanley, Stanley has four kills. And Stanley was playing very well throughout like a regular time. Stanley played very well regular time. It was Fry that was struggling. Now, Fry has got 18 frags on the board. It's been like a flip-flop. Fl fl uh, <laughs> Stan, I'm done. Yeah, I'm so done with words. Like, I feel you. Ch trust me, I'm, I'm a tangled mess over here. Oh. Quite, quite literally speaking. Litch <laughs> yeah, I'm being assaulted by wires. Fun fact for you, though. This <sighs> is an overtime record for the season. Really? Yeah. Just the most OT? Yeah. There you go. There you go. That's a stat. That's a fun fact. I not have a fun fact. Go for it. <laughs> I wish it wasn't. <laughs> Wee. Oh, now, Jesus. That's a face. It's a balaclava on a face, in fact. Looks a nice blue eye, isn't he? Yeah. It's a little green tint there. Didn't yeah. I didn't really get that. <laughs> that's, that's so yeah. I was trying to connect that for a second. 
I was used to trying to crack jokes, but it just didn't quite work out. Sad times. The production industry needs more comedians. Have you seen our streams, mate? <laughs> Wee. <laughs> oh. It's been a long one. But the Battle of Rage is on <laughs> Battle of Rage is on <laughs> Our English at this point is done. It's over. Uh, the Battle Rage is onwards is what we're going for. As our upper finalist is still yet to be decided. We have a third map potentially coming right and up if Fish closes this one out on the flip side FM. Win this, and it's all going their way as they will secure that spot. But there's no clear winner in sight. There's only one thing to do, and that's to watch this quadruple overtime unfold. <laughs> the jacket just has a dance. So much appreciation for this. I'm loving it. Stanley and Co. getting ready for the push to come through, though. Obviously, just holding tight right now as they lock themselves in, ready to do a punch and take some down. Take some down the tees. <laughs> Jackie, this isn't just dance. You don't have to reenact what they're up to. <laughs> it is going to be, be coming from Smooya. No more faction from you, though. Can't look disappointed in that. Going to be a bit more on the ball there, Jackie, with the acting skills. It's going to be Stanley. Going through a flash towards platform. Mole's well, gonna get himself ready. <laughs> drop zone is just take that peak. Stanley with the M4 back on towards Smooya. Roman back in return. Nelsinio on towards Jenko. This one swinging. Jackie's basically become Neymar at this point. Doing the work on the side of a football pitch. Roma planting the smoke. Waiting for the push to come through, obviously, as he just clears his angles. Switch down to Molotov there. That will set him on fire. As he tries to run away, obviously caught in a tight angle. Not going to be too good. Weber coming in as well. Flashbang goes over so we can try and take the face. Keita is ready with the AK though. Rhyming himself up. Getting ready to try and go for the attack as Weber is close by. Just toying with him though. No peak will come out. Peak does come through in the air. Weber oh. takes him down. No, actually another frag goes through. It was Inio as well. Somehow they get the round that was not theirs. It wasn't meant to be, but they do it. They pull it out. Loving the fact that he managed to have a cheeky rhyme on platform apparently. Just Tried oh to sing a few songs, but unfortunately can't quite dance your way out of that one. He doesn't make it stick. FM, they drop the goal, they get themselves around on, squeezing one in in the nick of time. And at 10 to 9, the things still keep on going, but FM, they get the edge. And that's most important for them, as they will look to continually try and shut them down. But we've seen this. We've seen them get these rounds, and then Fish123 just chain them back together again. And, well, here is the old fateful. Double. Two orbs. Two orbs. Better than one. Obviously, this has actually been how they've been winning rounds before. We didn't see this a few times. Now they go back to it. We'll be interested to see if they can lock it down. They need to have a flawless CT half. Honestly, they can win if they get all three <laughs> rounds on the CT. Yeah, I, uh, I gathered that if you get 16 rounds in normal time, you also win the game. Later. It's true. Oh. No, it just looks like when they get back to that T half, they lock it down, but they can just never close it out on CT all of a sudden, which I was the complete flip side of what we saw before. I don't understand what's changed, though, because you look at the way they're playing, it's not all that different. It's just their ability to seem to hit shots has been a little bit more, like, almost just transparent in nature. Fish has just been able to walk into sites, and instead of FM just shutting them down, it's Fish just saying, all right, you've left us a uh, welcome on eight. Cheers, yeah, we'll be right in. Just you know, drop a bottle of beer down while we're there as well. We'll meet you in. Like, it's happy days. They're having a great little time. But this ain't no party. Fish, they're lapping it up. FM, they need to stop giving it. They need to just focus on getting this one done, getting themselves into that grand finals. That's the seriousness. Burst comes out though, Roma kicks it off. Headshot comes through smoother as well. Does damage, but Nozinia can't fire back. There's Fry though. He's got 18 frags and he's going to try and keep adding to that as he gets another kill. Adding that one to the tally, takes down Roma. Three versus three. Scenario left standing. The bomb is not down. 30 seconds left to play. Pink comes through wide. Smoothie gets eliminated. There's another frack in the way of Nils. Zinio. It's just Mole left. Surely he loses here. Tries to kill Mole. Couldn't even do it. Mole overpowers him. They have two rounds to play with now. One more on their CT half. They go through with a flawless CT half. That's when they're in the limelight. They're in the driving seat to try and lock it down. 23 to 11 right now. A pulse, a man, a machine, an unstoppable beast. Similar score is challenged by Fry as well, just really nipping at the hills. As they dig themselves in this final trench, get ready to charge on forward out of it. Holding the line almost on the FM side of things. They peek out, they get themselves a pick. Smoothie, the first to fall. The young gun falling short yet again. Seems to be a table fish on the side now as they are struggling to get rounds that we've previously seen them in all these oats for times. Pulled through with his pulse on towards Roma, just a nasty. Get that in on through with him for him. Gets to let rip, but Mole denying it. A pick back in return to the side. Another potentially lining up towards platform as Jenko fakes it. But unwittingly aware of the fact that is not quite supporting him just yet. Eventually will take the fight, but it's a little late to see the side already. They know what's going on. That flank. Pretty damn hot. 
Fry goes huge though. 2K comes in out of nowhere. Keita, sure he's been playing fabulously, but he cannot pick that one up. Fry takes him down. 12 rounds on the board. They need one round to close this out. Fish one, two, three physically cannot win. We will either see another overtime or FM will claim it and walk away as victors with a 2-0 scoreline here in this upper mashup. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't break the trophy jacket. That's all I've got to say on that one. I think I saw it again. Just launch. <laughs> Just launch ah. it on the screen. Yeah. Have a launch. Let's see how this one's going to go, though. Obviously, FM now back on the T side. They've actually been getting rounds in the T half. Uh, you know, they've been getting like two rounds every OT on their T half. They haven't been able to secure three, I don't think, but they've been able to get two minimum every time. Pulse as well! Smoothie, he's done that so many times with the counter boost! You just lose your head, you can't do anything, that was sick! He knows that was coming as well, you should know that sort of push is going to roll on in, it's so repetitive, but it works out. Now, you can see almost as Mole saying, oh, I want to go at it again, but then has second thoughts, realises that that is a bad plan as FM. They play with their advantage, no trade coming in from Fish123. Key to getting ready to push the ball. Tight the off angle. Taking advantage of by Neil Zinio as he lands a shot with the EWP. As if he comes in towards Drop Roma. Gonna find himself that headshot, picking up the first frag for the CT side. Finally, something for them to employ. But they are clutching at straws at this point. 55 seconds left to three versus four. FM trying to find themselves an opportunity to cement themselves as victors of this matchup, just as you say. As they are gonna be hitting over towards this B site. But time to reflect. Time to change things up. They don't have to go towards B. They can quite easily head back towards A, but it seems like that is the system they've made. Get themselves out on towards the platform. The flash grenades will be popped. The charge continues, but look at Jenko. Jenko, the man to stop here. There's Mole gonna find himself just another prime. We're at three versus two here. Fry gonna find just another thing. Jenko's gonna make this one contestable as he makes it to a double kill. Just Roman out. All the pressure on his shoulders. Two low players. Fry exceptionally low. Can he pull this off? Roma. Takes his peek around block, obviously one versus two. Nilzinho scoped in, has the angle covered as soon as he goes for the peek, should time it. Takes down Fry, Nilzinho for the execution though. 13 rounds on the board, they close it out. That is going to be the overtime win in, you know, quadrip patrickle overtime. <laughs> <laughs> Pentricle overtime. It's been good. That was all right, there you go. Close that game out in the end, didn't they? That took eight years. 2-0 scoreline though, no inferno necessary. <laughs> FM are going to be going to the grand finals. I feel like that wasn't, you know, <laughs> was there, shouldn't, that, should, you know shouldn't we have a graphic for that? That a was so more? enthusiastic. Yeah. It was really, really they very qualified. motivated about that. There you go. They're going. See you at LAN. We'll see you at LAN, folks. I wish I had a mic to drop right now. Oh, that's about all we need to do. Smack the trophy. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty sure attached a gaffer tape down, but I forget. Yeah. Don't want that that's one just weak off. electrical tape, to be fair. That's not even gaffer yeah, so tape. That's kind of... Nope. 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 <laughs> Let's not do that. <laughs> Jake is ready with the pitchfork. But until then, yeah. well, we get stabbed off air. We'll see you guys at 8 o'clock.
keys go. Oh, my kids go.
To Ukraine Masters live. <laughs> what, what are we doing? <laughs> this is a mess. You alright, mate? <laughs> Having a great time over here, of course. UK Masters, Ukraine Masters. We've had a we've had a rebrand. They come up with it. They decided, you know what? You don't have to change anything. The graphics are all the same. So we're going to be actually heading for a short break and taking the plane to Ukraine. Wizz Air, of course. Thanks for that one. Make it happen. Other, other brands of plane <laughs> are available. <laughs> Yeah, no, things are a little bit of a mess, but it doesn't matter because we actually have ourselves a match on the line, and that's going to be something we can look towards. Of course, it is going to be Imperial versus Fish 1, 2, 3. It's true. Don't know <laughs> what they're playing, though. What, <laughs> yeah. are, what are they playing? I'd love to get a veto. Let's just scroll down. Oh, there you go. Cheers, Hey Shield TV. Inf Overpass, Inferno, your favorite map in the game, and Mirage. It's literally like the same three maps throughout this entire playoffs. Like playoff, basically. Yeah. Um. So we. We saw him play Inferno last time they played. We didn't see Overpass. Yeah. Overpass was not there. Uh, what, did we, what did they actually play? Is Train, Inferno, something else last time? Cash? Might have been Cash. But we only okay. saw two maps anyway, because obviously Fish 2 owed it, right? Come back into it now. Overpass is the first map. Um, Fish, they played Overpass just a minute ago. We saw that up against FM. And it didn't look like themselves, but obviously it's normally a map where they play very well on. They're very good on it. Normally we see... Some, wait, just stroking that mouse. <laughs> <You're right. laughs> I just, it caught me off guard. So I could just see you just going. I was just there. My hand was just on was the mouse. Like. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, obviously with Overpass, obviously uh, Fish very strong on it normally, but they look kind of lackluster. So he was confused. Yeah. Didn't seem like he really was playing to the best of his ability. But he stepped back up on Cobblestone. So I imagine now reinvigorate. And also, they've been playing. They played that official against their FM already. It's so coming into it. They're going to be hot. They're going to be warm. They're going to be sweaty and moist. Whereas, you know. The Imperial might not be. And Imperial have a sub again as well. But unfortunately, it's not Crucial. Crucial's not in the server. Obviously, Crucial was playing out of his minus state as per usual. Um, so you have it. That's yeah, it's going to be interesting to see who actually the mysterious sub is. And kind of Zellin. get that one uncovered. Is it Zellin? Mm. Because, uh, yeah, Wendansky is currently putting a PC together. So, the more you learn. There you have it. That's all we need to say, really. Imperial versus Endpoint. Coming up soon. Here we go. It's a knife round, in fact. I believe. Yeah, it is, actually. They're going to be stabbing each other, aren't they? Having a little bit of a... <gasps> Look. They're grouping up by party. Obviously, uh... Oh, that camera work is feisty. Boaster. More like... Stabbed ya. It's quite funny when you do this. It's like a little laser beam. So they're... <gasps> <gasps> Sound a really a quick attack with the laser beams, of course, chasing each other around, trying to get line of sight. Yep. It's like they're playing Quake, and they've all got just the uh, like lightning gun. Yeah, pretty much. Try and keep your cross there on it, boys. Oh, oh, oh smooth as we fought with the knife rounds. Smooth there you go. Not like this. That's an old strategy there, obviously. You think you're going to lose the knife rounds. You just kill everyone with a pistol, and then people go, oh, oh, oh. And then, obviously, you just get the knife around anyway. So Imperial do pick up the knife, work our way through. They're going to decide which side they want to start on sides. We have a seven-sided dice. Yep. That makes total sense. I think Imperial will be pretty comfortable on their CT side. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're right. <laughs> what was that, bud? Was this just a chicken in the studio? <laughs> just, <laughs> just looked up at you and just like... <laughs> it was <good. laughs> He's done. He's dead. Man down. <laughs> wow, that is oh. that is quite the quite the entertainment production. At it again. Wonderful. It's a pistol round. It's Keita. He's spamming away. He gets a double kill. Long push came out. Didn't really go too well though. Obviously, Boaster and Connor are going to be killed. Fish one two three have five men left standing as they make this push up towards A. This is pretty good. Let's see what more they can actually bring to the table, though. Zelen, the super sub. Will he be able to live up to that name? Jacob is close by trying to aid him as well, but they've actually backed off. They're not going to fully commit to the A play. They did over-rotate their players over as well, but Reason will spot out Smear, unfortunately. Gets the information, but no frag going his way, which means that B bomb site is going to be locked down. Roma should have been picked off there as well, but actually overpowers Jacob now. Zelen left in a one versus five, but Smuya has had enough of his shenanigans. Takes him down, Fish 1-2-3, an opening pistol round on the board. Great way to kick things off for him. Instant buy up with the rifles as well. 
Yeah, starting off on the right foot, of course, getting themselves the picks they need. A double kill coming in from Spuya. Starting to set up the plate. Keita as well, double for him. And Uno really is just kind of replenishing the idea of confidence for them. Round <laughs> Please don't spill your water everywhere. God damn it, Jackie. I'm trying to be serious here. I'm trying to put a show. And you're just there spilling water. I love it. Second round of the ball for Fish123. They will start off strong with these rifles, of course. They are just going to plow into this B-site as Mole. will find himself one. Jenko going to go for a little bit more. Roma so hungry to get in on the action as Boaster will chime in. Just the one with the pistol. A bit of a tidbit of damage here and there. But Mole cleaning house as he gets himself a crafty little triple kill. They get a whole lot of money with that SMG. $5,350 now for him to play with. There wasn't actually any spillage, <laughs> to clarify. There was none. Like it's a, just, you know, Jake's I, like I running fumbled, in full panic. I know. <laughs> I just fumbled, but recovered. I poised myself. <laughs> I was able to come back from that. Unfortunately, though, Imperial haven't been able to do the same themselves. They're struggling right now. They need a one sheet to wipe up the mess that they have made. Let's see what can actually go on there. Aggression towards the bomb site, obviously. You've got a favor. Fish one, two, three here. Easy stuff should come out. They do get the opening prize going their way. MP7 reigns supreme over Poster as well. Smooth just trying to get the late round. Stragglers, 2k. And there's the final one from Jenko. Three rounds locked down now. Obviously, this is where things start to get serious. Imperial can get the buy out. But let's see what they're going to go for. Obviously, the AWP actually passed over on towards Jacob. Uh, Jacob will actually kind of be the primary AWP, I think, throughout this. Um, because obviously they don't have Windansky or Crucial in the lineup. Uh, Azelian, I'd imagine most of the time we just picking up for a rifle. So yeah, Jacob probably actually going to be just the sort of primary orb that we're going to see coming out. It's vintage Jacob. Mm. You used to see him do this quite a while back, and we haven't really seen it much since then. So it'd be interesting to see him kind of return to his roots, explore a few options, and see if he really can find a few caveats of attack. As he does quite our player, but actually gets a second peek on towards Keita. And that's beneficial, because he can fall back. It's not tradable. But he goes in for more, and he gets away with it. Jacob! On a tear right now as he gets himself a double kill. Repeaks back towards Long, aware that that is the next avenue for this T side to try and push the waters. He's got so much repeat potential here to do even more. Will miss the shot, but goes for the repeat. Lands the headshot on towards Roma, and then goes back towards Long, worried about Mole. Gets that shot as well. Jacob, are you kidding? We eventually Smuya will take him down. Never going on one versus three, though. It's going to be so tough for this guy to make it work. Zelen right through the smoke with the M4A4 Imperial. They get around all of the back of one man and one AWP. All right, Anders, chill out. Let's see how this one will go, though, as they work their way through. Obviously, going to pick that up. Good stuff on the board. They need that first round as well, because Fish, obviously, off the back of the pistol, looking hot, heavy-handed. Obviously, they can get the buyout once again as well, so they have those rifles to play with. A strong arsenal. Can Imperial keep it going? Though? Scary factor is, Imperial in the past, we've seen them actually being able to get rounds on the board, then they they shudder. They don't really link things up. They always have these issues of internally linking rounds together, and that's even with their full lineup in play. With Zelen here today as well, you've got to wonder how he's actually going to fit into the mix and how that will affect things overall. But they need to try and lock this down. If we can see that same sort of stuff coming out from Jacob, there's definitely a lot of potential to try and lock it through. But smooth back on the AWP as well, that is where a lot of the damage is going to originate from on the side of fish especially on the entry towards the b bomb site here is right now they're just playing far back towards ace so they have time to back off through connector if they want to go to b to the late round but just waiting it out right now yeah a lot of patience being employed yet again fish one two three don't want to allow imperial to build up towards their second but jacob doing the work yet again takes down roma connor steals away that second frag as he does chime in we'll just do your famous jenko towards b tries to create a bit of a stir but in fact he falls short it's just a bit of a fool in fact as his trip on over that's going to be his life left completely meaningless as Fish123. And left with just two players now, Smuya and Mole, an AWP and a rifle. Both you know, pretty damn solid weapons. But neither of these players are making anything happen at all. As Connor just slides in again with the Famous doing even more work as he even peeks that one towards Mole. He's Mole's push. He knows he's got to go aggressive to find that pick. But the job there of Connor was just to waste time. There's 30 seconds left now for Mole in one versus three. He's two HP. Jackie. You're a man of hope, but surely there's no hope left in this situation. Yeah, I mean, like, best case scenario, if he could back off and actually save. But the thing is, as well, if he saves that, even going through, actually, now he's got an orb, it makes sense to try and save it, right? But it's still so risky because they have time to try and push if they want. Actually, they can't really get to him. Like, he's fine. He can save this. Yeah, but, like, he's not going to get any cash bonus from this. Obviously, he goes through with just the money he has in his back pocket for this, right? But you go through, at least he has the orb, which he can drop over to Smoonia once again into the following round. Or he can keep it himself if he wants to. Uh, Mole has occasionally picked it up from time to time. Obviously, he has the 5.3k, so the boy can come back in. Yeah, drop that over to Smoonia. Get the AK out. Actually, is he sticking with it? No. Okay, cool. So the boy goes through... Wait. 
Oh, actually, he is sticking to you. Okay, yeah. So it's not that surprising, but I just thought we would have seen Smuya actually done it. Obviously, Smuya so far hasn't done too much with it. We're going to see a couple of occasions he's had the weapon in his hand. Fast aggression goes through. Smuya off the back of spawns here as well. He's going for the quick play towards Connector. Mole just holding for the push to come through from Imperial. Isn't going to go that way. But it looks like it's back to Fish Ponty 3 slower split and pick style start of play. Flash grenade will create space on this entry of a Fish 123 as the red carpet is going to be laid down. Allowing them to really kind of walk forward out in towards the you know, toilet section if they so choose. It's Jacob, the only really man to identify there at all. It's just free peaks for Smoothie right now with the rifle, who, on the topic of Smoothie, he's performed better with the rifle than he has with the AWP. In one map, we saw him step up. Aside from that, he's been much more consistent with this AK. So I don't mind him not AWPing in Furnace. If he's not playing that aggressive style, stick with the rifle. That's what I say, as it is going to be right now a man advantage off the back of Smuya and his rifle prowess. But Fish123 don't want to go for a clear cut A push. They actually are going to be going for a bit more of a cookie cutter style over on towards this B site. It's different, but something they can make work. Start to push their way through. Boaster will rattle down. Finds the opening frag on towards Jenko, though, but Roma fires back. Two easy drags coming through. Zelen with a headshot back there on towards Mui now as they take them down. There's Connor for the follow up as well. Leaves them in this two versus two situation. Winnable for Fish123. As they push their web, they still need to get that bomb planted. They still have 25 seconds left on the clock, though, so they don't have to rush just yet. But they need to start getting a bit of a move on. They are trying to take the fight before they do anything, actually. It seems like they're going to go for the double peek over towards the A site, see if they can peek their way through. Ah. Nothing is going to be there. The short face from Connor was too much to handle as well. Now the round is going to be over. Both of the anglers being covered by Connor and Zellin. Easy for them to find that frag in the end. They are going to fall down. Fish 1, 2, 3, unfortunately, do not get that round. Imperial will be able to secure that free, free score line. And the cash they had to play with on the side of Fish as well is burnt off the back of that. So now it's more of just, do we invest with a Tech 9 aggressive play, which seems like they are going to go for. But that's really their only option. Being stuck with no options is so, so tough. And even you know, with the idea of no options and added to be a bit more of a limitless style, that f lack of flex, it really is just so tough. Charging to various different options through the fire and the flames or through the smoke, neither of which hold any sort of positive bearing at all. There's already, it's just so much damage peppered away at the entirety of fish. Ah. Sort of circle around in the ocean. And this is just open water shooting from Imperial right now as Boaster. Really do the work. Zellin as well, combining to steal away the oh, double kill the Tech 9 of Mole trying so hard, but failing so miserably. Unfortunately, it is so tough for him in fairness to make it work at that sort of range with the Tech 9. Even in general with pistols, you couldn't really expect too much from fish there. Imperial Harbor, building up bit by bit, layer by layer, they get themselves more and more rounds. And that's something we have to look so dearly for as this match begins to unfold. Our eighth round, of course, now, looking towards the ADP of Jacob and Smuya, who's return. Yeah, they were back on Smuya. Potential for him to actually cause a, a bit of a kerfuffle into this one. This is where he needs to try and get back on the horse, so start doing work. I mean, towards the A bomb site, they found success into the previous rounds, but they've kind of been slowing down there. Constant hits towards B, which they can get into, but they just can't lock it down. It seems like when they get to that final hurdle, they're starting to fall over and actually trip, and it's unreminiscent of what we, you know, expect to see coming out from Fish123 and those sort of scenarios. Obviously, right now on the T side, though, still got potential. A lot of the rounds they have actually lost uh, off the back of a couple of rounds here and there when people actually did overpower them on their full buys. Then it's just been economy in play rather than anything. Peaks coming through though. Connor is looking on point right now. 2k goes his way. Zeno with one headshot on towards Keeper as well. Sure, the trade starts coming a little bit, but they are still weaker on the side of Fish 1, 2, 3. Smear is so low as well. Only two men left standing for them as well, so they can't really play that effectively together. It's going to be kind of hard as this duo tries to make their approach towards the bomb site. Shane Cope going to be the man to lead the charge. So it's still trying to support with his AWP, but it's not quite a shotgun. This isn't just another CQB a battle for him. Instead, they dart over towards Monster. Arguably a better angle for Smuya to try and make it work, because it is going to be a peak to come on in. Jenko still supporting, but nothing is happening. Reason and Jenko is dead set to combine as the bomb is going to find its way down. But there's Jenko, a boost from him and a frag to follow. Not quite Reason, but Jenko feeling those boats nice and easy. This is just another angle to be fought. Smuya holding so tight. A one versus three is always going to be some would say just a flat-out impossible predicament, but this is smooth. We're talking about clutch potential. But the smooth today has been missing a lot of these shots and misses again. Allowing Imperial to get this round. Yeah, he does look kind of off today. I mean, it's been a very flip-floppy sort of performance for him, where occasionally we've seen him actually play into a very good standard where we know he does sort of sit out normally. 
And other times he's been missing kind of more simpler shots that you expect him to hit. So weird, his rifle has actually looked on point all day though. He hasn't really been missing shots with his AK. It's just been when he goes back to his AWP, which is his home ground. He is, you know, a very talented, aggressive, fast-paced AWPer. But it just doesn't seem to be working out for him today. Aggression coming through, though, talking about that, is going to be Jacob to actually take the peak down in towards Connector. Unfortunately, he won't spot out anything just yet. And Smino just holds back. If Smino overpowers him here, though, it could be scary because he will get an AWP back in his hands. Jacob waiting so patiently. Oh. The shots come off, and Smino does do just that. The rifle working out for him. Connor, though, towards Long will start to skew the trades. Finds one, goes in for a second. Well, too close for comfort. Roma will come out on top of that situation. Taking charge of Fish 1, 2, 3 now as they begin to rally the comms, get the troops rolling. As this should be around, they can well and truly contest. Well, right now, they hold the advantage, and it's important for them not to give it away. They are going to be setting up for long yet again. Zellum trying to counteract that by going ever so aggressive, but without any support here, he's out on a limb. They line up for him. But Roma is just going to tap him away, brushing him aside almost. As now in this 4 versus 2, Imperial are looking rough. He's waiting for the right moment to strike here. Contemplating whether he wants to go for the left hand peek over. Jenko actually takes the approach around to the right hand side. Does spook him back off, so he is allowed to wait out for a few seconds now as he just holds over by truck, waiting for his teammates to arrive on the scene. They're taking that long control. They are close by. 35 seconds left to play with, so the rotate will come over from Boaster as well, which is going to be the backstab, it seems. But Boaster actually miles out of position. He was rotating slowly, but it seems now he has actually just committed to the full save. There's obviously no point trying to run the risk. If it was a two versus four in that scenario, possible if he actually got the opening frag. But didn't go that way, just save it. Yeah, there's value in saving it as well, right? It just helps kind of make sure that economy is going to be restored over and over again so they don't spend too much. As for now, this match looking pretty closely contested, it has to be said. I think the one difference is that Imperial have been able to chain some rounds together, which is always going to be something you look towards from a CT side. Hunting a little bit here. They are actually going to be up close. Both the should find an easy frag. We'll take down one. Will the trade come through? Smuya just goes for the wall bank, but no connection. It's there. Oh, they spot him out just in the nick of time, but it will go through anyway. Now, economy-wise, Imperial, as much as everyone is kind of spurs and money is here and there, they can actually buy up around this because they did have a lot of money on one player. You can buy the AWP, buy the M4, switch that around. Everyone's hunky-dory as the buyers come back through. It's only Zelen that is struggling a little bit for utility. Other than that, a very efficient buyer coming out. Always potential for them to bounce back into things here. Thick and thin. Said it's going to be a good one for one trade, but Zealot finds both towards long, clawing on forward as he sinks his teeth into his opposition. Falls back, smart from this. He knows there's pretty much no more presence there at all, so there really is no value in holding it. Instead, he's more than likely going to redirect some of his attention in towards Shaw, make sure the toilets is nice and well kept. Smooth right through the tip of the box, is able to find one on towards Connor, but the problem with that pick is sure, it takes one off the site. But it doesn't actually give them any entry power. They can't just go off the back of that instead. They still have to set themselves up as a three. And you can see them kind of accepting that premise as they decide, you know what, perhaps the A site is our better target as they begin to relocate. Ah. Oh, it's Booyah there with the frag back on towards Ellen. Takes him down. As it is now left in a three versus two. The T's look good. This is set up exactly how they want it. Prime time position for them to actually try and lock this one down. Get themselves equalized in terms of the scoreline. Smoke goes down. Smoke is just going to spot them out before it blooms. He is aware of the position. Backstab from Reason as well. Undetected. Will hit them. Losing Jenko now as the tags go back through. Obviously, they have been able to soften up Jacob a little bit, but still, no more kills being transferred left. This two versus two could go either way at this point. Jacob, though, relies on him. Although he's low, he has the AWP, so he can still do an awful lot of work with that weapon if he can find the angles to peak. The AWP will find himself that shot on towards more starts to open things up as Smuya now left in a tough situation. Time and time again, it's him to be here with the AWP. Misses Ooh. another shot though. Smuya just really struggling in these clutch situations. It really is just age-old repetitiveness that comes back to haunt them as Imperial get just another round with the back of that. And there's so, so much on their heads. In terms of being able to get that, it really helps them mentally. Players go back through there. Obviously, the M4 is out on Prowl. You see the AWP over on Jacob. Now, Jacob has been very effective with the AWP, so it's been good to see that. Obviously, we needed someone to step up massively with the AWP. Jacob had a good display. Even when we saw Crucial actually in the team earlier on yesterday, 
So it makes sense that he stuck with the weapon, gone back to his old grassroots there and really been packing a punch. Fish one, two, three. Same cannot be said to them. They've been struggling a few of these rounds and it's not been looking too grandiose. Obviously now as well, no warp on Smuya. But not only that, it's not even a rifle on Smuya. As a Mizu Tech 9 to play with, he is a very aggressive player with a weapon. Can, uh, you know, achieve quite a lot with it. If you flash him in, allow him to just go in and cause a stir, he will most likely do a fair bit of damage or find an opening frag for your side. So not going to be the worst case scenario. They're all pushing up close to the smoke, flashbang through the smoke, and they're probably just going to burst their way in. It's a deeper smoke now, so they can encroach. Obviously, they are going to be aware there's at least a couple of players there. Smooth is going to go for the early boost through, but it's forced to fall back. Headshot on Smooth as well. Zelin. That is absolutely fabulous. No idea where Smooth was, but still finds the frag through the smoke. Now they're still in. Get the return frag that was wrong. We had to punish Dylan. Goes in for more as Keita supports on towards Connor bit by bit. Things get worse and worse by the second. But they haven't realized Jacob's angle and they haven't realized he's transformed right now. So he goes on for just another poptastic play. Two for him and looking for a third. Mole gonna be taken down by Reason. Snuck away. Is it Shishchenko to come in from behind now? What will be known as the formal front? But a UMP to punch out a one versus three. A tough task, but one that he is going to grab with both hands as he upgrades from an AK-47. 20 seconds on the clock to play. Still doesn't have control of the bomb. It's right there in front of him. He does push on to pick it on up, but so much time to play. He should be able to get the plant here almost guaranteed. The push is going to come off the back of that. Already firing the shot. Just kind of trap him in. Dives into the smoke. The reason. Just going to let rip with a trigger. Finds him. And that's just another big round for Imperial. They locked that one down. Obviously, they're giving them enough time to try and hunt for the AWP. Reason seems a little bit perplexed about where the weapon actually is. So, uh, they are just going to skip through. They don't save Jacob's AWP. Seems like the call was kind of confusing for them. They weren't able to find it. Obviously, they stick with those as well. We come into a pause here now as well. I imagine this is going to be a tactical pause for the side of Fish123, as it would make sense, right? Just take a little step back. Mole possibly interjecting with a couple of ideas that could spin the game around. Well, if you, if you whip up the scoreboard right now, you can see just how things have gone. For Imperial right now, they've been able to get so many back-to-back -back in a row. We did see Fish kind of chime in with a few here and there, but unfortunately for Fish, they weren't able to do what Imperial have always been able to do, which is link them together. Mm. And because of that, their economy has been just down in the gutter. Round after round, every time they lose, they're left with what they've got now, 3K. And 3K is never really enough to make it work. There's also going to come a point where they don't have enough money to be replenished. They're going to be stuck with these double Ecos, and it really just leaves these rifles that Imperial have and the AWP play that they can bring, you know, you've got to give huge props to Jacob right now. I can't s state that enough, just how much he's been able to add to each and every push on towards A. He's been such an incremental anchor. So for Imperial, they are just running away with it. 7-4, to four, sure, seems like a close scoreline, but for me, this match isn't as close as the scoreline says it is. Fish 1, 2, 3 need to up their game off the back of this pause. They can still very much make this half better for them on their T side. But they've got to improve after this pause. If they don't, then you could very easily see Imperial really start to push on forward and get themselves the 10th, for example. Just waiting now as we wait and see what they're actually going to go for as we work our way back in. Obviously, the things as well with Fish, taking that time out to actually discuss things. They need to actually switch things up, though, as well. Because it looked like, basically, okay, you win pistol, um, you work your way through... You try and lock, around, uh, lock down a couple of rounds, and there was good decision making. Then when we saw the first rifle round come out, they let it slip, and then from that point, it was kind of like, okay, this is fine. You know, they understand how to play against it now. Smuya needs to hit his shots, then it will be fine. But he's not being able to get those more aggressive openers, so they've had to switch up their style of play, which is what we saw last time on Overpass. It's the same sort of scenario, which is actually kind of, uh, it's odd to see, obviously. You expected that against FM, but with Imperial, though they've still got strategy, you think it'd still be slightly easier for Fish to actually like, crush their way through them. For sure, I do think that Fish, a lot of the rounds they've also lost have been so tough for them. They've been, you know, setting their fair, fair part of clutches, for example. Do you think that perhaps they should be getting trying to get themselves in just better situations overall? And is that just a simple way of kind of, sure, you're tarnishing all the same brush almost, but do you think that's what it just comes down to? Fish need to get themselves in these better off-the-round situations in terms of not being left in one versus one 24-7, not relying on these two versus twos? Well, even them, right, we've seen rounds where they lose because of silly things. Like, when they didn't clear truck and Jacob was just able to get like a 2k or like a 3k with the orb, it was because they didn't clear truck and they just committed to a site plant, like, because they were like, oh yeah, we cleared it. They just assumed, all right, we got two frags, site must be clear. Well, no, the rotator's come in. You got gamble on the fact that you pulled someone over towards B. So it's those clear misconceptions that cause problems as now they're just going to try and gamble out on towards B. But this is a disaster. As they do just find themselves lambs to the slaughter. And Imperial just no 
need to really make so much money off of them in that round. Farming them to pieces, not quite SMG frag, sure, but on the basis they don't have to rebuy, that's where the money gets sourced from this time round. As now it is going to be an 8 to 4 score, and a perfect half and half from Imperial. And they will have to charge on board, but this is where Fish have that chance to step up. This is what that pause is all about. They got those AKs out now. Obviously, as the buyers start to come in. Let's see how this will unfold. Jenko going to be smoked off, forced to fall back. Can't try and go for an aggressive connect play. Meanwhile, over towards the bomb site. Seems like that is where the aggression is going to be poised towards. We'll start to set themselves up. Reason is going to throw that smoke over towards short as well. So to force back. Smooth up. Just trying to penetrate in towards connector. Problem here is that this CT side are feeling confident now. So much information. They're getting the picks through. The reaping comes in. The flash ah. is perfect. Smooth so only able to find one before the trades are just so, so plentiful. They should get the wrap in from behind, but the bomb being dropped there means that they can just be played almost hook, line, and sinker. Just to allow even more damage to be on. Perfect frag running coming out from Connor. A second follow up pick on towards Keister. This is looking like a masterclass from Imperial right now. Playing so, so strong. The aggression on towards Long as well really just helps support the idea that they had all the information. That's crazy. As well, that round. So unfortunate. Fish was free needed that. At this point as well, this is going to be 10-4 on the door. Like, already, Imperial will be able to get that 10 round on the board so, so simply. Fish was free is struggling at this point. That second half is going to be so important to try and bounce back, especially in the early round of the pistol. But let's see how this will actually unfold. Connor catches him off guard towards the bomb site as well. Boast that does damage. More frags coming out from Connor as he does get that kill back over on towards Kate. Oh, there's the headshot from Roman, though. Connects that back. We'll do a little bit of damage. Mole attempting to scavenge something to try and aid him into this round as well. We'll pick up that Kalashnikov that had fallen. They can now relink together and make their approach towards the A bomb site. Zelen is waiting for the push to come through. Problem is, Imperial. Pick up his hand and they are slapping away, just chinking away at the armor of Fish123. Finding, finding that link that you talk about and then breaking it, crushing it to pieces. Fish, how are they going to approach this? Roma has nothing, it's just a deagle. They do have that AK-47 on Mole. They've got to find themselves a window, something they can try and climb on through, get that space for a one versus one. Roma, given a shot with a Deagle, but can't quite find it. It's always a tough one, but Jacob misses the counter shot with the orb. This does create a bit more of an opportunity for them to get closer and closer, but then the flash comes out. This means that Jacob is going to peek again, again. He lands this, and it's pretty much just fate to be all done and dusted. As Mole is going to find himself one in the meantime, peeks out and does damage towards Jacob. But when that Molotov goes down, he's left with no time. 30 seconds left. The wrap from behind is coming in any second now. For Mole, it's just about getting as much done in as much little time as he can in terms of damage at this point. Oh, he's going to slowly make his approach free. As they are close by. He's just sitting there with the backstab from Boaster will be what is the final now in the coffin. So they work their way through now, obviously Fish123 money to play with once again, but even when they have been getting these buyers out, they haven't been able to achieve anything. 6k on Jenko and Roma, so it seems like they're discussing yeah, whether or not they wanted to go for that AWP drop on towards Smuya. They have gone for the AWP. Now we just need to see something come out of it. Smoke. Already the block for Jacob to be down in towards mid, right through the edge of Fountain. Got three players there, didn't quite go for the shot. Instead gets tacked on down through the edge of the smoke. Keita and Roma both doing the work. Have got a crossfire coming in towards long as well. If that does get pushed though, so that could be where the trade does come back in. But another flash, another peek, another one for one. Not looking too good. Ellen's still trying to sell this. They're facing together. It's a masterclass from the T side, turning it back on its head. Three for two for them. Fish one, two, three, feeling a little bit better about themselves in this final round. Boaster does damage though, transfers that over on towards Mole, is able to execute him reason as well on towards Smuya now, as it is left just in a small one versus two situation. Roma here has to go so huge if he wants to do anything for his side, but it's going to be so hard, the crossfire there, easy kill, sure you get one, but Boaster can trade it, headshot goes through, takes down Roma, 11-4 is going to be the first half scoreline, very, very dominant on the side of Imperial, they're going to come into this super fast, I mean, if they pick up the pistol here, that's 14 rounds on the board before Fish can even really try and react. Just to bear in mind, that if you were to assume Stan and Staff, then this is Fish's map pick, mm. and if that's the case, losing your map pick in this sort of fashion right now, it, it really tells a tale and sets a precedent for how that second could go. So Fish, now you've got to up your game. You need this pistol. You desperately need it. We, we've said that quite a lot today in terms of teams needing something. But never have we really meant it more than we have now. 
Because I think 11 to 4, it's so much more harsher than, say, you know, that 7 to 8 standpoint that we've found ourselves quite commonly sat at. Let's go, yeah. On the aggression here. Fires off a pot shot. There's nearly connecting to the back of Zelen, but all he really does is give him a vague idea of where he's being attacked from. Now, pushing the false towards the A bomb site, though. Molt is in the open. Jacob, very easy as he picks that one up. More aggression comes through as well. Connects a follow-up headshot back on towards Keaton. Now, if they just keep this pain train steaming their way through, Roma is able to pull up a roadblock, though. Slows them down for just a brief amount of time as they work their way back up towards the A-bomb site now, and they're going to try and just overwhelm them, flood in together, use their manpower. That's what they have to do. Obviously, it's a free versus free at this point with the players that are close on the site. There is one man coming in as a late round backstab, it seems. Actually, no, he's, he's certainly against it. Just be playing over the toilets. They are fairly grouped up. Jenko will get the opening frag, though. Kicks things off as he takes down Connor, but Boaster and Zelen fire back. There's another frag going the way of Zelen as well. The super sub coming into effect. 2k for him, and Imperial get the opening pistol. This is disastrous right now for Fish123. How do they come back from this? Well, there's only one clear-cut answer. Invest all your dollars, buy everything you can, as you need to find something to get yourself back on your feet. You've got to land right now. If they still find themselves flung up in the air just all over the place, this match could be over within just mere seconds. As at 12 to 4, Imperial are looking to run away with this one, charging into the future with a successful first map win. Just five sevens and deagles to make the difference. Now, it's never been said as impossible to do it in this sort of circumstance because you know full well that Imperial, they're not cemented either. They've got themselves some Galils, Mac 10, two AK 47 short, but the utility is really where they lack too. So there are certainly opportunities if Fish 1, 2, 3 can group up, almost harass players down, get that damage in, and trade proactively too. There's so many different factors here that I mean Fish have a genuine shot at doing it. It just really revels on the idea of team play. If they screw up and try and play as individuals, try and take one versus ones, they're going to lose them every day of the week. Yeah, they can't try and go aggressive on their end. So basically, they just have to hold those close angles. It's going to be so hard for them to do anything here. Obviously, the thing is with Imperial now, look at the map control they're taking over towards long. It's going to be very easy. You pick up on the close wall. When you peek out, obviously, Jacob can basically be sent off, let him rip. He's going to tear his way through so easily and do an abundance of damage onto all of those players. The rest of the teammates there, obviously, as well. When he falls, you peek with his ri uh, with the rifles, the range you have. Dispatch anyone on the site. It's easy. They burst through the smoke as well. Mole connects the headshot, though. Great spray control there as he just hammered down on that CZ. Mole has also done one better. Another frag comes up the CZ. Crazy display of prowess with that weapon. It's all about the team play, though. It's still going to be tested. They have to hold these crossfires, help each other out. As Jenko, what is that with the Deagle reason? Start to kick into gear, however, as they will begin their push, but the Deagles are still tapping. Jenko at it again for just another on towards Poster, leaving it all on Reason's shoulders. A one versus three, where Keita will just chime in with a pistol of his own. A round for Fish123 to play with the fifth on the board. Wow, look at the damage done to the Imperial economy as well. Absolutely shattered. Whereas Fish, they're looking healthy right now. Bye comes back out. Everyone's looking golden as they have these weapons for him. No AWP, but you're not going to be that angry about not having an AWP when you're up against this weak and stunted Imperial. I mean, all they have is these Tet 9s and Deagles. They either need to basically just go for a burst style play. They try and take that connected control early. One player is situated over by mid, so he bursts his way out. Those keep them busy as they do group up. Is this actually going to be a fast play towards the A bomb site, though? Take that toilet's control, burst your way through, use that ridiculous amount of utility you do have over on Boaster to try and smoke it off the site and push your way in. Oh, what was that? Connor on towards Mole. A crispy little one dig for him. So then for Smooth, not quite going to land the shot. Is going to be him just dipping back through the edge of that smoke, however. It's Imperial look to go together as a tight unit. It's the same storyline for them with their pistol. Smooth will sneak on through, gets himself one, but Jacob aggressive. This is smart from Imperial. Get themselves control of dumpster and bank. So when Smooth comes back on through, they can secure that trade. Jacob goes down the here, is on the retake, but Connor has the angle cover, so when Jenko peeks on his own, he will be instantly lobotomized, leaving things just over on Keita. A one versus three situation where he is just a matter of time before he gets executed. I mean, just trying to get out of there right now. Playing around the smoke, he will go for the peek up from the stairs. Spots out one man, but it is not meant to be. Reason takes him down, headshot comes through. And Imperial bounce back into the action. Now, sure, their economy took a hit when we saw that reset come out. But when you hit the flip side back over, it hits twice as hard. Obviously, Fish 1, 2, 3, no real money at all. Look at that. The pistol's coming into effect. It's basically the same kind of buy. Very aggressive on the force. Hoping you can pull something out of it. But it's just going to be so hard for them to do anything with these pistols on the CT side. They've done it once before. 
But they're basically not going to want to try and take that fight towards Mole again. And that was trying to make the same mistake twice. And Jenko, obviously, as well with that Eagle. This time back on 5-7. It's so, also so tough. They, they were basically on a full by there for Fish. So for them to lose that with five players all on flashes and such, basically a clone of what Imperial have brought to the table now, it really just doesn't look too good for them at all. Now they try and return back the favor, however, with these CZs, 5-7s, and just the one Deagle of Smuya. So it is going to be a fairly crafty boost on towards Long, one that they're going to use pretty much just to make sure they get an advantage and almost spot them out first before they get fired upon. And that information will be something they try and play. They don't actually gain anything, however, as they do creep further and further. And they'll catch Keita by surprise if he chooses to peek this. As they're just walking up, they're not making a step. And sending a core three of players like that without making a single sound really is going to sideline Fish. They have no idea what's coming. They flush themselves out, though. Akita going to find all oh, three here. That is beautiful play from Minjenko. Sneaks one in towards Ellen. And a singular flash changing it all as Jacob almost assaults, kicking into high gear right now. As he's just so frustrated how that all went wrong off the back of one play. One piece of intuition on Fish 1, 2, 3. The Thought Mole, throw a flash. Peek out long, check it. And they get themselves four kills. That was very nicely done. Obviously, scary because this is the thing, right? Fish not around, we like, okay, yeah, they probably won't repeat history again. Probably not going to be able to pull that one out of the bag, but somehow they just do. And it's just better teamwork on those eco rounds. A whole lot better. I mean, we didn't really see that much of an initiative when they were versing FM on their ecos, and they just kept throwing them away. And we were like, right, they're not really going to do anything on their eco. That round's going to be over. But this time around, it was a lot better. They're playing it a lot smarter, playing together like they needed to. And they start to bring it back a little here against Imperial. Obviously, Jacob will get away with that AK, so we will have at least one rifle going through into the next round. But their money isn't going to be too amazing. So investment-wise, they either have to force up, buy around that, but like have basically two AKs in play and the rest of one tech nines, or just try and save. And it seems like, yeah, they are just going to go for the full investment. They get a UMP out. Uh, Reason can buy the AK if he wants to, which he will, and then just go for a little bit easily. Big round for Fish123. They want to link it together. But Connor again started off the exact same way he did before. A crispy little shot on towards Mole. That's very effective as well. <laughs> it really is. I mean, what more could you ask for? They do get the trade, however. I think that starts to really keep things contestable for Fish123. It didn't really create an entry or anything amongst the light, but still another towards Monster certainly could. So we to be careful here. Does get taken apart of Zellen. Under wraps. He's going to try and peek on around the place. Still just trying to almost sell a fake at this point because that bomb is rotating over, but it's quite a while away. So they haven't committed at all. Zellen is just trying to do work. Sight isn't clear by a long shot. Needs to be very wary of that. As Robert and Jenko both now on the site. Jacob just holding Titans along, waiting for a rotate that isn't quite happening. Oh, Jacob takes down Kita. They look at this play as well from Zellen coming out as he bursts his way through. We'll find another crack there back on towards Roma. Both still with the final one on towards Jenko. It's so back and forth of Imperial getting one round on the board, getting reset, getting another round on the board. Very, very odd. Scary thing is as well, the knock-on factor once again rears its head. You can see the damage that has been done, the buffer that's been stripped away to reveal this shook by over on the side of fish one two three two ump's and play the rest of them just on pistols not amazing not really what you would want coming into this round but let's see what they can achieve with it anyway interesting to see if jacob can kick start that domino effect that did in that previous round because you can see him holding an angle waiting for that long push but the side just out the blue actually hold on a second perhaps i'll just swindle back around and just check connector for a split second and that's where it all started all of the frags started rolling in off the back of that small two second window if they get that sort of push going again, that sort of aggressiveness, it just means they can link it together. But we said that in the last round, it completely got turned on its head. But for now, this one for one affair favors Imperial as Jacob does start off strong, takes down Keita. Weaponry starting to be employed for Fish123 as they do still have those two UMPs in play. I'm curious to see if the pistols can achieve too much as well, but Mole looking like he's going to be faced oh. by Jacob again. Does sneak one in with the CZ, in fact, and can get an upgrade off the back of that. And bear in mind, Fish, they all have Kevlar, so if they pick up these rifles, that's a huge upgrade. Obviously now, as we come back into this four on four, as Mole takes his aggression down, wants to be bomb site, trying to reposition. Obviously, he is very critical here. If they want to go for the rotate over, if they try and take their way through connected to be a little bit more quicker on things, Mole will be the one to get the information. Hopefully, find a couple of frags as well. He needs to come in for a late round backstab as well. If they go for this burst on towards the P bomb site, it relies quite heavily on him to try and backstab. Zellin will get the opening frag. Mole now needs to put his foot down on the pedal, peeks through. Good stuff as he gets the opening frag. Jenko, though, does one better. Two kills going his way. Absolutely huge stuff. Leaving it all on Boaster. He 
He's a very effective player, but caught with his pants down as the peak comes through. That's not going to help him as he needs to sprint his way in, grab the bomb and do so much more. Smokes there as well. Ten seconds left at this point as he needs to try and react quickly. One headshot goes his way. Nearly the second, but Smuya, Deagle up close and personal. Absolutely giving it. Finds the kill. Another round will be going the way of Fish. You win one, you lose one. The problem here, though, is if we keep seeing this take place, not to state the obvious, but only one team can win. And it's Imperial every time. It's true. They're going to work their way through, obviously, because they do lose that second round, but they're always winning it afterwards. It's so weird they can't link them together, but they're always getting another round back on the board. And obviously, they're going to get that 16 rounds on the board quicker. The Fish 1 2 3 will. There seems to be a lot of aggression coming into one point, pinpoint part of the map. Connector. Connor going to be the man to lead that group. Let's begin to deploy some mortars as well to make that peak. That should net them the idea of Fisher's strategy, really. I think once you realize that fish are playing passive in the toilets, you always know the idea that someone's going to be towards long, right? So once they realize that, Jacob, he heads back. This is just scripted at this point. He's going to take the fight, but he doesn't realize how close Smoother is. And that's what throws him to the He can do so much more. The problem is, Boaster replenishes the angle that Jacob couldn't get the trade. Now we'll find the headshot back over on towards Keita. Jenko double down as he eliminates Connor and Reason. Now Zelen hungry for a couple more frags as he just roams his way around. Roma will unfortunately hit the deck. Imperial looking like they're going to be able to repeat history, get themselves back into that scenario that we always see happening. They lose a round, but they instantly win on the following. They have the backstab of Zelen. He can come in, in the rear trying to grab that bomb as well. But Jenko is the key player. If they can eliminate Jenko, it is very, very achievable. If Jenko kills one of them, that's when things start to get awkward. They'll be left in a deficit in terms of manpower and positioning. Zelen also needs to try and get over there to help out Boaster. Boaster peaks wide, rattles down on the AK, but can't find the opening frag as well. Caught out in the open, it'll be so easy to execute him. Look how low he is now as well. Eight seconds to play, they have to do it now, but they've got to find the frags. Drop the bomb, tries to back off, but the round is lost. All that done, they push on forward. Jenko will get the picks. Fish one, two, three. They get themselves their eighth round. Interesting kind of little snippet though is that sure fish got the round but knocked enough on them off the back of that But you can see their communication isn't actually perfect at all Because Jenko checked behind him even though he knew Mole was on the flank and Mole was covering off that angle and actually just basically ended up peeking right on towards the head of his teammate So interesting to see just how the communication is and whether that is just a little bit of, of trust or whether it was cool at all But something to keep an eye on perhaps as this game continues to develop Fish 23 of course have a long way to go and communication is going to be a big part of that they can make it back. Of course, Imperial looking for just two rounds. This one, though, finally, the one for back to the end. They're just sitting there, with they're accepting their fate. They know they've got rounds to play with after all, bear in mind. Mole takes down Reason. Now, as they are left in this screen versus five, Smear hammers down the trigger. We'll find the one kill back on towards Jacob. Obviously, just these pistols left standing at this point, though. The bomb down is such an awkward location as well. Mole, they basically should just peek into him and he should dispatch them one by one as they can't really work together efficiently on this. It's going to be so hard. Take the control over by toilets, but he will eventually go down, falling it all on one of Execution as well. Jenko will be the one to pull the trigger, though. Imperial, not great for him in that round, but obviously, the money is back. Cash factor is not going to be an issue anymore. But they need to slay with these AKs. It's not been a good day for them so far. It's going to be a struggle. Still, the path is right in front of them. No need for direction. They know what they've got to do. It doesn't matter whether they can pull through on the other side or not. Because it is going to be them starting to take the fight in towards Connector. Flashing is going to be thrown, but not a peek. The reason actually going to be given a bit more control than he originally expected. Passive play starting to take hold and a very readable play from the CT side, bear in mind. They've got two players focused in towards toilets. They don't want to give that away too much, especially off the back of that boost. Because when they do, then we can expect the Imperial start to prod towards long. Mole now. Elevated angle being utilized from him as he is up high, peering over the top, seeing what will come his way as he just holds out for the right moment. We'll be backing off, though. They are going to retreat back towards the A-bomb so now. Obviously, the T's. A little bit of map control taken over towards party, but other than that, nothing really to write home about. Obviously, they do have the late round look and Zelen over towards b bomb site. so if anyone goes for a cheeky information play, he will decapitate them and then also spot anyone that's going to go for a monster play. So, heavy reliant on him to get information, 
as they slowly tiptoe their way up trying to take that toilet control to hit the A site. They haven't really found too much success though in the couple of last few rounds towards A, as Mole and Co have been doing a great job of just backing them off instantly. Huge pot shots to be taken here and there. Zella trying to force something in towards his B site, but he's just a distraction right now, just trying to amplify everything he can on towards B. The rest of the team begin to execute out on towards A. Keita push back in towards the corner. Mole's going to push out forward in response to that. Sposter begins to come up. Sposter finds the first. Smooth going to respond instantaneously with the AWP, but it's a bit of a struggle, really, because it's one for one, and the t side can now just back off. They're happy. They're happy with the situation. Fish, they don't want them to be content right now. They need to push back onto the site and make the retake happen thick and fast. Yeah, and they're not going to clear their angles as well. Jacob with the peak, such a commonly played angle these days. Peaks out. They weren't aware of it. Easy kills come through. Luckily, they do shut down Reason, but Connor with the trade back, leaving Jenko left for one versus two. Going to be so awkward. Jenko probably is the man you want alive in these sort of scenarios. You will find one frag, but Zelen now on the wide face should be able to just ditch Spash him as he tries to go for the bomb. Defuse will do so. Match point has been secured by Imperial. Fish 1, 2, 3 as well. Cash wise, this is going to be their last ditch attempt. They have to pump everything into it. Double orb setup comes out. One on Mole, one on Smoothie. And this means Mole will still play the standardized sort of Smoothie angles. He'll take that aggression towards long. Whereas Smoothie can now either take the fight towards B or an aggressive, very vintage connector push. 15 9. A big peak to be made. Smoothie going to do just that. Peeks out, doesn't quite find it. UMP starting towards the little as it tacks a little bit of weight. Zella over towards Monster. Pretty standard setup from Imperial, pretty much well, very samey almost. For lack of better description. As it is just patience right now to be employed by Imperial. Don't want to run the clock down, but at the same time, don't want to go too quickly on towards Fish123. Bear in mind, they know that Fish123 aren't going to be on too much of a, a ship shape by. They know there's going to be a weak link somewhere, they want to find that. What well, they won't, not even though, is the double up setup. But Smoo, you get a far off a shot towards Long, will give away at least that singular in play. Curious to see if they'll kind of react to where Mole is and what to do off the back of that. Very much a tactical game right now, more than aim, at least in this round. Connor, gonna face out this Galil. Walking right into the crosshair of Jenko. Now the key here is that he's got support. Unfortunately, that support doesn't do anything at all. Kita just idling on short. Thank you on the idea that they just don't check him, which they won't, but he only gets one. And that's just useless right now. He needs to do a little bit more, gets a second. He's still traded. And at this point, a double off setup and a retake on B. This is hard. Smear finds the frag on towards Connor, though. There's another one going in the way of Mole. The double off setup is going large right now. Zelen has to go so huge, though, if he wants to try and counter this and shut them down. Obviously, right now, he is in a favorable situation to push those guys to come in. If he can get the headshot back on towards Smoy, huge. All he has to do now is stay alive. Mole will tap the bomb, draw him out, but he finds it. 16 9 is going to be the score line. Zelen picks it up. That is going to be the first map going the way of Imperial. They close out the first one. Overpass, the map that was, uh, you'd imagine, Fish 123's pick is it's their home turf. They had a very good chance against their FM earlier today, but was not meant to be. Imperial lock it down. That's crazy as well, seeing as how the last time these two teams matched up, when we saw it yesterday, when Crucial was there instead of Zelin, Imperial still couldn't even beat Fish. Now, sure. they get it on the board. I feel like credit has to be given to Jacob. Just so much credit for him right now. He really played his heart out with the AWP. Filled some pretty big boots with it as well. Of course, you know, filling in for a play like Windanski is always going to be a tough task. But some of the rounds he found, some of the big kind of double kills, triple kills that he picked up were, were so, so big. So really, huge props to him and the entire team really for claiming their opposition's map pick. For now, though, we are going to be heading to a short break as we do roll into our second map relatively soon. Until then, we'll see you in five.
Hello everyone, welcome donuts. <laughs> Hello everyone, welcome back to the stream. I've been thrown off there. Got caught off guard by <laughs> Again. Yeah. Well we are a personal laid back and casual stream. I don't know who said that, but you got it right. This has been you came after the playoffs. It's been The UK stands for undercut. Yeah. Because we no. Yeah, it's kinda how it works really. We just kind of took a very much more casual vibe and been pretty chill. We've we've had a lot of kind of back and forth moments and ups and downs and we've just kind of adopted to that, I think, really. Mm. Come on with the Come on with the technical issues, I think is probably the fairest way to describe it. What does the UK in UK Masters stand for? Who knew? Is it Ultimate Killers? Ultimate Killers, yeah. yeah. This is the Ultimate Killers Masters, of course. There you go. There you go. It's, pretty, it's in, actually on, on the trophy too. Is it? Ultimate Killers, does yeah. Does it say on there? Yeah. Pick it up and have a look. <laughs> <laughs> just hear the uh, the screams, the production in our ears just screaming at us. That's the one thing they, re they really care about. They don't care about what we do. They just like, they panic when the trophy gets it's touched. Stop prodding a bear. Yeah, it's kind of like... How close to the edge can we get it before it falls? <laughs> Uh, oh, straight into the game though. They're keen. They're ready for it. Oh, look at that angle on Inferno. Oh man, literally number one observer. Top of Reddit, of course. John Kelly, he's your man. Oh, it's a street fight. The boys have lined up. They're giving it. Oh, sprint their way in. Slash, slash. Oh. There you have it. Smuya stepped it up. Might not be able to hit an orb shot, but he knows how to left click. That's true. What are you What are you thinking about this matchup on Inferno? That's, I kind of want to pick your brain on this. I reckon we're going to see some interesting stuff coming out. Obviously, you look at it on paper, Imperial, obviously, you got to give it to them. That looking at this map pick as well. Right, hang on. Let me just break this down. Okay, so last time we saw Fish123 and Imperial over on Inferno. It was very close, it was very awkward, but Fish took it in the end in OT, right? Now then, I'm back into it. Fish123 just had a bad game. Well, they had a bad series as well with FM because they should have won some of those maps. And obviously, internally, they're going to be beating themselves up. Imperial also want to play this. Mm. This is their map pick. Imperial chose to come That's what this. I mean. So they want this so far. Connor? Oh, try and test them until it takes down Mole very early on with a quick push up towards Banana. Going to begin to drop things over on towards his beast as well as they go even further. Connor tapping oh. away on towards Jenko. That is crispy clean. And there's no stone left unchecked. Darting all over this beast site. Smooya. Coming in from Banana, he's about to get wrapped from behind if he's ever so delayed here. But Connor well, says you can try and once at me, but I'm sorry mate, it's just not quite going to happen. Keita will find the frag on towards Connor in the end of things, but at the end of the day it's a 2 versus 4, things are looking tough. As Imperial is going to take this pistol, Keita checking around churches right now, gets himself just further and further towards Coffin. And he wants to get himself around his Coffin and peek into that. At the end of the day, this corner right now just providing good cover, but a singular frag, and then this four versus two, things have got to change. They're coming in together, got to funnel in as a two-man attack, find themselves the individual headshot on towards Jacob. Peter looking for the second now on towards Coffin, finally to get there. And then Boaster and Reasonable Peak and Bob's your uncle, Imperial. They get a pistol. That's the thing, easy kills towards the end there. Obviously, it looked like it was a good retake so far, but they always had the upper hand in that scenario. You just peek at the same time, you shut it down so quickly. That was all it took. And just absolutely obliterated things there. Obviously, the second buy coming out now on their T side, they want to try and do as much damage as humanly possible on their T half. Get as much as a buffer so when they work their way through CT. Because if we remember our, you know, what we saw last time, both of these teams played very well T side CS. CT half, it was lackluster for either team on Inferno. They just didn't seem to know how to play T halves. Yeah. To, to put it simply put, like, really was just kind of a disaster to watch. So hopefully we see some sort of improvement made there. I think T side on Inferno is very, very difficult. We've talked about this over and over again, but we've also kind of learned something. UK Counter-Strike, Inferno, feels T-sided. Very weird to say, but I think the reason it is not because of the map itself, but because of the fact that none of these teams really have got strategy on it. There is no tactical element there. It's, it's kind of a, a pug. These guys are playing a 10-man right now. Yeah, and I mean, into this one as well, obviously, you look at the buys they've got. Fish123, kind of standard stuff coming out. Get the scouts, so you can try and do the long-range damage, transfer those tags on so they will be... Very weak, very supple, so you can then finish them off with pistols. Now, aggression towards the B-bomb site will be unfolding. Mole actually peeks wide, takes down Jacob. That's nice. Roma as well, a headshot going through on towards Boaster. They make this manageable. Unfortunately, Roma will be traded out by reason as the push comes on towards the A-bomb site, and there is a welcome at down. They are still left in a 3 versus 3 though. Potential that the CTs can do some damage here, but at the very least, they've guaranteed a bomb plant. That's going to be something itself that will help them out, as it is going to be Mole charging in the top. And 
have it. Ah. Begins her up with this easy finds just the one before a quick trade comes in from Zellen as he does begin to cool things off. Jenko captain over the 5 7, so close to Zellen, but unfortunately they can touch tips, but nothing will come of it as it will be Zellen to come out on top. Waiting now for Keita. One versus two, scout. That's not the ingredients for a clutch right there. That's anything but. So, what do you do in this situation? You run away. Scarper to the hills, my friend. Keita. Heading over on towards B, wants to save that scout into the next round. Imperial, a 2-0 to zero start on T-Side Inferno. Their third pretty much guaranteed now off the back of this. You can't really expect Fish to spend any money at all going into this round, I think. And from there, well, then we get to see our first buy, and that's going to be the big one that we look towards. Yeah, that next round is going to be very vital to try and set the story. Because obviously Fish wants to free as well. Coming in those full buys, that's where they need to start to lock it down. I want to see classic Smoothie coming out as well. Let him go on the aggressive peaks, situate him over towards A, potentially let him burst his way through. They can transfer the scout onto him now as well, as obviously Keto went for the first initial phase, had to get spawned for it, but just took a ding instead. So not great for him. Aggression coming out towards the bomb site though, as they tiptoe their way through. They have a lot of utility to play with, and they're just going to burst their way out on the back of the confidence. Confidence. Sometimes it can be led to arrogance, but it doesn't matter at this point, right? Frags are frags. As they do begin to push, two picks so far, Zelen and Colour. to do the damage. Angles to be held, and the scout will come in smooth. We land a chest shot on towards Jacob. Smoke is pretty bad though, and that's going to mean that the Seaside can still get the open peaks. If they so choose. You have to bear in mind that Zelen and Colour also are relatively low, so if they do get met with a scout, that would be a pick for smooth to actually work with. But then it almost feels like you're, you're almost there just grabbing at straws, trying to hope that they can make something stick. They know that it's almost impossible. You can see them already backing away. Roma was almost just dragging Smear along towards this A site. It's, it's just him left. Makes his way around now. Approaching over towards the A bomb site, hoping to, uh, at the very least, get a couple of frags on the board here. Force out some more rebuys for Imperial. Damage that economy. Peaks wide. Uh, tries to take the first man he sees, which is Boaster, but will lose out in the Battle of Mortal Kombat there. Overpowered by that SMG, so another little bit of cash is injected into the Bank of Imperial. And this is where it needs to get real. Serious stuff needs to be displayed now. Fish 1, 2, 3. The buys come out. The Orc back on Smuya in his home turf. They really need to step things up at this point. Themselves, everything they need, all the tools. Can't remember to get anything done. You can see them trying to face off Banana, but they've been very, very clear here on how they want this to be played. They've got the pre molly down, they flashed themselves out, they pushed Smuya right on towards Coffin. Now they know he's going to be facing that. That's exactly what they wanted, in effect. They set themselves up for that. If they don't check this, then it's disastrous. But you almost feel like they have to check it off the back of they just know that he's fallen back to that site. As they smoke off Frost, that being CT, gives them that avenue to make that meander over. But you can also see just how non-committal they are. They barely used anything in terms of making that all happen. Meanwhile, they made Fish 1, 2, 3 move mountains in terms of their CT side setup. Really just pushing them around the place right now. Imperial, a lot of confidence. They build up to make a push, but they can go anywhere. B, A, you name it. Mid, probably going to be a pretty hot point of contact, I think. Holding still for the meantime though, as they take that aggression over towards Banana. Utility wise, they have two Molotovs to work with, three Molotovs actually. So they can try and burn people out of position on site if they want to chuck those Molotovs in. Completely set the site ablaze, force everyone out of position, that makes it so hard to defend it at that point. Go for the smoke over, that will block it off as well, so they can tiptoe their way in. Then go for the late round capitalization. Jenko, he's in the fountain. Smooth is close by to aid him as well, as he is on top of coils. They are ready to try and deal with this. And to be honest, it has to be a B play. They're going to know it's a straight commit as well because of the time. Three seconds after the clock, Monotov comes in, but Jenko is a okay. Able to keep on firing through as well. Double kill goes his way. Smooth finds one towards Ellen. There's a double kill for Smooth. A hat trick comes through for Jenko. Both of the men on the B bomb site denying anything for Imperial there. I think where that play is, it all comes down to raw skill. They had only flashes and only two or three of them to hold off that push. So it literally came down to who could play in the right angles, the right crossfires, and who could find the picks. Class from Fish123. They get themselves the first gun round off this matchup. They put one on the board. But it's just one, a reset, certainly on the cards. And Imperial look to play that in this next round. They're going in with five AK-47s. Not necessarily very balanced utility. And in fact, a lot of damage being done off the back of what Fish have employed. Look at Zelen right now and Connor. Both very, very low within just mere seconds of this round getting going. 
flashbang goes over. Hoping to find something, but nothing really to harp on just yet. They do link back together now, taking their aggression up and over. Molt defending towards middle of the back of his teammates. It's actually more of an aggressive stance here, really. If they want to go for a burst style play through the smoke, smoke off towards quad and charge in. They could catch him off guard and rotate, but he will do the same to them. Executes Jacob. Smart play. He had a reason behind why he was playing a little bit risky there, and it does work out for him. Look at the splash damage transferred as well to all three of those players. They are not looking healthy at this point. Boaster nearly dead as well from that confrontation. Risky business right now for Imperial. Need to try and pick up some headshots pretty much in these next few engagements. Otherwise, it is just going to be them dead set in the dirt as they do begin to point out towards mid, looking for that attack on towards long mode. Is going to be the man to try and stop them though as he finds the first, looking out for the second. The pre fight comes in from Roaster. That means it is going to be a pretty healthy trade. A flash to go off in reflex though. But look at Roma. The fact he's got a teammate in pit to support him as well as him being on site. It's a big part of why this hole is going to be a success right now. As the push comes in, already he's at the point of first. Roma picking up the second, and this crossfire just doing all this right now. It seems to be will end it all with the AWP, and it's just a well put together CT side for Fish 1 through 3, at least that A side. Certainly looking to see how their B side is going to be tested again. I think we've seen it once or twice against a quick push from Imperial, so that's why kind of where we're next drawn upon. But that A-site there was, yeah, just as we mentioned, just very well composed. If they can repeat that, then we can expect some good things from Fish123 now they're on the rifles. This round should be a pretty easy win for them. Oh, he comes out. Smear does ward them back off as he did hammer down the trigger there. No offense will go his way just yet, though. Comes back to boost up his teammate. Thing is, it's a lot of uh, into this round, just trying to use the aggression. Basically, brute force up, wolf pack overpower the opposition. Uh, in 1v1 battles, they're nice. If they can just burst through, catch them off guard, then it would go their way. But Keita, it's just the shooting gallery right now. They're beating him so slowly. They give him a 3k. And then Roma as well. They should have gone for more of a fast style play. I mean, potentially even an apps burst, they probably would have got mowed down. But something just a little bit more to work together. But that round's out of the way now anyway. Back into a good situation with their money. The AKs will come out. Free to free, though. Fish123 have equalized the scoreline off the back of that first get or a rifle round. They've just been tearing their way through. A good start for them on their CT side, building up to three, of course, as you mentioned, is going to be where they start their journey. But where is it going to end? I think, you know, on a normal map of Inferno, you'd be looking at something like a, a 9.6, maybe even a 10.5. I think 10.5 is much more considered standard. Getting five rounds on the CZ even then is pretty damn good. So I'm curious to see kind of in this matchup how many will be considered enough to carry on through into that second half. One for one trades, Jacob coming on towards Mold as well will cut down any sort of long presence. But Keita, elevated angle right on the edge of the smoke, playing on the edge of balcony. Things to be very multi talented here. Problem is, he doesn't win the duel. It's a spray, but a spray that doesn't eventually form the frag. And that means Jacob can take him down with a wonderful little headshot. Frags into the smoke on Zelen. Imperial, here to take just another. Smoothie will fall back though. Retreating out of there. Luckily enough, he will be able to get through with his trusty weapon. Obviously, the orb still in his inventory. So we can will that into the next round. And I mean, the thing is, though, Imperial. Instant bounce back. This is kind of reminiscent of what we saw in Overpass, though. They do get grounded to the dirt. You think, okay, broken on that round. But instant bounce back through. And it was so back and forth. That's why that matchup was so close until Imperial were just able to close it out in the nick of time towards the end of things. Is that going to be the same sort of scenario coming into this game? Obviously, as well. Oh, Smoothie going down there. That is horrific. That's the worst possible occasion. I'm not too sure why he actually weren't overly aggressive at that point as well. I mean, obviously, they're going to have money to play with, so they have to reinvest. But it's still not good. They don't want to just burn their way through as much economy as possible. Is look how much they have to pump into this now. So much to do. So much to achieve. Oh, a double upset has been the go-to. The cornerstone for a lot of teams in UK Masters nowadays. It's becoming more and more common. We're going to look to it again, see what it can in effect find. A very close range shot, but it will be missed. Come on, taking a little bit of damage off the back of that, but nothing too crazy. But it's the frag that counts really with these orcs right now. Tags are sure there's something, but that's what we really care about, the frag. It's smoother. This is very uncommon from him. I don't quite understand the angle. It's one of the right that just gets an easy pick on him as he tries to fall back. A lot of damage to the fly gets the repeat, however, and the hit will start to support as Roma. They begin to do the damage on towards Reason. More on top to go down. We'll try and force that hit player out. Buster still standing on that site. Smoother. 
it's so much cheaper and so close, just too close. I don't understand what he's doing there that close up. Oh, look at that though, taking down Zelen, absolutely fabulous as he connects that shot. You can see Jake on the sidelines as well, should catch him off guard. Spray transfer comes through, headshots galore. Double down, clings house as he finds those kills. Very, very effective stuff. And once again, it's the equalization coming into effect. You win one, you lose one. It's kind of the storyline that you base Team Imperial around. Obviously, the thing is, they still have the money. They will pump that back in. AK's come out, but unfortunately, two of their players are stuck with just the pistols. Both had a little bit more to spend, but he is going to opt to focus that over on towards the Tech-9 and more utility. I like the fact that it's going to be a big part of their T-side and their way they can get themselves onto these sites. Mole, of course, does start strong, though, and at least take away Connor. And he didn't hold too much. It was not necessarily a huge loss. It's just manpower in itself. Interesting to see what Imperial are trying to do in this round. And all it seems like they're very much trying to hit towards A. And I, I find it curious why they like A so much. I do think they spotted weaknesses in the hold, of course. And we talked about Smuya there. Jenko being able to mop it up with a double kill, though, was certainly something more positive. So it's kind of curious to see just how close they're able to get. Roma, as well, has been a huge player in pit. So the fact they think they can challenge him, slow by, curious, but what a boost. That's creative. Smart stuff there. Ah. Injecting a couple of things across the board to switch up their playstyle a little bit. Unfortunately, the trade comes back through. Obviously disheartening as well, as Jacob is so low and they've already lost two members on that T side. But both the can trade it back through. Headshot comes out with a tech line. Good stuff right now. And the CTs can't actually strike just yet. If they want to try and go for this, which you imagine they will, they need to wait for their teammates to rotate over. They're all going to peek from the same way as well, take the fight from Arch, group up their way through. Bosa has the last bit of equipment they actually had to work with. Molotov goes down that will delay them. They know they're coming towards quad as well. Reeks up close to personal, hide behind the barrel. Unfortunately, can't get the opening kill, and they are low right now. Mole is trying to punch that with the orb. Lands a hell of a shot on Thor's Jacob, leaving it all on Boost's shoulders. Finds one on Thor's long. Spins back around, looks to take the on this one fight on the oncoming push. Whips out the Tech 9. So low though, Smooya just tapping away with the USP. They get straight on this bomb. And Fish 1, 2, 3. They edge it out on top. 5 to 4. Last time it was Imperial to peek ahead. Then Fish, they brought it back. They tied us back up. This time, it's in Imperial's hands. They're the ones who have to do the tying of the knot. And their money isn't too peachy at all. It's very, very low for them. Yeah, those buys coming back through now, obviously, as well. But it's measly. It's just upgraded pistols. Not anything really too fantastic for them. And Imperial, nine times out of ten, they were able to actually respond very effectively. Into this round, though, you don't imagine they will be able to. Obviously, outnumbered. Fish actually looking like trying to find some structure that works for them. Retakes are looking good as well. Oh. Actually looks good. Smuya doesn't have the AWP, but honestly, I've liked the fact we've seen him rifling more. He's been very effective when he has the rifle in his hand, whereas I feel like the same can't be said to as much of an extent as we expect from Smuya with the AWP. He's been such a big talking point today, hasn't he, really? It's just been the name that everyone will always hear cropping up, and for big reason, he was one of the best players in the UK in terms of the way he rose so quickly and the way he was able to play at an international level. Of course, you know everyone will always refer back to his trip with Flipside, for example. For now, though, we have to look at the present. History, experience, that's all well and good, but that only affects you coming into the server. The decisions that are made are what we'll define. There's Jenko. Never get angry, just nice drop down. We'll find one. Well, that's not quite enough, as it is going to be a quick mop-up. Mole actually stealing it away with a double kill of himself. Connor, solo, just 8 HP. Let's try it. Unfortunately, it's not quite hard enough. This fish one, two, three. He will continue to eke it out. Six to four. The investment will be dropped in by Imperial in this one. This is good, though. Obviously, Fish, as they want to try to lock things down, they didn't have a great CT half either last time we saw them. You know, it was struggling. They really struggled to actually get a predominant amount of rounds on the board. So, good stuff for them to actually already have six of them there. And if they can work their way through, win this half, then it might be a very dominant fashion coming out from them. As we are right now, aggressive stance over towards Banana. If the push comes through, he's going to be the one to try and halt it. Let's find the shot. Jacob, man to fool. What? Is that going to start the push? No, that doesn't do anything at all. Look at how calm and collected Imperial are right now. They realize they just lost one of their core players. Their leader for all intents and purposes. But for now, they're just going to relax in sight. They're going to get themselves set up. They're still going to go for his grand plan. Flash gets thrown. The smokes will land. Smooya 
I'm gonna have to try and do the work with Zeta P, but completely blind are the T's. Take a right smooth as a full Connor. Oh, damage to Helen. One for one trade off the back of Jenko. Mole coming in from church. Now he's gonna be incremental if this round favors the CT side. He needs to find a frag, but he can't be traded. If he gets traded, we find ourselves down a pretty big rabbit hole. But it's very likely Imperial will be the only ones to come out alive. Oh, Mole. He tried to take the aggressive stance, but was overpowered at that point. Imperial, look at they will actually pick up this round. Sure, the Molotovs are going down, which will force the base. But even then, you're only trading back into a manageable situation, but it's not going that way. Key, uh, elevated angle. He has the high ground. Sure, he could fire off pot shots, but if he can't find the frag, it doesn't work. Time is too far gone now as well. Has to back off. Knows he's not going to win that one versus two and get the defuse. It's just going to try and play for the exit frags. Gets a tag, but no frag. Reason should be taken down by the one blast, at least. But even then, Imperial bounced back at that point now. They get that round down. They got the bomb plant as well. So they have cash to rebuy up into the following one. But it will be a bit shaky for Jake M. And meanwhile, for Fish123, a couple of players actually are going to have to skimp as they work their way back in. Well, neither of these teams have been able to build up money at all. Every single round has been so close and so hotly contested that all in all, you're looking at two teams with minimal money in each and every round. They buy up everything they've got. And just to draw your attention, let's take a look back at what Fish really have in this round. It's so, so bleak. Trying to make it work with just the one rifle, of course, that's going to be a bit of a pass to parcel. Jenko will find just the one, a bare minimum result. At the end of the day, Fish 1, 2, 3, should be a blistering round for them all in all. Imperial, back to equalization, 6 to 6. Who would have thought it? Very predictable. Yeah, very, very good stuff coming over. Now, Fish 1, 2, 3, still pretty broken on the economy overall. They will just have to invest lightly as they need some kind of presence. But Imperial, it looked like it would have been a bit of a scary scoreline, but now they're just going huge. Yeah, really are somewhat stepping up into this one. Six rounds on the T side. Old Inferno, very, very valuable. Close range to be held by Smoothie, though. That will then a quick frag with the pistol. Rover actually getting a second as well. Peter letting rip with a shotgun. Fine shifts another on towards Boaster. Jacob trying to bring things back into contention. But this is a two versus five. It's all gone wrong from here. Imperial, how are they going to worm their way out of this one? Yeah, what is their answer going to be? And this is just like overpass all over again. You count fish one, two, three out because they're in a bad situation with their buy, but it doesn't matter. You give them an opportunity. You give them an inch, they will take a mile. And that's just what we're showing once again. I mean, it wasn't even Mole and Co. who we expect to be able to do the damage. Opening up early is, of course, Smuya. And with a backup of Roma and Keita. Uh, Keita with a Max 7 as well. The classic weapon he's been donning every time we are in these situations. But he actually makes it work somewhere out. Mole forced to peek as the Molotov burns him to a crisp. He will be sent off, though. Barbecued Mole now. Jenko spamming away, trying to do a little bit more as reason. We'll come in on the flank, finds just one more, starting to really inch away at making this one very real for Imperial. It's not a right off, bear in mind. Firepower still swinging towards one clear cut direction. We do just see Banana yet to be contested. Jacob tracing them through the smoke, but unfortunately, he doesn't know that on the other side of it. It's just him pre aiming. Now, the face, the rifle almost certainly favors this gunfight, but he's struggling. It's not quite falling through. The only thing is with the backstab, though, they have to focus on two angles at once. That's when it gets awkward. They're hesitant, and you do actually come through. They pull it out around the look like it was gone at that point, right? It started off with them being massively favorites. You're like, okay, they've won this. All of a sudden, they lose three members in like the first 20 seconds of the round. You're like, oh, it's done. But play it smart. They slowly wean out the opposition, force them to just drop so many members in stupid fights that they now come back through into the position where it looks like they're trying to take this potentially, you know, they can. Work their way through, get a 9 6, which would be crazy. 9 6, T side. Just to kind of tack that one at the end of that. Very, very valuable in Imperial shoes. Fighting tooth and nail to shut this one down. The clear cut 2 0. That's the game plan here. For themselves. It's looking to be a slow build up in mid. Yet again, the very same old, same old. I feel like they need to bring something fresh to the table because Fish 1, 2, 3, they got to clock on to what's going on. Their holds have been good. They need to get the they need to get a lot of players in those wacky peaks. This one, for example, could be on top of quad. Makes it well with a double kill. Reason does come through with a trade on towards Roma. And this is where things kind of somewhat fall out of control. When Fish 1, 2, 3 start to lose players, they have to readjust. That's the problem. But the core holes themselves are called cross lines. I like it. Zalim will connect the headshot back on towards Moogra as well. So now it's a free versus free. Smoke goes down. 
So it will slow him down a little bit here if getting any reinforcements over from Arch and Boaster. Headshot on towards Keita as he tried to take the fight. Knew he was absolutely split from his team. There was no way that they were going to read blowing together at that point because they were divided by the smoke of Arch. He goes for the initiative play, gets killed. Mole with the response frag though, comes in. Mole could double up here. Unfortunately, he was actually just going to go for the pot shot would have been crazy. But two versus two, winnable if they can try and retake this. The only thing is, if they get another frag over on the side of Imperial, that's when it starts to get a bit iffy. At that point, trying to take the fight from this side on your own is really, really awkward. So both though is critical. He's got the headshot angle. Doesn't even need it. Finds the spray. Already finding himself one. Jenko now has to tiptoe around the corner. So nervous in his approach. The shots will be laid on down, stricken for Jenko, as he will eventually be dumbed down onto the floor. Another round enters the fold for Team Imperial. And that is absolutely beautiful as well. They needed that. They come through now. This is what we're talking about. There was always a potential for the 9-6, but they had to get over that first hurdle. And they demolish it. They leap. They do a long jump. 800 meters is secured. They got the gold medal for that one. This is the thing coming into this round as well. This is a lot easier for them. They should secure this pretty quickly. Oh, Bajenko. It looked like he had an AWP in his hands, but it's just a scout with a headshot coming through. Deadly. Unfortunately for him, though, Zelen will fire back. First time we've seen him actually pick up an AWP in quite some time, but he still knows how to wield it. Smooya with a headshot coming through, though, over on towards Boaster. It's the trading game right now. The thing about that leap, though, is they had to work so much to get there. So much training re-rolled into how far they could jump. Each and every round was tested. So this isn't a write-off. It just means it's just another test, another part of their plan. A second hurdle. Find themselves over. Is it is going to be Zella going for a bit of a clamber down banana? Roma will find the tray back in return to bring us to a two versus three. But bear in mind, Smoo just four HP. He's going to be the weak link that Imperial will try and find. If they take him down or get a pick on any of the other players, the minute Smoo comes into action, if they get that first peak, if they get to fire first, it's almost an instant win for Imperial, providing yeah. they land that shot. Because anywhere on his body, he's a done deal. This thing is dead in one. Oh. He's actually playing over by Arch as well. They get the drop on him here. They pick through the smoke. They work their way through Arch. If they find that frag and actually go for the central backstep here, if they, if they want to go to the B play through Arch, make the long trip over, it would be crazy. But they are going to be committing for the A take, it seems. They are going to spark the first player in Roma. Obviously, Roma with the UMP still has a bit of range to work with. But unfortunately, Smear on the site. The hidden Smear is the most dangerous Smear. As he finds the opening frag, will kill Zelin. Roma also going to take down Connor. Sure, he dies in the end, but it's too late. The round is over. That's going to be the half secured. That is a 7-8 scoreline. With Imperial leading, they win the half. Has every match of Inferno that we've seen in UK Masters been an 8-7 half? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I don't know if that's 99% sure. I feel like that was, that's was that been the scoreline. I don't know if someone behind a, a curtain can let us know on that, but I feel like every single map on Inferno has been half and half, yeah. The only one that might not have been was Endpoint FM, which yeah. we didn't see. But even then, that was a 16-9 scoreline. So I possibly... I think it was six rounds, maybe. I'm not really sure, but it is a pistol round. That is a reason. As he does tap on through, gets himself just a one for his troubles on towards Mold. Got a tag through the box and a follow up from oh. Boaster as he is so crispy right now. Flying a double kill on towards Jenko and Romeo in return. This is a game of tennis, but one Imperial is so certainly winning. He's got served, kids. It's huge, though. Boaster, hungry for more as well. Gonna keep peeking out. Two kills on the board. Just spamming into the smoke right now, hoping they can get some more. Thing is, though. Five versus two as well. Even if they lose a couple of men right now, they've still secured this round, you'd imagine, as they just look unreal in terms of individual talent right now. Peak coming through as well. Reason headshot on towards Keita. Last man will drop in any second. Sure, it's Smuya. But trying to get this one versus five off. Should be awkward, but somehow Smuya starts to do it. They're all just picking them one by one. They got a little bit overzealous. They start to get picked off. The backstab does come through in the end, though. Finally, Jacob shuts him down. Oh, at least Smuya actually getting a couple of confidence frags back in him there. Potentially going to... Ride him up a little bit, and the extra cash he gets for that. Obviously, 2.5k, but now it's on 1.5. So that's going to help him out a little bit when he wants to go for the AWP buy into the later rounds. Yeah, it certainly is going to be something that will play on his mind. Of course, going to be opting for a very low investment into this round. Everyone else will put a little bit more in. He just wants to make sure he can stick by for the AWP, as he mentioned. But for now, Imperial, they get to take things a little bit further, a plunge into the unknown. As they're on 9, they should be able to get their 10th from their 11th. It's almost certainly there. But it all is about this round, because this is the one that really is... Fish 1, 2, 3 still fighting. They haven't just tapped out just yet. The next round, for example, if Fish lose this, at the start of the round, they pretty much already just said, all right, it's over, you can take this. We just want to do as much damage as you can on the way. So far, not so good. Roma, close range, Tech 9 on towards Jake and Reason, elevated angle. But every time I see this, I never really see anything that's too peachy. We only really see one here, which isn't all that good. They still got sight control. They're intertwined with all the different angles of church. From there, I favor these Tech 9s every day of the week. 
Yeah, up close and personal, that's why they're just going to reign supreme. You can bombard down, beat your opponent to a pulp. Zelen and Co, though, they're still going to attempt to try and take the fight. Zelen is in Garden. He slipped through undetected, so he is going to be very strong. He's critical into this play, though. He needs to come out poised and do some damage. Smoo unfortunately, takes down Connor, though. Here's where Zelen has to kick it into second gear. Finds a frag. Boaster also does one, but Boaster goes one better. Another frag going his way. It's a one versus one. Keita left on two HP. A single shot eliminating. Just go for the spam. Gets him low though, Prosta has to try and push in. Keita overpowers him, he had the phallus, switches out to his pistol, was not aware of how low he was, had to try and get up close personal. He just would've gone for the pre-fire there, probably would've found the frag, but unfortunately, Fish123 pick it up, reset comes into play. Abysmal economy for Imperial. A Mark 7 over on Connor, Zelen on the UMP that he's been very effective with to say the least though. The rest of the players on pistols, broken amount of utility here and there. This is going to be awkward now as Fish123 looking to equalize the scoreline. It would only happen with these two teams though. This has been the story of these guys. Every single round is always neck and neck. They refuse to give up to each other. It's just a battle of consistency almost. Already a fight to be claimed by Moldo as he will go head first in towards Connor, just diving into apps, really trying to push the extent of the map control of this T-Cycle game. Imperial, very lackluster match rate, as you mentioned. Not really playing together either. What is the one thing you don't do with these pistols when you're in this sort of situation? Take one versus one fights. So you're going to lose them nearly every time, nine times out of ten, you could say. Reason finally does pick up one. It's too late because it's just a quick and easy trade for Roma. Fish 1, 2, 3, this isn't down and dirty. This is just easy. Smoke goes up. We'll slow them off as the aggression goes over towards that B-bomb site. Switching out to the AWP now as well. Force moving as the flashbang goes through. He's going to try and take that fight straight in. Mole is there. Ready to peek from balcony. Spots out the back of one man, but he's just going for the backstab anyway. There is going to be a bit of a confrontation there over towards Arch. Bomb finally gets planted by Keita. And now the moment to strike. Which relies on when Zelen actually wants to go for that peak. He's trapped in Garden, I believe. Actually, he's over by Ruins, it seems. So he is just trapped in there, but basically stuck on his lonesome. I wonder what he's up to in it's Ruins. A, it's a church or Ruins. Depends kind of which time period you're looking at. Perhaps he's praying, perhaps he's building. Two options. Pretty clear cut, really. Yeah, they put some stained glass in there. That's new. Here he is, though. Finally, we get to see some Zelen who makes his approach through. He's just trying to go for the late round backstab. Opening his up with one frag. Nearly getting the second, but it was not meant to be. We'll go down. Obviously, Imperial, they had a chance into that round if they would have played close crossfires, close angles that would have complemented them. But instead, they went a bit aggressive, got punished because of this. Now, this sets Fish123 up to at least get a 10th round on the board here. Possibly even more. Yeah, if they get the 10th there, it's almost just a, a role reverse of what we expect in Imperial to find. This 10th for them is, is so, so valuable, though, because it just gives them credibility on this T-Site, which is something I feel like they, as a team, they need. You know, players like Smoother get so frustrated. Across the board, they really can find themselves a, a bit heated at times. We talked about kind of individually where they all stand, and as long as everything still doesn't hit the boiling point, then we're, then we're doing okay. But now look, it is going to be smoother to peek down mid with the AWV. Trying to see if he can find a cheeky one here and there, but I think for him, he just needs to be a little bit cautious as well. Doesn't want to really engage in these pistols at all. Let's find out this one will go, though, as they make their approach up towards mid. They're going to try and bombard their way on towards that A bomb site, you would imagine. They do have utility to play with here, but look at this. Connor waiting by Speedway, ready to try and pop their kneecaps off if they do take the fight to him. He is ready and waiting, but it seems like most likely they are going to go for this A committal. If they walk into this B stack, though, it could be huge. They should have sniffed out that A looks pretty clear, though. No presence towards quad, no presence towards arch. They're going to be thinking something's a, you know, a muck here. They do smoke it off as well. Committal towards the A bomb site. Easy round for them now. Yeah, pretty much job done here. They're going to make their push. They're pretty much on the site already. I mean... What you'd be saying is, all right, they're making their push, and they're well met with some resistance from Imperial. They're spamming away with the pistols. Well, that's a far reality, just miles, miles away. As it is just going to be Imperial in the distance. And <laughs> make the best out of what they got. That's true. Looking like they should be able to get their 10th round on the board as they just worked their way through. Pretty expected at this point. We didn't really think that Imperial would do too much, obviously. Now, though, what can they achieve? They haven't invested really much into this. So it looks like they're just playing for exit. It's kind of smart. Play crossfires. If they push to try and hunt you, you can probably pick them off, save a couple of weapons. Uh, good as well, because, I mean, they're not throwing themselves away. They can if they want, because, you know, they're not invested. But the thing is, they're also going to give the opposition extra cash. If Mole was to find them, that would be bad. So, smart they had, just kind of held for eight years. But, unfortunately, nothing really going to work out. 
Now we wait. We wait to see when Imperial have to show for themselves. It, it, they got to show something soon. They don't want to give a team like Fish123 that just ability to charge them forward. Now going back to what I was talking about with uh, Smear and Co though, they always found it embarrassing to lose that first map though. So I feel like for them, being able to string things together and getting that validity... <laughs> Valids. Sorry. <laughs> trying, trying, trying to, to say words. <laughs> I had a bit of a struggle there, but yeah, getting that ability to just be proved as valid is, is so, so big for them. And if they can keep on stringing these together, this buy really will set the tone for how the rest of their heart can go. That's the point I was trying to hit at. It's just a bit of a struggle, it seems, to get it words out. English is a hard language, guys. Confirmed. As we are going to be looking at Fish123, trying to start off strong. They've got the elevated angles. They're going to be setting themselves up to try and push up off the back of that. But they've got to be patient here. They want to check out Jake and make sure they spot out him because it is a lot of hype being induced on this B site right now. And the same sort of thing on A. As long as they clock onto that, though, should be good. Yeah, you think so? I think so. <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> oh, Jesus. Uh, they're getting ready for a B assault right now as they set themselves up. Obviously, they have a lot of utility to play with. The aggression coming out. Time has started to tick away. I mean, they burnt a little bit of the clock. The thing is, as well, they haven't got any information for it. And they've drawn out nothing from the side of Imperial. They still have a ridiculous amount of utilities. They can't just go for the state run and um, probably pull it off if they can get the opening frags. It's going to be Mole and Re uh, sorry, Jacob and Reason that are there. So it just depends if they can actually get the opening kills on the board. Mole actually does take the fight towards Connor as well. So this puts that seed of doubt in their minds. They're going to back off. They're not going to run the risk of going for this B play. Mole is out. He's managed to slip his way through in towards Pit. They leave Smoothia to cut off the late round rotate. This is huge. It's going to be big as the drop will come in. Smoothia to the line. The first shot. Most of them up with the Phantom. Finds one, but doesn't get the second. The trades don't come in. And huge, as you say, is it's going to be Zelda doing just a little bit more to try and inch it back into a two versus three. But even then, is this doable? It's going to be such a big ask. It's all on Zelen's shoulders. A man we've seen in this position so, so much now for the CT side. People flashing towards mid, but the minute he takes that fight, Mole is there just to slide on him from behind, pops in the DMs and says, surprise, as he takes him down. Yeah, Reason just going to back off as well. Looked like there might have been some potential, because obviously, uh, Smear so backed off after he got the first rotate. He didn't get the second rotate because he just wanted to back off stay alive. So potentially, if Zelen would have took the peak, find the kill on towards Smear. Left is 2 versus 2, kind of manageable, but nah, not worth the risk at this point. So Fish123 are going to get their 11th on the board. Imperial, not looking that great right now. They're just left with 9. They're still trying to get to that 10th round. I mean, they've been looking like they're, they're 9 on close every time. They get the opening picks on the board, but they can't just close it out to screw that 10th round. And they need more to play with it. They don't want to allow this one to get too close. I feel like the borderline is 12-9. Hmm, maybe a little bit further than that, but I feel like once it gets to 12-9, you, you've taken everything we said about Fish123 being given confidence, and you just amplified it tenfold. Yeah. You're just giving them so much to toy with. Uh, and when you when you feed these players like this, they just get better and better as well, bear in mind. So if Imperial want to be able to tackle Fish in this map, and even the third map, it kind of does get to this kind of big buy point where it's going to be one buy that will set the tone for the rest of this game. <laughs> it's true. Gonna give you something that we look towards. As it is gonna be a bit of patience here and there to be applied by both of these teams, as it will be this T side eventually to begin the meander up towards mid. Just a few steps here and there, a bit of a casual walk. Smooth up, wanting to at least just have to pop off a bit with this. Find himself the first on towards Zelen. As they begin their dismantlement of these pistols. Gonna be careful. We'll allow them a, a bit of a backstab, something that Boaster will be in right now if he peeks out a boiler. Lines up the first, drops the bomb. That's actually really, really important. That's huge. Massive backstab practice for Ruben. Oh, Jenko. <laughs> Jammy Jenko. Juices opposition. Beautiful stuff from him. Classy as ever. You know what? I'm going to pull out now. I'm going to go let Smoothie finish it off with the glove. They have money, though. Finally, they are back into a workable situation. Obviously, that kind of the 11th round there was literally just a given at that point. You expect them to be able to link it into round 12 so easily because they just didn't have any money. They were just broken. I mean, they did pretty good. We saw a couple of frags getting their way, but now is where it needs to get real again. Jake, come back on the orb. This is going to be a big factor. This is the big buy, right? This is the one we, we talked about. We really talked up in the last two rounds. If they screw this up for Imperial, I already feel like this this might be just too far gone. So we have to see what they're going to show for themselves. You know, you see Jacob just wanted to go for that banana peak. Problem is, if they peek up too close, he's going to go on the rifle as well. He's just decimation. Smear and Jenko both do their jobs. Sure, Jenko takes a bit of damage and gets knocked down so low. But what does that matter? They've just got two picks handed them on a silver platter. This B site now is a red carpet rolled and out for them. 
champagne glasses. Oh, they're ready. I think as well, they're not even fully committed to the rotate because they know they're going to get backstabbed by the way. So there's only two players there to try and deal with five men, but they make it work. Oh, poster, 2k comes out. This is huge so far. He can try and get a couple more frags. He is dinked down to five HP, but he's still alive and kicking. That is the most impactful factor about this. Mole with a late round backstab, though. Looks like Zelen should be executed here. All of a sudden, it's just Zelen actually left. Sorry, Connor actually getting executed on the late round rotate. Zelen. He's going to strike. Finds the head. Took him a little while to connect it, but does actually take it down. Is aware that something's afoot as well. He's been lampooned as it will be a play towards the A bomb site. A one versus two, but as we know, it's so hard to retake that A site on your lonesome, especially as he has a lackluster amount of utility. It does have the kit, though, to buy him a little bit more time to play. A bomb has only just gone down, but it's going to be very hard, very tough. Both playing towards pit. It's going to be a struggle for this fight, as you say, but not impossible considering they are both two separate sides. It's not really an angle you can face together from, at least in their current positions. Checking the site bit by bit as well. He should really be looking get himself that first pick off the back of that Molotov, which is going to come in through. That should try and force a player just a little bit further to the right. Screw up the Molotov there from the seaside. side. And there's the one versus one, but Zelen can't connect. And it really is a bit of a feels moment for Zelen because he's been left in these situations time and time again. And when you're brought in as this substitute, you, you kind of, you, you will have that pressure on your shoulders to perform. You always want to perform as a sub, right? But when you're put in these one versus ones, these one versus threes, what do you do? I mean, we talk about it. I mean, every time we've seen it, it's, I wouldn't want to say it's unwinnable, but it's so hard because they have no reason to face like that. Bombs in a permanent location. And you're just outnumbered. It's just awkward. Nice, actually, HE strat used here towards Banana. Look how low it is. That splash damage has worked out very well. And it didn't work. Reason comes in headshot on towards Jenko. Two players are soft. You could very easily skewer them. How is Smooth got into where he is right now? Just look at that map for a second. This should be covered off. That's a big mistake from a CT side right there. Whether they're in pistols or not, this, that should never be allowed. Just hops up mid and somehow gets himself right through in towards CT. Like any of the players holding mid or apps, clocking onto it and calling it out. Completely wrecks anything they do with splash damage and banana. Makes it redundant. Not great, to say the least. Obviously, both the last man are standing. Sure, three players are weak, but he can't even really take those fights efficiently. He has to play for exits. What? The only thing is, if they exit together, it could be big. Yeah, looking like we are going to be going at this rate to our third, though. I think that's the action that has to be taken. Boaster, having a great one. Just looking at the wall. Just kind of having a bit of a squiggle. Yeah, but... Just waiting at this point, pretty much, right? I mean, that's the thing. Just waiting for exits. They should exit together, though. One times out of ten, you know. Well, I guess they don't... They just go CT. Yeah, I think they feel can. confident in the fact that they know... Well, Smooth's it. cleared CT, so... Yeah. yeah. Oh, two players come banana. <laughs> and they check the call. Nine. Right, Bio comes back out. Jacob this time around. Took the aggressive stance towards one last time, but he just got absolutely owned by Smooth. Thing is, you know Smooth is there counter orping it. You knew they had the orp play. I don't think it's worth the risk of trying to actually shut him down. I'm not saying Jacob can't beat Smooth in that scenario, but Smooth, when he's holding the orb, he's mostly going to hit that shot. It's going to be hard for him to miss that, if you know what I mean. Like, uh, especially when he's on form, you reckon he will be able to do the damage. Now, Jacob as well. This time around, they don't have the orb. He can try and take those more aggressive stances because the chance of him getting one shot with an AK, with him landing the shot beforehand, I think he's going to be quicker in most of those scenarios. The only thing is, orb versus orb, Smear is a speed demon in a lot of those scenarios. That's what you know, sets Smear up so well. He's always been that fast. Jacob this time around stands in a multi, accepts his fate. A multi one at that. But he gets the pick on towards Jenko. So value in trading his life in. Because it is going to be. First frag on the board from Pure. About time, really, too. We've, that's one thing that we've not really seen for a while, right? Pure so, have struggled to get the first spot. They get another one as well coming in towards the A site. It's going to be a quick funnel at the back of that, though, and that's going to really test out there. They are in a bit of a bloodbath. Mole is going to secure just another trade on towards Poster. But a three for two. The odds should favor Imperial here, sure. They put themselves on towards the site and they will throw a volley towards Pit, but it's a bad one. It doesn't actually force him to speak. There's no need for him to fight here. Connor just needed to wait for his team at that point. Unfortunately, we'll get taken down them, but here they come. The damaging duo, ready to try and take this back, if possible. We'll hold. Face comes through. Actually, connects the headshot upon Roma there, who is out in the open. Oh, the backstab, though. This could be so big. Whack-a-mole, ready to strike. One kill, two kills. Easy spray. Picks them both up. Mole, single-handedly, just one over round there. Full side of fish. One, two, three. Money is busted once again. It's not really that great. They're just going to have to spunk it on whatever they can. And it's it's not great. I mean, look at the buyer here as they go through into the final round. No all power on Jacob. He's got a Famous. Sure, they put the UMP on Connor, but it's still not a rifle. I mean, 
It's not great. Utility's bad as well. This should be fish one, two, three claims in a second. Maybe. What a struggle it has been. The last down for Imperial now. Weaponry. Very, very bleak, as you say. And the battle's living up to that. This is going to be a one for one affair, but scrap that. Smooya. He ekes it out, finds the pack on towards Zellin, takes control, and what does he do? Does the usual. I'm going to slide into CT real quick. I'm going to get the flank, and you have no idea it's coming. Finally, nerves kick in for the CT side. They're not quite sure what is going on. They're not sure what angles to hold. Keita will take down Jacob. Connor Reeves in the last two in a four versus two at that. So, so bleak. Two is the number. Two is not the game. Ah. Reason to find one's kill before he is traded out in the end there. Connor, the last man left standing, one versus three to try and do anything to keep his teammates alive in the game. And this should be round 16 security, you'd imagine. As it's going to be so hard for him to retake this site on his own. No kit in his inventory as well. His only arsenal is that M4, a HE, and a flashbang. He's got a dream to try to pick this one up. He just holds on to firm for now, waiting for the peak to come through. I'm just going to be sitting there. Not really taking the strike for reason to. Delayed him for so long already as that does not have will come back to haunt him. Smooth with a headshot through the smoke. 16-9 is going to be the scoreline of map two, which means we are going to be heading over to the third and final map of the series, Mirage. Yeah, two back-to-back 69s remember as well. Of course, now one has gone either direction of the board. Imperial and Fish123 as Mirage is going to be coming up. And let's just cut to the chase. You guys don't want to hear us gabber on instead. We'll be a five-minute break. We'll be back with you very, very soon.
<laughs> what <are> you <laughs> Some, <laughs> I thought right. You're right. I'll tell you what happened. Take a moment. I'll tell you what happened. No, let me break <laughs> it down. Alright. I, I went to intro yep. and I thought I heard you go, UK, okay, but it was Jake saying <laughs> something in production. Well the thing is it sounded just like you, so I was just like, Oh well this is awkward if we both talk, so I'll stop. But obviously it just wasn't you. So then I just look like I'm schizophrenic and just lose my mind. I was just like, what are you, what are you doing? Like, you're I'm ready just hearing to voices <laughs> just talking to me. He's so ready to leap into intro. And then he does this. Hello. Uh, <laughs> Do it again. Let's start, start fresh. You ready? Yeah. Safe face. Actually, no, that's just ended. <laughs> <That's just> <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll see you guys next week. Oh, wait, no, that's not going to happen. See you at finals. It's been good. In a bit. Had a great time. Hey, we'll not be this really. way, boys. Uh, I'm just going to go this way, you man. just you off, mate. No, I'm off. Fair enough. Yeah. All right, well... <laughs> Hello everyone, uh, the show has improved tenfold, I'm back on my own, welcome to UK Masters, obviously we're getting underway, it is going to be um, teams, Team. Imperial versus the other one, Fish 1, 2, 3 of course, excited for uh, if they win that to be picked up by Eminem for the finals. You sound so enthusiastic, <laughs> I like how you're just straight in with Eminem as well, you just, you know that Cal is there ready, loves it. Zelen's dead really isn't he? Yep, Zelen's dead man. Right, these wires. <laughs> I can't, man. Oh, being professional, they said. Serious broadcast, they said. I'm one step away <laughs> <laughs> from just, just giving up. I'll drink the Kool Aid in a minute. <laughs> Mark's gonna be sitting at home right now. He's gonna be like ready to clip social media. He's thinking, why have we hired these guys? What have, what have we done? I ask myself the same question every day. True. Very, very true. Well, it's not live, is it? Jack. <laughs> Alright, Jack, eh? Hey? Oh, well. Just needs to chill for a second. What's going on here? He's not got a view model. Look at that, he's playing Quake! It's Quake Champions! Loves it. Close beta access, of course. It is available. We're playing it right now. It's looking a pretty sick game. We've got a bayonet, bayonet apparently, in it. It's pretty good. <laughs> You're right there, just giving a oh, rub. My belly side. really hurts, mate. <laughs> Alright. That Red Bull milkshake <laughs> we had this morning has really done a number on me. I don't feel like me anymore. We're coming back to us. Apparently, the Quake view models have broken everything. So yeah, everything has Cheers, been Quake. thrown out the window. Cheers, Quake. Appreciate Cheers, it. Yeah. It's software. Dead now, of course. A husk of its former self. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I think things are relatively sorted. Do you Jake? like weather? I love weather. Do you like weather? It's been pretty good in Bayonne's like in fairness. Usually, it's kind of very, I don't know how to describe it, like soggy. Kind Filthy. Of <laughs> 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 <What is that? laughs> oh my god, you are literally the worst. Oh, uh, uh, it's funny, like a little reincarnation, like Peppa Pig or something. Just <laughs> <laughs> but have you been watching Peppa Pig, man? No, I just like, <laughs> <laughs> all I can hear is I'm trying to talk to you about Rick and Morty and the Mighty Boosh. Like, never seen it. Peppa Pig, though, he's on it. Yeah, I'm on it, mate. No, all I hear is just talk to him for every second. I'm just like, you're right. You can just let it rip for a second, oh. go find some truffles. It'll be fine. Possibly. Someone's already died. Smooth's dead. For God's sake! We've missed it now! I've had enough! I'm going home! I'm sick of this! Molo, he's gonna try and do some damage, kicks it off, headshot goes through. Connor is executed. Jacob on Bosa. Trade back though. Two for Tuesdays, they find those frags clean and easy. They're trying to do more, but Jenko will pick them out of the air. Skeet shooting as he connects the headshots. One, two, three. Happy as can be as he slips his way back in. Makes it a manageable round now. It was done and dusted, but all of a sudden, Jenko goes huge. Zelen has to try and claw it back for the skin of his teeth. Going for the peaks, they have no reason to double face him right now. They can just stay alive, but look how low they are. There is potential. The bomb is in an awkward location. He can go back and grab it, he just takes the fight! Zelen executes one! Nearly gets the follow-up, but Roma will connect it. Fish one, two, three, kick it off. What a close pistol round. That couldn't be any closer at all. We don't quite get to see how things start, but at the end of the day... John, I'm not angry, I'm just really disappointed. You should be disappointing yourself. Not getting to the top of Reddit with kills like that, are we? Disgraceful, if we're honest. They talk about firing casters, but we need to fire observer. Just get him out. Leave. Where's Misty? Oh, wait, actually. <laughs> of course, Imperial will look to respond. They've got some Tech Nines, they've got some Kevlar. And they're going to be looking to set themselves up with a bit of mid aggression here and there. A sprinkle of a ramp and a palace to come in through as well. 
It's a nice idea, but is he going to get anything done? Smoothie going to face with the Famous already looking dead set into the eyes of Connor. Embraces him as he finds that shot. Reason, but Smooya trading, doing so much here. Eventually, Reason, though, more to be done with the Deagle. Jenko, a trade with the M4A4, brings it full circle. A three versus two, a rub of the belly. It's one zero for fish. They're looking for more. Reason, already two kills on the board. He is looking so dominant in this round. Lots of prowess on play. Jacob can loop back round as well, grab the bomb, link up with him. They have a lot of potential left in this one. Sure, they don't have great weapons, but it's not the worst situation to be in. Yeah, it could be, could be certainly tougher. We've already seen what Reason could do with a Deagle after all, bear in mind. Two back to back kills. Searching for just another head. There's Jacob. He's going to be under towards underpass. They're heading over towards his teammate pretty much here. They just want to play together. Especially with the fact that Jacob has got that bomb. Needs to go on for a plant. 30 seconds or so left. Get, drop the bomb to your teammate. Get yourself up in towards window. Nice idea. Could get a backstab going as well. But also, curious to see if that player in market, not quite sure who it is, but if they're holding that angle. That could be a simple and easy execution for Fish, and pretty much just cements the round for them. So everything's very much up in the air right now. It just depends on who's going to get the entry. Of course, Reason can upgrade here. Same thing for JKM, really. Can upgrade to a rifle. There's one pretty much all over the floor. Reason. Get that bomb down now. Just in the nick of time, he has to commit to the plant at this point. So even though he's getting spammed at, just has to stick with it. We'll be able to achieve things now as they move their way through. Push starts to come in. Reason will back off and wait for this to unfold. Jacob with a late round backstab as well. That is going to be really, really quite large. If that does actually go his weight. Reason for the right moment to strike though. We'll just be waiting. Playing out for information. Peeks through. Double D as he connects it on towards Key. Uh, Jacob with a backstab as well. They're committing to the bomb plot now. He has to attack right now. Bomb gets the fuse. Jenko with a double spray. Easy left and right flickage as he picks that one up. ETP to them and Squeezy. Fish one, two, three. Two rounds on the board. Looking for their third. Can they live up to their name? Well, it should be pretty damn simple for them, right? They've got pistols to face. That's it. Job done. Rifles and such, an SMG, and it'd be nine on mole. Why not? It's true. Let's see how these deagles will come into effect, though. Obviously, Reason. Oh, he's been looking good with it. Boaster. He is hot off the trigger as well. Easy connection. Takes down Smuya swiftly as he slicks him up. <laughs> Interesting way to describe it, I'll give you that. But slicks aside, we are going to be looking to see just how solid and pure are going to be with these deagles. It's a flat buy at the end of the day as they will be looking to move their curve just somewhat spam in towards Ticket Booth. It is going to lead to something. Paper across the ground, but the overall frag, the jumping shot, not also going to connect. Stop trying so hard, folks. That's very much a big play to look for. As it is going to be them just grouping up yet again for a push that could potentially could lead out towards A right now, especially if you take into account where that bomb is. Problem is, is that there's a rifle so close. You argue if they can really get too much done. Of course, then you've got Mole as well with the SMG. He's just going to go down, make sweet, sweet money, but Connor chimes in with the turn actually gets himself a trade. That's crazy. A window opportunity now for Imperial to try and play with. Well, the bomb running away yet again. Trying to go back towards B, selling the idea that it's just going to be a fake, even one player in Palace to continue to pull them away, but you feel like Fish123 should surely realize what's going on right now. Yeah, you'd imagine they will cotton on to the fact that it is going to be that B play. And let's see if Boaster and Co can actually kick things off as well. He'll be the one going for the entry. Scouting it out right now as he clears his angles. Connor arrives on the scene, the UK slash Ireland Masters, man. As he does arrive, ready to do some damage. Roma strikes out, though. Easy drag back on towards Connor. There's the headshot connection, though, as Boaster will strike at the right moment. Unfortunately, Jenko is causing an absolute stir. Flurry of bullets connects in towards Boaster, taking him down, leaving them in a two versus two. But this heavily favors the CTs right now. They have to get the bomb planted. Reason going for the straight commit for the short plant. If we'll actually get away with it. But there's the easy frags coming through. Jenko will take the fight on Jacob. Reason falls towards Keita. And that's Fish. One, two, three rounds achieved. We can tick that box and move on to what's next, the fourth round. As they are going to be rebranding pretty damn soon to Fish. Four, five, six. That's going to be next on the line for them. Got forced the ADOP on towards Smooth, looking to see what he can achieve in this map. Similar sort of thing at the end of the day for all of these players. Just waiting. Need to really rear their heads. And for Imperial now is their time to shine too, right? They've got the AKs across the board. It's a flat buy. Whether it can get anything done is a different question in itself. It is fairly standard. Just pretty much send a player towards B, default out towards mid, look for that pick. But they don't realize how aggressive Smoothie is being in his first buy. If he gets this pick, it's simple and easy. They can't trade this either because he'll just dip back in towards underpass. And Imperial sent no players. Smoothie gets the open frag as well as he connects that on towards Boaster. 
And this is a vital one, because obviously this is the first fallby. Sure, Imperial have had good displays, but this is where they actually need to pick a round up, as it is so important that they achieve some kind of prowess over on their T half. They get a round in to actually make it more manageable. Gonna volley off a few shots here and there, but nothing really lands, and nothing is thrown back at him either. Imperial still at a loss, but still searching, scrabbling away, trying to find themselves that pick. Fated towards this A site, it seems. And Zelen so close, and you can see him just really raring to peak, in fact. But neither player will really present themselves as a frank opportunity. You've got one in shadow and one on stairs. Now, if stairs face is wide, sure, but basically the only man who actually can do damage here is Reason. But he's being faced by Reason. He should try and go for the wall back here, but doesn't actually want to commit too hard for it. The flash will, in fact, force both of these players to the right as they just mirror each other's actions. And it's really nothing to be gained from Imperial right now. They're just slowly inching across the map, now decided that the B site is their point of contention. But even I'm not saying anything too positive, I'm just saying Keita handed a free frag on the Mid control, sure, reason, you've done something there. But mid control won't help you right now. Keita waits for that push to come through. Last three players over on the side of Imperial will be holding their ground right now. Didn't spot out Keita as he sits tight over by Forrest. And the thing is as well, he is huge because they are planting at the very last second. They have to plant before four seconds. He executes him here, he wins the round. Unfortunately, he gets struck down, struck by Connor from the sidelines. He is going to be passing the torch into their favor. They are looking good. Spoke out now as well. Roma can't achieve too much. He's going to have to back off, try to link up with his teammates. And obviously, this free versus free. Attempting to all funnel in from the same angle is going to be so awkward. They end up one by one as well. That allows Reason to get the opening frag. Smuya glides in. Though. Connection on towards Reason. Takes him down. Short, unfortunately, will be compromised as well. So Smuya has to get another couple of kills on the board if he wants to lock this one down. Knows their positions, but he misses. And Zelin will execute. An early frag from him and around on the board for Imperial. And the money official in P3, just take a glance, Jackie, real quick. Look at how broke they are. Completely donezo. I mean, it's like a run-down fairground, like, there's just not a lot to go on. They're just in so much debt right now, really. They've got Vanquist coming after them, just chasing them up for the money. Saying, come on, boys, you've got to pay. you got to clear out all those who sit on the land. And Imperial, they're just going to be there saying, all right, boys, well, don't worry, we'll take it off your hands. We'll sort it for you. But they just put so much stress on them right now with these guns. It's going to be a struggle for them to hold things off. Already, Jacob starting strong, just sending a message. They look for more and more, just walking up onto his feet so quietly. Smooth, he's going to get himself close and personal with his pistol. Roma, similar sort of storyline with this UMP. But are they going to actually connect the shots? That's what we care. Shots start to come out. Damage is transferred. Unfortunately, they find one frag. Jacob is so low. Push comes through as well. Look at that. Molotov forces Samir out of position. And Jacob, at this point, is still just holding ground, showing that his presence is there. He's just basically going to be a seed of doubt in their minds, whilst the full rotate goes over towards the A bomb site, and they can go for a late run execute through mid. Mol. Caught off guard though by Zell, and that is going to be the case that it does become true. Fact, the eternal alternative. Really cause a bit of a stun for him. Roma, a little bit more as he chimes further into the round, but even then, just a one versus two smoothie. It's all or nothing for him in this round. Gained that Kevlar, of course, and the AWP. They do mix into a real sense of lethality. So much power in his arms. A one versus two wouldn't be impossible. Problem is, he has no idea where they're actually playing towards. You can see him just checking to connect the thing. Alright, if they go A, they're probably going to be close up to me. Perhaps even push into jungle. Or they might not be on the site yet. But there's so many different situations. You can't account for all of them. Nice little body shot of Smoothie there. Can, uh, can take him in. Smoothie! Uh, Alright then. Comedic, finishes it professionally. Why are we just in his head? <laughs> Into the mind of Smoothie, there's nothing there. <laughs> Accurate. Whee! Uh, you've got to give props to Smoothie for that, really. Just, yeah, very comedic start to the round, but as I just said, yeah, very, very classy end to it. Really, still an amount of fashion away. Double kill with a pistol, just sneaking him in, and so much value for Fish123 now. Four to one up. The economy of Imperial is crushed to the floor. They're on just these pistols, got themselves Kevlar, of course, but even then, it's going to be a bit of a scrape now. Because they have to make this round stick, already investing a, a good chunk into this. It still is going to put them on good ground going into their 7th and 8th, but it's something we kind of await to see. Is it going to be worthwhile to get the Kevlar Kev on release? So far, they're going to grind it around. Oh. This is Zelen trying to change pace somewhat, combining with Connor. 
They get themselves a double kill of their own. Should be able to get a bomb plant in the smoke here, which was somewhat appeasable. Oh. But even then, it's a trade. Two versus three situation. Imperial really under the thumb right now. Being forced to do whatever oh. two, three want from them. Smooth comes in, will shut down. Connor oh. should be aware of the second man in Zealand. He is able to do so easily. Frag goes his way. Still on his warpath. He has not been slowing down at all into Mirage. Great stuff coming through. That defuse will go their way. That's a fifth round on the board for Fish. One, two, three. Imperial struggling. Yeah, not looking good at all right now. And this is kind of where I want to bounce off you for your knowledge on these two teams. Because you followed these guys for, for years upon years. You know where these guys basically grew up into the scene and where they kind of found their peaks and such. Map like Mirage, who does it suit more, Imperial or Fish? Because I can look back through results and I can give my opinions on it, but I feel like I, I kind of want to pick your brain because you've got all that information. So when you look at Imperial, right, like with this lineup here, even when they were branded as cast and stuff, they were having upset games over on Mirage. But the thing is, their T sides have always been really bad. For some reason, they have been abysmal on T half and then play a good CT half out. Like we saw them beat FM in the qualifiers for this season of EPS just gone because they were just able to play a better CT half out in the end. But Mirage is a good map for them. Uh, it, they just always struggle with their T half for some reason. I mean, that's kind of the story of Imperial, honestly. I'm just going to come out and say it. Imperial have some of the worst T-halves I have seen in a while. They really struggle, which is weird because they shouldn't do. But they just have really bad T-halves in a lot of times. That spells for me, as we see this just unfold, is the idea that if you do not get a reasonable amount, then there's no comeback. If you finish a half, say, 12-3, where do you go from that? And the reason why we kind of just let this round unfold in front of you and just kind of almost tell the tale of itself is that it's just, a, for the most part, a whitewash. Sure. Imperial snuck in with just a few frags, but fish, they play together, they play it smart. The rounds seem fairly small. Yeah, I mean, it's brutalization right now coming out. I mean, fish, it's round after round with them just pounding, and fish, just buck uh, sorry, Imperial just buckling, right? Like, it's gonna be another round, easily going the way of fish. That's a 6 1 scoreline already on the city half. Uh, showing no signs of stopping. A struggling standpoint. Connor wants to make a play here, so hungry to show up, and throws off an idea, but unfortunately, Roma. He's 10 steps ahead. Headshot for him, a frag for him. All in all, a 6 to 1 scoreline begins to take hold. And the problem furthers for Imperial, it's not just the scoreline, it's their economy. It's just not safe at all. They've been raided, ransacked. It's disastrous. They're cleaning on these pistols yet again, not going to invest in anything like the Kevlar or Tech 9. But such. Instead, it is just going to be you know, pretty bogged down, just P250s. They have one you know, Beagle and Tech 9 mixed in. But even then, it's just very, very sparse. It's true. Really, here and there, very hit and miss rounds coming out. I mean, Imperial, they need to try and switch things up soon as well. So the T side is very weak. I mean, they do have fairly effective CT half holds from what I've seen in the past, but even then, you need some kind of a buffer to get through with. That's the problem, right? Is if this half, say, goes 12 3 or 11 4, even at 10 5, if Fish went to proceed to win the pistol, Imperial may not get the shot. They may only get to show two or three buys. Uh, 10 5, for example. And that's if they can't get it to go their way. So it's, it's a very big what if right now, and I feel like that's the problem here. Fish 1, 2, 3, they're here to play. They're ready to get themselves into the UK Masters Grand Finale. It's 7 to 1. Imperial, they need to show up. They're running out of options. It's a stranglehold that Fish have on them. When are they going to tap out, accept their fate, and change things up and go back at the map again? And by that, I mean a boss. Surely now is a good time for that. Me up. Takes the aggression on towards short as well, peeking out. I mean, obviously, that's a pretty good advantage into this if they do peek him as the orb is weapon he is so absolutely sublime with. We'll be able to punish them as they rip his way through. Molt elevated angle with plate. Finds a headshot connection there over on towards Poster. We'll take him down. Smear though. The response headshot comes through. Shuts down Jacob so quickly. It's a three versus four. Zellan is low. They make it better though. Three versus three now. As Keeter actually gets picked off, but Smear is there to retaliate. The problem is I'm at like a Mirage is also smooth as playground. I've seen this guy do some nutty stuff on Mirage in the past and we're really seeing it take hold again and they're sure he's being a bit repetitive with his short peaks, but I mean, if it works, keep doing it. Pretty simple as that, right? Zelen holding tight on ramp, baiting the idea that Smooth will peak it. Problem is Smooth is so quick to trigger. Don't win that battle. They come from Smooth. Going for a jump shot into the palace. Doesn't get away with it, of course, but problem is. He can go for those because he knows they're not going to punish him. He knows they're not going to punish him, but ah. rush him down. 
which is what you usually do when orc goes to that shot like that. You want to catch them with guard and fire them together. But they won't do that because they're scared of the player in jungle, they're scared of the rifle holding close. So, what's the easiest way to put that into kind of a visual demonstration for you? Imperial are in a box, fish one, two, three, are surrounding them. It's just a bloodbath. In a watery, watery box. Shark cage. Fish one, two, three is a shark, and Imperial are trapped in the shark cage. But the, the cage has also got the shark inside. <laughs> it's an angry shark. Uh, your imagination works in very weird ways, I'll give you that. Today, Kevin was timing around the storm. But I think it's not back all over again. It's just decimation. Fish 1, 2, 3, 9 to 1 up now. This one nice and quick, and that body really resonates with how Imperial have, have found themselves in this half. Just down on the floor, in the dirt, stuck in the shadows. None of their players have really been able to rear their heads at all. I mean, if you can imagine being on a treadmill and falling off the treadmill, but the treadmill's still going, but you're stuck against the wall and the treadmill, and it's just still on, that is a visual representation of what's happening to Imperial right now. Okay. That is about all I have to respond to that one. Quite the demonstration. Of, uh, I'll give you that. It's Sounds not like great, is it? We went, yeah, once, yeah. <laughs> it wasn't good, I remember. Still have nightmares about that day. Let's see how this round will work. Well, anyway, the first frag comes in. Reason will connect the headshot there back over on towards Jenko. Keep up, trying to peek out. We'll find one, is aware of the second man, but actually Zelin over at the barn. We'll find a frag oh. towards Mole. There's Jake in the strike as well. Finally, they have the manpower advantage. They've won out the Battle of Attrition. You leave them in a two versus three situation as they make their play towards whichever bomb site they choose to go for, but Smuya over at A. Has something to say. Connects the headshot back there over on towards Zelen now. Hungry for a second peek, but no one will risk taking the fight. They will go for the window boost through. Connor's trying to go for the backstab. 55 seconds left on the clock here as Jacob will now take the fight through. The last time they saw Smoothie was over by Ticket Booth, but look at him now. Takes the fight through towards Palace. If they get this bomb plant and they try and take their way through into the late round, this could spell trouble for Imperial. He'll just wait for Roma as well if that bomb goes down. It's very unlikely that he'll try and peek so early in terms of aggression or wide face. So him out to wait for Roma just really gives him. <laughs> a lot more to play here. As it is going to be Jackie just destroying the studio, it seems. Lights starting to rock. Really kind of summing up how Imperial sit right now. is It is going to be a rocky round for them, but one they can try and make work as they will pull through the other side with a bomb plant. There's Jacob holding tightly in towards, just over towards Fireball. That looks towards Shadow. That's where he wins it with the Tech 9. Tech 9. Obviously a famous rapper. Um, Let's see what more Connor can do though. Peeks up. Oh, tries to get the headshot on towards Roma, but it was not meant to be. That's going to be the defuse coming through. Fish 1, 2, 3. Double dig. 10. When does it end? I think I just saw a stat that said, I'm not sure who it was, but someone. Uh, there, there was certainly a stat there. I think it was eight consecutive rounds without dying. Or something crazy like that. Like a very, very long stat like that. Let's just take a look. Can't have been eight. More than likely a bit lower than that, but it probably would have been smoother aroma, judging by this. Pretty good. Might have been smoother, in fact. That would make sense with the orb. We've not really seen him die a fair bit, have we? Yeah, probably makes sense with four, four deaths as well. That's another kill, though. Stays alive, obviously, into this one. Does take down Jacob. Response frag nearly does come out when he is able to get away with his life. There's Jenko keeping the frag damage going, though. Headshot back on towards Boston now. Three versus five situation as they want to try and make a split play, I imagine, to lose the eight bomb site late into this round. But already, it's just too far gone. They've been dismantled. This is going to be the 11th round for Fish. I hedge my bets towards that in. They tried so hard, but in the end, it's not looking Doesn't like it really matter. Mattered. Yeah. Yeah. It really isn't at this point. Imperial. Salt Tooth and Nail through UK Mind. They held mid position of the bracket. Group standing, sorry. It was so tough for them. But right now, even through playoffs, it looks like the journey may well be just becoming very dastardly end. They finally get an opportunity, but then Roma chimes on in, but Reason gets the round with a huge frag back in return. I apologize if we're a wavery kind of counter right now in terms of our hope, but you can't help but flicker at the fact that Imperial only have two, and the looming reset that hangs over their head. That's the problem right now. Neither of us can really sit here and go, well, we'll almost be cheerful when we start clapping, getting behind the Imperial, because what is there to rally behind? Sure, the idea they can get their third? Woo. 
Yeah, so you'll see what they can actually achieve though into this one. So obviously it seems like it will be uh, more of a default A take. I mean, we've not actually seen like a, an A strategy execute come into play here, I don't think, throughout the period. It's been very just split and pick. Been splitting up, trying to take slow default control of the map, take mid control and then just get owned. We didn't see one, and so we just wrecked the Oh, yeah. Well, that's, yeah. Why. So that's why I don't remember it. Yeah, pretty much. It was like with God in 20 seconds. And it's a hit movie. Featured local city world near you, of course. Other cinemas are available. CT side for now, just being patient. Imperial is trying to play that into the hands, they look for the peak, and guess what? Jacob, unfortunately, able to miss. It's just a struggle at this point. Things just not looking up their way. A peak to come in. That definitely has been spotted out by Jacob. Now he knows what is going on. Trying to the frag from Palace. Connor will land that. But there's so much information right now for this CT side. Smoogan knows exactly where to peak and how to peak. He gets himself a pick of his own. So much damage to be done to Imperial. But they will continue to battle back and forth in 3 versus 3. But the cross is just going to be held so tightly by Smuya, And he knows his flank is coming in. The timing is very crucial here. Unfortunately, he does get taken down. This makes it awkward, especially when Reason can do that. They don't call him an elite player for nothing. Reason walks his way through there. Locks it down. Obviously now moving our way on. 10 to 3 scoreline. Potential from to actually take this in the region of a 5-10, right? Because look at the cash over efficiency three. Not great. This should be the fourth round secured. At that point as well, I have confidence in the situation they're in, actually having a good buy around them. Because their arsenal's been a little, kind of weak in a lot of rounds, and they've started to find some success. This is where that the claps and the cheering starts to actually arrive, right? Because you can you can find something to get behind. There's a narrative here. Imperial, three rounds, they get the fourth as you say. It really makes that 10-5 seem very, very realistic. Let's see if they can play that into their hands though. Just because it's a storyline doesn't mean the act is going to follow it. As it is going to be a slow creep coming in towards B and all very, very aggressive. As Jacob will search for that entry frag. Needs to be careful, these pistols against an AWP will certainly make things a bit of a difficult affair. Jacob getting mortar striked in his apartment block. Not great, really, as he will start to back off, but then holds out to see if a push will come through. Nothing is going to be there just yet, though. Obviously, I don't want to try and run the risk of going for the information phase where he will be able to take them down. Still just holding in his own right now. You know. Patience still to be employed. 45 seconds coming on through, though, Imperial. Don't really need to stress about gaining anything in this round with time. It's one of those kind of off rounds when you're up against these pistols where, sure, you, you kind of have to be careful, to play, but it's okay. And dropping the bomb like that, though, is a little bit more risky. It gives it up towards Smoothie. A reason will secure that trade, though, and should, by default, get the bomb back. 25 seconds. They're really getting close to a site. I'm starting to get a little concerned that they haven't actually got themselves really anything at all. They do have a control, which means that we are going to see a swarm of fish come through CT. I think the technical term is a school of fish. Actually, it's a school. Yeah, Maybe that. We'll learn something new every day. Cheers, Jackie. All right, let's get back. It. But obviously, the single fish left standing um, is going to have to fall back and save. Technical term for that? It's just a fish. Oh, yeah. <laughs> if you didn't know. Fish singular. <laughs> fish. Multiple fish. Fishes. Oh. A group of fish. School. <laughs> I feel like you definitely just Googled that, judging by that. Oh, no. Come on, man. Did you not know that? That uh, a group of fish yes. is called a school? I did actually know that, but I feel like the way you've explained it, very much, sound like a bit of a Google search engine right now. Come on, mate. It's basic fish. It's basic fish. I need to up my game on my fish knowledge, it seems. Obviously, a group of Imperial is a metric system. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to go with soldiers, maybe, but, you know. Imperial soldiers, maybe. Worth a shot. Looking towards the double up setup now that Fish123 will try and employ. Of course, we've got some bigger fish in the sea this time around, looking for them to try and take them down. It's going to be a struggle, but they can look through the dark murky ocean and see if they can force their hand. If they're an anglerfish, obviously, you use the light on their heads to find the uh, find the kills a little bit easier. Double up setup in play. Let's see what that is going to bring to the table here as the aggression comes down. Imperial battling it out, trying to gain that mid control as they tiptoe their way through. Mole kicks it off, the, connects the shot back on towards Zelen. Leaves them in a 4 versus 5. This is not a great situation to be in. Connor will try and take the control over towards short, though. Frags do start to rain in. Will eliminate Keita. There's the fire back from Smoothie. Headshots galore. Takes down Connor. Second frag of the round going his way as well. As he takes down Reason, Jacob is going to hit the deck. Unfortunately, Jenko gets traded out. But it is all on Boaster. The man that had a brief stint in Europe 
A very prolific fragger. He is a rifling machine. But is he going to be able to somehow pull this round out of the bag and get the fifth on the board for Imperial? Lead them through with a little bit of a more manageable buffer into the second half. The phrase right now that oh. is the phrase, I have a machine. But there is no one there to receive him as he will fall short. 11 to 4 is going to be the half. And that's got to sting. Because they're an electric eel. What have we started? Is an electric eel classed as a fish? Or is that just an aquatic mammal? <laughs> it's not a mammal, is it? That's a dolphin. <laughs> what even is that question? <laughs> well, I, what are eels classed as? Are they fish? Because they're not really fish, are they? They're like long pipe cleaners that electrocute you. The windy man. <laughs> the long fish. I, I feel sorry for anyone who has to sit and listen to this. It's, it's a struggle, I'm sure. It's for now, we wait at this USB. They line up, but they will not fall. They refuse to drop their ground as he is both to just to pick up the single. And Frank Smuya tapping on four for one back in return. Mole beginning to intertwine himself with these angles. He punches and also both to Smuya again on towards Connor. They're all they need to up their game. They need to turn the tides. As right now, they are getting pushed out of this one fish. Waltzing on a forward. This is looking like a real struggle, Jacob and Reason. The only two that can have an impact now, the only two left standing. They don't seem to have an idea what they're doing. Jacob comes in from apps, but only finds that singular frag yet again, causing harm. You know, one, two, three. Where else do you go? Well, you still tap. You keep going. Forward into this. Look for this round. But that time is ticking, and it's all been wasted. And all eventually going to take him down. And a somber end to a sad tale. As at 12 to 4, things are looking pretty damn bleak. That's such a shame as well, because Imperial at this point, right, their city half is usually where they start to get some energy back into themselves. They can start to reinvigorate and lock things down. But we're not going to see that, because you look at things here. The next two rounds most likely are claimed by Fish123. That means they're going to have 14 rounds in their bank as a buffer before Imperial have money to play with, right? Now, Imperial, they need to play basically a flawless half already to get like 11 rounds to achieve anything, really. It's just going to be so hard for them, and it's a shame as well, because their economy will be dented. We're not really going to see that all pound on Jacob too soon. And it relies quite heavily on them being able to set things up. Aggression coming in towards the big bomb site, though. Unfortunately, Boaster trying to go for a bit of a backstab play, which is going to catch one guard. Isn't going to work out. Smoothie as well. Follow up frag on towards Zelen. Everyone's just getting torn to shreds. Reason's also going to hit the deck. It's just Jacob and Connor left. And honestly, as much as this duo does have a lot of firepower in terms of their individual strength, these P250s in their hands with no nades, you can't expect anything out of them. This is round 13, snapped up by the Jaws of Fish 1, 2, 3. Now they are just in the distance at this point, chewing on their feast and... Continually handed more and more by Imperial. It literally is just them being chum. The police this lineup. Looking pretty clear card at this point. Chum bucket. <laughs> uh, it's so tough for Imperial. I really feel for them because you have to kind of look at this and go back to that kind of casual vibe and just go, right, reflect on their performance in UK Masters. Reflect on how hard they had to thought, like fight. Now, one of the things I actually want to do at the end of this, no matter the result. If it goes the way currently is the thing, which is Fish123 will take this series, I kind of want to bring up the group stage standings and just kind of look at how hard Imperial had to swing. Like, it was such a struggle. Why are you giving me that face? <laughs> What's up with that? <laughs> Let's see how this one goes, obviously, as they start to rebind this. Obviously, they had the UMP over on Jacob. The rest of the teammates are stuck to just those USPs, though. That's not really what you want into uh, such a... High late game round, obviously. This is the thing. At this point, Fish123, they're going to secure that round 14, as we expected. Scary factor is, though, when you come in on the full buy, Jake's invested some money here. The orb's not coming out. You're not going to see that orb out, and that's what we need to see actually gone by them as well. But they do start to rain through. Headshot comes out. Jacob there kicks things off before the trade comes back in off of his old friend in Keita. Yeah, going to certainly be a bit of a struggle. He's yet again to the circle, and after that, it's going to be Frank Sprott, all favoring one clear team. Connor does try and Slob in with one, but even then, it's just going to be smooth. doing so much work right now in the 3 for 2 ah. He's still tapping in towards Sticky with Mole. It is going to end his life. Fish 1, 2, 3. They're about to reach themselves. Just another point in this matchup. 14 to 4. Imperial, their play pretty much sums up the way that you just nod at me. It's just a, a very disgusting, sort of sad, somber face. And it's unfortunate to see. Neither of us like having to look at it, but it's just one of those things. Talk about my face. All right. That's how it is. <laughs> Let's see how this play will go down though. Smoke's going to come through. Jake, I'm holding the ramp angle, ready for the push to come in. Now, Jake actually had enough money to get the AWP out. 
because he's got those kills at the MP. This is good. We needed to see Jacob over back on the orb. He could actually be the difference maker into this round, but he has to go huge here on the openers. Smuya is there ready to contest against him, though. And the thing is, what's scary is it will be an A hit. Really, their strengths are going to be tested, unfortunately, as well. Connor gives away the opener. He tries to go for the information play, gets punished. Jacob executed as well. The wall bang from Jenko. This is really over there. Well, it's gone so far south. We're now in Albuquerque, and it keeps going further. We're going to be near Hoss soon. Jacob. Dead. Jenko still keep on going through. Reasonable executed. Everyone's dead. Imperial, it's over. Match point has been secured by Fish 1 to 3 at this point. Because Boaster, even if he survives, it's 1 and 4 into the next round. And it has to be flawless still. Also, you just don't even talk about the round at this point. Just look at Boaster and his, his decision there. Just, just like, yeah, they know men mentally yep. they're out of this one. Like, they've just said, all right, we submit. So it's done. Like, I don't feel like it matters any if Imperial to pick up a round. That, I'm sure that feels like something everyone's going, oh, you, you, you de facto even said, why would you bring that one up? Well, it's just a bit of a, a realist point of view, right? It's something we've stuck through through the entirety of players. So we haven't been going at this as a, you know, a full professional broadcast. It's been very casual. It's been very laid back. It's something we've enjoyed. And it's been something that's been, I think, much more honest and respective for a lot of these teams and the, the journey they go through. It's true, right? Like... That's the thing coming into this as well. It's such a shame because Imperial actually fought two for nail. In that second map as well, right? You've got to remember, guys, this has been a free map series. They took the first map dominantly. Coming into map two, it just wasn't quite there. They couldn't find the energy to burn themselves through. And it seems like going into the third map, they burned themselves out. I think the interesting thing as well is that you, you can see the change in the players of Fish 1, 2, 3. They lost that first map and were flat out embarrassed. That was the words that came out of the mouth of Smuya. And then it all changed. Then they got better in the second map. It was a hard fought tale, as you mentioned. The third right now. It's just going to be a simple one pump from Jacob. Oh. Does get himself a reward off the back of it. Oh. Jacob as well doing a little bit more in this round. Imperial looking like they may just sneak one in after all. This is huge. Jacob goes massive with the Max 7. Sick stuff coming out from Reason as well. Headshot back on towards Whack-A-Mole Mole as he finds that kill. They're working their way through. Five rounds on the board. They can actually buy up around this as well as they scavenge some new weapons. Orp is back on Jacob. Potential, but it has to be flawless. Ten rounds on the trot. I can feel you getting excited over there. It sounds like you're really kind of rolling into this, but you have to just look at this and go, it's so much to ask for from a side who have spent so many rounds trying to get five on the board. I reserve faith right now because this round will be the one that let us know just whether things are going to go to Hot and cold. But right now, it's all hot. Jenko. As he's not trying to get one, gets a second. Zellum going to burn away Roma, but this B side is looking like it's already been taken. And into this round, I mean, the difference maker has been Vintage Jenko back on display. He has been so strong, such a prolific rifler, and he's displaying that there. Easy press him out, smooth with the kills. This is it. Connor, last man left standing. As much as Connor is so talented with his actual rifle prowess, it's not going to be achievable. He will fall, taken down there. Jenko with the AWP will be the man to finish him. 16-5 will be the scoreline. That is going to be a 2-1 to one scoreline. <laughs> Yeah, what a match it was, and at the end of the day, we now know who our grand finalist at the UK Masters finale will be. That's something that's going to be extra a little bit exciting, and of course, let's just bring up the bracket just to kind of show you the tale of all things, how things have gone. Of course, we first saw FM face endpoint 2-0 there, pretty damn swift for FM. Then Fish, on the lower side of that, they also played Imperial 2-0 there as well. Then FM, they progressed, we just played Fish, and they got themselves through off the back of that. Lower side, endpoint Imperial, 2-1. Fish 1, 2, 3, 2 to 1 again. Very repetitive stuff. Some kind of the same old matchups. But at the end of the day, I do think that I can comfortably say the best teams got through. It's a shame about Endpoint, sure, but I don't think they're ready to come back into UK domestic competition yet. I feel like they need to make a few changes to still settle in. You see them put up some good results and learning so much. But when you're learning so much information and you're really bringing all that in, you've got to take time to really process that and put that into play. They feel like they've got some great ideas, but it's all so rough around the edges. So for Endpoint, Commiserations, but at the end of the day, we've got two sick grand finalists. I can't wait to get there. Yeah, I mean, kind of the common UK final, right? You've got one mixed team versus one actual team. FM going to be there. And this is what we've seen, actually, like a couple of lands in a row now. But obviously different players. Still the same name. So obviously very much looking forward to Eminem versus FM at the grand final. That would be really good. Yep. That's from all the... I, I wouldn't, put it, wouldn't be surprised, though. That seems to be the standard. <laughs> we've seen, like, what, four UK lands in a row. Cal, Cal, you know what's up. We'll see if it actually happens or not. It's certainly be something we do look forward to see. Of course, the Grand Finals is taking place at the Berlin NEC. I-60, it's going to be one hell of a land. You've seen the advert time and time again. You've heard the good old Shooting Stars meme. You know what's up. We don't need to tell you. Make sure you're there. Make sure you check it out. It's going to be a good event. Until then, we'll see you kind of what? Well, when it happens, I guess. We'll see you there, mate. We'll see yeah, you there. That's, that's the point of that. Yeah, that was the point of that question. But, well, I mean, what's your, what's your favourite moment of the playoffs been? 
talk to me. Let's have a conversation real quick. Um, Playoffs or, or the whole UK Masters in general? Because you've been with us for a fair bit of it now. We've we've both had our yeah, I've, fairly I've come long back. stint. We've returned. The Rock has come back to WWE. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of, yeah. Um, I don't know, honestly. Wow. Probably, yeah. This is why we bring it this was, guy it in. It was good, wasn't it? It was all right. It's great. I'm not really sure. I don't think there was something that stuck out. Snod's getting the 4K with his uh, with his bottle. New fair play to the lads. That was all right. Well, that's all, folks. We'll see you next time. See I the series finals. 60 grand finale. Grand finally. You've had a knee, <laughs> Take one, take it four. 14-11, right on the cusp of closing the sound. That's point two.